So I'm guessing there was a lot of talking done last uh, Friday. Give or take. It's got some names. I think those are the five main factions from the Empire. Or just five factions aligned with Brightest Star, maybe? Oh, those are names of people. Names of people. Those are not factions. So Brightest, Brightest, Brightest Star, Star is, is a person. Divided. Nope. Brightest Star is a the organization, but it's also you guys found out that it's been it's actually divided into three factions. Okay, Brightest Star. Neon everyone Star, uses true. the Brightest Star. Yeah, everyone uses the Brightest Star's name and logo. Mm -hmm. But uh, the original faction, when it was created, was called Brightest Star. Right. And it was actually supposed to be a um, kind of the new Unity faction out in the Outer Ring to help bring Unity from the Outer Ring to the uh, you know the Inner Ring to keep them all together, share technology. You know, we're all in this together, type of thing. Well, a new faction joined called Neo Star, mm -hmm. or sorry, uh, well. A group of individuals joined Brightest Star and formed their own faction called Neo Star. And these were all ex fleet individuals, ex admirals, ex uh, fleet crew, ex, you know, ex talent. marine commanders. Yeah. Hmm? I said talent. Well, power too. And you know how the fleets work. So if they're ex, I thought that would mean they didn't have a fleet anymore. So they still they do don't. have their ships? They don't. Nope, they don't. Okay. They don't have their they don't have their ships anymore that are owned by the Thunderhead, but that doesn't mean they can't get their own ships by other means. Gotcha, gotcha. But gotcha. their drives their drives would have been stripped oh. um, for the actual fleet ships. So they're ex fleet, but that doesn't mean they don't have all their connections and they don't have their old temperament that you know fleet power is right. Mm -hmm. So kind of dangerous individuals, a lot of them. Um, and they kind of took over and made um, Brightest Star very militant. Gotcha. Which, while that does sound, you know, logical in a fleet-based area, it's put a lot of hurt on relations with uh, pretty much everyone else. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. It wasn't until... Um, oh my gosh. It wasn't until later where the uh, uh, True Star came in. That's when the Cultivators joined Brightest Star. Right. And they basically forced out Neo Star and uh, basically forced out um, Brightest Star from being in control. Okay. So True Star is technically the one in control, but they're rather conservative in what they're trying to do. So um, Liam's character, Mina, found out that, you know, all the all the actions being taken by all these brightest star, how it doesn't make sense. Yeah. Like some individuals would have black potential in them. Some of the individuals would have, you know, rather extreme means like trying to set off munitions and bases. Um, well, it's actually... You have three separate groups in the same organization, all going under the same name, but they're different. Right. So the Neo Star was the group trying to blow up the Cultivator base in gotcha. the inner ring because they hate Cultivators because they basically took over. And now Neo Star is kind of an extremist group within Brightest Star. Um, and they're willing to do pretty extreme shit. Like blow up bases and whatnot, sabotage fleets. Mm -hmm. um, True Star does things more by the book. They're not going to um, disable or remove assets because they're going to lose them, or somebody else is going to get to it first. Mm. They they're all about preserving the asset. Because they believe they can get it, their hands on it later. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, Matt, just uh, give me a uh, fiber because I need to take a massive dump. I'll be right back.
Okay. That's what you need. Oh! Oh! Sorry, oh. I'm back here. I got it! Oh, I got the best healer in the game! Oh, you got Chan over there? Look at you go. Oh my gosh. That was totally worth it. Me taking that five minute shooter? <laughs> yes! <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Dude. So there must be something special about them Canadian shits over there. Like, dang. Ah, uh, fuck. Okay, uh, congrats. Um, so we talked about Brightest Star. We talked about Neo Star being more of an extremist group, the, the rebellious f folk. True Star, the cultivators coming in and making a Neo Star their bitch. Um, Basically, but, yeah. And taking over uh, is uh, Pelio. Is that Pelio Stas? Is that a name or is that a uh, bless us? Hello, Stas. Bless you. Um, okay. Los Stas. Is that another faction group? Or is that just a name? I think it's just a name. Okay. Yeah, I think it's a name. So there was two then. There was the, the two factions within the Brightest Star. Yeah, two additional factions. Because Brightest Star is its own faction. Mm -hmm. as it no, I get out. that. I, I feel like Brightest Star is the, um, the, the comp well, no, I wouldn't say the, the parent um, company, and Neo Star and True Star are both like factions within that parent company. So let's say parent, parent faction. There we go. We'll call it that. Mm -hmm. That would be pretty much correct, yeah. They would be the parent faction, but they also have the least amount of control now, mm -hmm. even with Neostar being forced up more succinctly. Um, it turns out, normal Brightest Star people, pretty cool. Yeah. Um, Just, uh... And you can also you can tell who they are by the... It's the same pin, that Starburst pin, you know how there's, it looks like uh, each of the different rays coming out, like little triangles, like um, sun rays. Mm -hmm. Well, there's one that's longer, because it's normally kind of like the uh, the old USDF symbol. Yeah. Where it has one long star beam, and then there's one short one. 
at a 90 degree angle from it. And if you turn the star 90 degrees so that the, the largest sun ray turns a different direction, uh, that's how they differentiate between each other. So the way they traditionally wear it is an actual brightest star follower. But if the star beam is turned a different direction, um, it would indicate a different faction within brightest star, neo star, true star. So is it the left or right, or is it like up or down? Um, so if it's brightest star, the larger star beam always faces outwards from the shoulder. Okay. They, you always wear it on the left. And it yeah. always points outward. If it's true star, um, it faces inwards. Outwards or inwards. Okay, that's how we'll differentiate between the two. And then Neo star has theirs facing straight down. Okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. I gotta brag to my friend. Yeah, I pulled one of the best healers while you were taking Canadian poop. I've been looking for that character for quite a while. And so you you've blessed me. You're welcome. Your yeah, because the uh, the healer is a is a two part character, so it has a deployable mm -hmm. um, called Monster. And the healer sucks compared to other healers because the healer prioritizes Monster over anyone else who's hurt. Okay. So if Monster is even has like you have one guy dying off to the side, like he's about to fall, and Monster has oh no, he's he's scuffed his little toes. Like, he has lost one HP. Yeah. They will choose to heal monster over the guy who's about to fall. That's fine. Um, and they only heal others when monster is perfectly healed. Mm. But that dude does so much damage. Yeah, yeah. So I wouldn't. <laughs> I would even call it a healer. It's more of a summoner, if anything. Yeah, it's a summoner, and all of its abilities are about giving monster like massive buffs. Nice. Yeah, but uh, it's it's pretty wild that 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 character and it's one of the top tier characters because monster at maximum rank does damage yeah so now you just gotta level them up or level mm -hmm. the healer up i guess yeah I, just having them in general makes it awesome and if you pull duplicates mm -hmm. uh you increase their potential um which it does really really little stuff but yeah it's if the you same get with enough uh... of them they become really powerful. Like they become cheaper to play. That you can bring them back on the field faster. They have more health or whatever. So I don't know. Gotcha, I'm gotcha. so super excited. That was damn that Canadian luck. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I posted down below uh, the, the types. Um, yep. Okay. Um. So anything else I should be aware of before we continue? Um, Banshee had found out there was an ambassador on Ouroboros. Uh, and okay. Quarantined one, that guy. One of the alien ambassadors. The gotcha, gotcha. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, there was a series of individuals that in their meeting um you know kind of here and there uh uh what's his name aether went to one of the um uh the brightest star offices mm -hmm. and um he was having a good time they were they were really polite with each other it was very very fun Uh, uh, um, he also question. found a shop that sells lasers and stuff. Nice. A uh, question for our side: um, Does Ouroboros have uh, like 
things you can buy, like mech parts, for example. Yes, absolutely. Not so much mech parts, but, but like individual weapons. Weapons. What about component parts? Yep, they sell components. Um, okay. They don't really sell mechs and are like mech that's fine. or mech that, frames. That's fine. I they was sell just... raw material and individual components. Gotcha. I figured since it was more of a commercial, especially since we were talking to Ouroboros, now they said they weren't really a, you know, they're not a military, they're more of a commercial uh, station. Uh, so, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. No, well, they're cool. military. They build warships. True, but their their focus is different compared to, say, the Aegis technique. We, we, we discussed that, yeah. Um, yep, the hearth technique. So, um, all space stations that mm-hmm. aren't military primary, so if it's a fleet yard, they all practice the hearth technique. Yeah. Because gotcha, their gotcha. primary focus actually isn't building ships. Mm-hmm. It's to house the people of Enigma. It, it's to, you know, for their comfort, for their life support, you know, for their livelihoods. Right. Then, once that is settled, now we can start being industrious. Gotcha, gotcha. And that's the difference between the hearth technique, because the hearth technique <clears throat> actually does require people living on the station for the, the practitioner to feel at ease. Okay. So, in order Where, for, uh, um, say, and you can't have the Aegis technique and the Hearth technique at the same time, right? Uh, Ouroboros highly does highly not re- highly recommend you don't. Yeah. Um, unless you can combine the bits. Yeah. No one's mm-hmm. figured it out because it doesn't it doesn't balance well because yeah. your focus can't shift. You are a structure now. Mm-hmm. You were more permanent than a person with biology that can change. You must be the stabilizing foundation, the reliable, unchanging bit that the people must rely on. All right, no, you need Your that to be you can't just change it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. Because, hmm. uh, yeah. Um, that doesn't mean the hard technique and the Aegis technique is the only method. There are others. They're just not as practiced because they're not as good. Um, <laughs> And they're not as refined. Now, if you want to take all the bits and pieces from all the different practices, um, perhaps you could put together some uh, holy grail of, you know, being one with inanimate objects. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess I'm kind of like a bunch of objects together. I guess that's just uh, what I am—just a bunch of yeah. nanites. Um, but anyway, okay, that's good. That's good. Uh, so, last I was going to do as Jackie, uh, I was going to the Cultivator sect on Ouroboros Station. Uh, Ouroboros does say if you are able to um, kind of do a couple things for him mm-hmm. on Station, uh, he would be willing to give you the Hearth Technique book that he has. Because oh. he has no more use for it. It's And it's some minor stuff that would require some specialties. Yeah, yeah. Um, he he's only asking two things. Okay. Um, there is a fabricator that unfortunately they just can't seem to get working anymore. It's one of those fabricators that works on microchips. Gotcha, gotcha. And unfortunately, they are afraid if they open it up, it'll really, really break. Okay. It, it's super old. They're wondering if you could use your nano machines to fix it. Of course. All right. That's that's something I will do. And then what's the second one? Um, there's a cultivator dispute between two factions. He'd like you to mediate. Okay. Um, between the two, uh, it does require you to be strong, because if you aren't a strong cultivator, they won't even. Yeah, they won't to you. listen. Yeah, might as right. Yeah. So, in doing so, violence is okay because that station is built a little bit different. Part of the station is built more durable than the other bits. Mm -hmm. Um, But try not to bring permanent damage to the station, such as substructure being damaged. Gotcha. uh, Plating, walls, that that type of stuff. Like vents, that's fine. That's just... That's easy. But substructure damage, big no-no. 
that's really hard to fix because you don't know how far that goes down, how many little things got affected because of substructure damage. Because mm-hmm. it's not it's not always just one thing. Um, and some stuff can go undiagnosed for quite a while. Or so, Boris, tell me uh, the names of the cultivators, the uh, the two factions. Well, it's actually two, uh, the two factions. Um, the Ironheart faction. Okay. Um, they are basically pharaomancers. Um, they are cultivators who specialize in also mining and metallurgy. Gotcha, gotcha. And alloying. Um, they are particularly durable and powerful group. Um, they're the ones that you would actually contract with if you're looking for a really rare material, really rare metal or anything, mm-hmm. elements even. They'll go out and find it for you because they have individuals who can literally sync with that material and find it among thousands of asteroids. So um, the Iron Heart, they're not a subsect of the Iron Eaters, right? No. Okay. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. I was thinking maybe the Steel um, Wolves, in a sense, that kind of stuff, but no. All right, gotcha, gotcha. Um, these guys actually don't. These guys aren't mech cultivators. Right. Um, they're miners. Gotcha. Yep. To jewels. Um, <laughs> they're not short, but. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, just, yeah, you know. Well, some of them are. You can call them dwarves, but you know they they have tall and short cultivators. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And the faction they are kind of going against um, is a similar faction to them. Um. Oh gosh, what did I call them? The Pharaoh Creed. The Pharaoh Creed. Gotcha. Yes. F E R R O C R E E D, the Pharaoh Creed. They are also metal specialists, mm-hmm. um, and they are also Pharaoh Mancers. Are they more in industry? Um, very, they do almost identical stuff, with the All exception right. of how they cultivate is different. Their approach, so they're cultivating cultivation method even though the order may be different and how they cultivate may be different um the overall techniques kind of amount to the same ability set just different um and mechanically they would be using different stats for the same fucking power or the equivalent of so kind of the same group um a lot of parallels besides the uh, the stats yeah. they use. Yeah, the Pharaoh Creed, um, they use a metallurgical tattoo system. Okay. Whereas the Iron Hearts actually integrate metals into their body. All right. So uh, they're kind of at each other's necks because technically their actions are large enough that they don't need the other to be in the way. There's plenty of asteroids in this sector, along with harvestable moons and all sorts of stuff, but they both think that they could easily just handle it themselves. They don't mm-hmm. need this other, these other assholes here. And, and technically, by Ouroboros' record, the Iron Hearts were established two months earlier than the Pharaoh Creed. But that was actually kind of that was a long time ago. That was about two hundred years ago. Mm-hmm. Ouroboros was well into its you know completion uh, before the first upgrade and the first accident. Um, because Ouroboros had a huge problem in the past. It had a massive accident um, on construction, and. Uh, the, the players actually talked to somebody about that. Um, they actually found one of the original technicians that was there during the building, and they went to the substructure to find some secrets. Some secrets, all right. Basically, they found a bunch of spying devices on the um, the interwebs. It's all the, the cables, you know how they would splice into a cable and tap yeah, yeah. it? They found a bunch of cables 
sliced and tapped with spying devices <laughs> from all different factions. And uh, Ouroboros couldn't detect those things because of the accident? Um, not because of the accident, it's just that's a lot to keep track of. You have to okay. invest a potentia um, into each cable to detect something happened. Right. Because if gotcha. you're good enough, you can splice it without computer systems knowing. Right. So, they found everyone was spying. I see, I see. Yeah, and so... Um, yeah, so the Iron Hearts got here first, technically. And the Pharaoh Creed... Um, has also been a huge contributor. They uh, they make donations. They were the first to donate to Ouroboros, right? And then, of course, the Ironhearts followed after them because they didn't want to be upstaged. So technically, Ouroboros doesn't mind that they're both here. It's just it's kind of boiling to a head, and there's going to be a uh, there's going to be a uh, cultivator war. Yeah. It'll be a turf war, something small, but it's it's still going to be two fucking supercharged gangs fighting it out in Ouroboros Station. And Ouroboros will have to get involved, and those guys will be ejected or killed. Yeah. Because you can't threaten the station. And these guys are pharomancers. These guys can control metal as long as they're touching some of it, you know? So, and Ouroboros is exclusively made out of mostly metal. There's some composites, but if it has metal in it, there's a good chance these guys will rip up or borrow a station more so than other cultivators could. Okay. That is good info. Um, you need to be careful because of your the way your body works. Uh, they could ferromance all that. Um, those nanos off of you. Okay. Um, if you have somebody to help you cultivate uh, a technique to help you against out outside manipulation, like Pharomancy, uh this station would be would recommend it before you begin. You need to be an unassailable um, titan of strength and power. If they're Aromancers can literally peel you to, you know, peel you in layers. <laughs> then you're not that strong. They actually sneer at the Iron Eaters. It's Iron Eaters in their second suit type of stuff. Basically, they they boast that you guys got nothing on them because you guys are, you guys have nothing to protect you from the very metal in your body. I do though. I have magnetism. You do, but. Do you have a passive technique? Do I have a passive technique? Because uh, they have passive. They, some of the more powerful ones have passive pheromancy, such as you know they they can just being in their presence or in the the range of their senses, they can immediately detect what type of metal is in their vicinity and in what quantities. Uh, the thing is, is it is an active thing. Um, what it pretty much does is you... It was my third complex for magnetism. You said I could uh, roll... Uh, when using a magnetism or a magnet roll, I could keep it sustained as a full action. Mm -hmm. And since I have... My nanites allow me to go double action economy, so I could keep that going for a fair amount of time. Yeah, he's he's saying you need something more protracted, something long. Uh, don't hmm. you, before you even begin with that task, uh, uh, fix the the machine, the uh, manufacturer, and yeah. then just. Explore the, the cultivator side, and maybe you can find somebody you can exchange techniques with, because other people have had problems with those two factions. And when there's a will, there's innovation. Yeah. Somebody might have a technique you can trade for. Uh, okay. 
let's uh, let's go to the uh, manufacturum to uh, check that out, and uh, okay. then we'll go to the cultivation. It requires one cluster to repair. It just takes you an hour to do it because you got to put your hand on it and then you know concentrate while you have the nanos go in, check everything out, and repair right. just just the littlest of things. Like you have a uh, a shorted connector mm -hmm. from one of the computers um, uh, on its motherboard. So one of the um, the wire or the connectors from one node to the next, unfortunately, has short circuited and it's burned. And you got little things here and there all over this machine. And it takes one cluster to repair, and about an hour's worth of time. All right. Sounds good. Yeah. Um, you get a lot of attaboys. All the engineers in there have been bitching about this damn thing. And they, you know, they want to like, hey, so what part of it was broken? How did you fix it? You know, like, because we could, we, we could only find things here and there. And it's basically you getting mobbed by these technicians trying to ask you every which way about. And I'll, uh, I'll tell them what's up. Um, just tell them maybe there's things they can work on for next time. Things that uh, they should be worried about going critical because it can cause some issues. Um, yeah. And yeah. Uh, cool. Have nanites. It's uh, quite effective. <laughs> well, we do have them. We just don't have somebody with that much control. Yeah. Yeah. No. Uh, but you know, I'm always around. You got my uh, Orbo's got my number, so if they ever need me again, I'll uh, I'll be here. Uh, we got a lot of work. If you want to do, if you want to have some work, and well, we can't pay you too good. We can at least potentially get you, um, well, remunerate you for your efforts. We got a lot of stuff in the back that we could let you take a peek at and give you a big discount on. All right. Yeah, so sure. Sounds great. I'm um, just, uh, I got some time. Uh, so yeah, let's check that out then. What do you got? Okay. They got a lot of more manufacturers that need, you know, you, you to use a cluster in about an hour's worth of time. Okay. Um, how many hours did you want to spend? Uh, so how many jobs there? Are? So is there like 10 jobs? There's about, there's about seven jobs. Seven jobs? That require nano. Well, in this particular manufacturing wing uh over the entire base there's about 200 jobs 200 jobs yeah. that could require your assistance but that's all over the entire base yeah it's a it's a lot of stuff uh i guess the question is how far is the rest of the party or is this uh you got people way ahead okay uh but not too far it's about they're about a couple hours ahead just a couple hours. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. hmm. yeah. Uh, so, Palastas and Natram, those are fleet people, by the way. Gotcha. Gotcha. Uh, gotcha. My notes. So, these are the two fleet admirals at birth at Ouroboros. They are the two people who would be more most likely to get the next you know, technology or the next drives for their ships because the, their ships don't have the Leo drives. Right. So they're, they're, they're staying here until there is an opening um, at the front and for them to get more drives to their ships because usually when a fleet falls, uh, the drives are recovered, installed into the next fleet, mm -hmm. and that next fleet sent out. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, and, question, Matt. Uh, yeah. Did you give the uh, party merit for last session? Because you didn't give them any for the session before. I don't know. I would have wrote it down somewhere. Yeah, I usually did. do. Yeah. So okay. probably not. Gotcha, gotcha. I just wanted to double check. Um, okay. It's not in either chat.
Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, you said seven downtime actions, and there's no way I can... I can't just... Uh, you're saying I have to, like, physically be there, eh? I can't just, like, put some nanites down, diagnose the problem, go to the next one, keep going until... I'm just trying to think of some time here. Downtime action hero wouldn't work for that either, so. No, it does take about an hour. And that's make that's you also looking at the things that could fail next. Yeah, and yeah. basically I'm being making thorough. the whole thing brand freaking brand yeah. spanking new. Yeah, yeah. Uh well I'm talking to these guys, so I'll just uh I'll take the uh the seven hours to uh uh to fix things. Um, yeah. They're going to, after you're done fixing everything in the manufacturing room, they'll take you into kind of a side warehouse. It takes about 20 minutes to get there. Yeah. And uh, they'll kind of crank it open. And they're like, well, as promised, uh, this is some of the, some of the stuff we got put aside that never really gets used. But, I mean, it could be useful to you. Um, we'll sell you t to them at um, either market value or below market value because they're just kind of sitting here, you know? Hey, gotcha. Uh, Jackie will go uh, check things I'll out. I'll have you roll luck uh, right. 10 times. 10 so, times? Mm hmm. All right. Uh, so I will do. Uh, how many mega rolls do I have for the session? I have it written at the top here. I just needed to find it. So I have eight plus eight plus eight is twenty seven. Oh, wait. So eight plus eight is sixteen, plus eight is, uh, 24, right? Yeah, 24. And then times 2 is uh, 48. So I'll use, um, I'll do 20 magnet rolls, um, two for each for these, uh, these luck rolls. What do you mean two for each? I'm attaching two magnet rolls. So times two magnet for each one of the luck rolls. What about your negative ones? Uh, Remember, I guess you, the way you have ne negative ones that you also have to use before the the good ones hmm. get refreshed. I just have a a pool of forty eight magnet rolls, so I have a uh, a fair amount Some of them. Some of those are negative magnets that you have to utilize on yourself. If you remember that, one, two, three. I have four of those. Yes. Okay. Perfect. And you remember, if you you have to use those up before the mm. rest of the magnets come back. Yes. Um, fearful, reckless, allergic to bullshit, and unforgiving. Uh, yep. So you can use as many number of normal magnets and super magnets as you want, but they don't refresh uh, until you use the four negatives, and then they refresh all at the next session. You gotta use the black. You gotta use the black ones or the bad ones. Mm -hmm. uh, but technically, if you're clever, you can use them on bad guys or other people. Yeah, yeah. If you're clever. Okay, so you're gonna use all those two per. Yes. Damn. Okay, go ahead and uh, if you could please give me. Mb one hundred. Yes. 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 Five hundred nine. Not bad. Yeah. Excuse me while I sort this. Yeah, it's nice. Uh, I'll do um, 
two rerolls. Uh, well, actually, three rerolls because of my 3D100 on the 95, 97, and 67. Uh, Are you just using fate points? No, I'm using wow. the uh, uh, the. I know, right? Um, I'm using the um, uh, coin toss. I rolled three ones for my coin toss for the stick. Okay. Um, so I'm uh, just the twenty nine. No, lucky it's not attached. He didn't give me those. So uh, yeah, just uh, twenty nine. Traded two nineties for two nineties. Uh, two nineties for two nineties. Uh, so the ninety seven turns into twenty nine. Cool. Ninety five yep. turns into a ninety eight. Worse. Ninety six turns into a ninety seven. So yep. I flipped the six and uh, added three. And uh, yeah, first one looks better at least. Okay. And um, let's do uh. Uh, fate point reroll from IQ on the 98s. Much better. Okay. So the remaining 97, um, it's going to be a stockpile of red lasers. Cool. Uh, mediums. Uh, about eight of them. Uh, kind of stacked up and you know, packaging it and whatnot. And he's kind of going through. He's like, yeah, looks like we got some medium lasers here. Uh, red ones. They're pretty good. Very sought after. A lot of people looking for them. Um, pretty old, though. They need they need some fine-tuning and some TLC, tell you what. <laughs> you look at the stamp. These are, like, 75 years old. Still in the wrapping. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, as you're kind of looking through as well, um, looks like we are now at the 62, I believe. Um, and you're looking through. Ugh. Let's see what else we can get. So we got the um, lasers. I actually find times two weapon hydraulics. Cool. Weapon hydraulics? Cool. Yep. They're an internal component. Huh? Um uh, you find a Caron core. Um, a large shoulder weapon map. It's an external component. Da, 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 da. Uh, you'll find yourself a AAC five, which is a auto assault cannon. Mm -hmm. da, da, da. I'll let you keep going through those. I'm just gonna find my phone. Um, you will find a little big labs HMS MK1. It's a heat sink. Oh, yeah. 
Is that heat management for you or? Uh, heat management system. Yeah. Is the chair encore a new item that you've added? Nope. It's an internal. Um, oh, it's not a power CPU core. Then. core. It's, it's internal. CPU. I got you. Got you. Yeah. Um, I think Chiron's the thing that allows you, if you get disabled, you move. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Um, you will find. Uh, five tons of Bruin Super Heavy. Cool. Then you will actually find um one of Pan Stars. Is that how I spelled it? Two hours. Alloy. Um, then find yourself. Um, a portable rail cannon and one ton of uh, unrefined osmium. And that's for the uh, the five. The guy kind of looks over it. Yeah, this is uh, a lot of stuff we don't use. Yasmium, I mean, don't really got a lot of actual practical use for it. Um, a lot of the boys in the Mecha Kingdom, though, those Mecha boys out there, they really love that shit because they keep they love to use this um, thermite jelly on their weapons. Pretty crazy to me, but I mean, this is all the awesome we've kind of picked up over the. Uh, over the years and years. And so if yeah, I remember we're... correctly, mm -hmm. Matt, the osmium rounds are um, things Liam uses for his bullets. Is that what I'm thinking? Uh, is... Also for osmium melee weapons. For mechs and or um, personal weapons. Because uh, you have the tungsten yeah, yeah. cores and then the osmium cores. The, the osmium cores, you can continually light them on fire with thermite jelly and they won't shatter or break. Right, right, right. Um, and they're very sought after by melee specialists. That's what my uh, this current axe is made of, right? Yes. For, for my, uh, yeah, yeah, my executioner. Oh. But you don't have any spare. Uh, no, this is true. enough to make a huge weapon out of it. Not, not the whole weapon, but the blade yeah. or whatever the, the surface is you're going to be using the thermite mm -hmm. jelly on. So this is really hard to get your hands on. Yeah, for sure. This amount of osmium. Because osmium is only made under the pressures of a uh, supernova. Yes, sir. Yep. So this isn't even from around here. Supernova from the next star system over, you know, um, imbued this whole solar system with quite a bit of osmium. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, he's like, did you want to buy any of this stuff? Yeah. Uh, I'll pick up the uh, ton of Obsium. Uh, I'll get the Pain Star alloy. And uh, check out the weapon hydraulics for a sec. You said those are externals, right? 
Mm -hmm. I don't see anything in your externals. Come on, scroll up. No, that weapon hydraulics are in internals. Um, the external, the large shoulder weapon mount is an external. So weapon hydraulic is internal, and then you have the mount is external. What category is that? It's a mounting general? No. Weapon hydraulics, there it is. Ah, just weapon allotment points. Gotcha, gotcha. And when you say one use of the alloy, uh, like to be able, so it, it gets kind of like um, molded kind of deal and you can't unmake it like, uh, like our fancy um, series steel stuff. Is that what you're saying? Um, basically, a one use of uh, an alloy means you can alloy your mech yeah. with it. Some of them require multiple uses, like, um, some of them can only be used in a single part. Gotcha. Um, some of them you only need to apply to where the heat stuff is. Um, some of them require you to put one in each arm because you're basically changing the the structure of it. Mm -hmm. So this one, pan stars particularly. Oh my god, I'm getting a phone call from Paula. That's second. all right. Take your time. I'll be right back. My roommate needs me to help him for a brief moment. Yeah, no, go for it. Back. Welcome back. Mm -hmm. All right. So, 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 so. Uh, yeah, I'll take the five tons of bruise and super heavy, uh, the one use of Pank Stars alloy, and the one ton of unrefined osmium. Sounds good. Portable rail cannon sounds fun, uh, but I don't think I'd. Um, I, it seems. So a portable rail cannon is um, like a mech weapon. weapon. Yep. 
is one of the larger ballistic weapons. Um, it is a artillery piece. Yeah. Um, it is a gigantic weapon. Yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> these are very expensive. Like, hmm. finding one is also just as hard. These guys are going to sell it to you at market price or lower. Market yeah. price for a portable rail cannon is 18 and a half million credits. Yeah, I just don't see it on your list. Yeah, that's all. Oh, it's on. Sorry, it's on the. Uh, let me send you the new one. Yeah, you better well. I'm still wor- I'm still working on it, by the way. Yeah. I'll send you guys the new one. You're cool. Should be under ballistic weapons at the very bottom. Yeah, I'm just uh, copying it. Most uh, mechs can't even like equip this, mm-hmm. <laughs> as it is a five weapon slot um, gun. Yeah. Because huge is a four uh, slot weapon. This is a five slot weapon, which is uh, ridiculous. And they're like, well, it's it's too small to put on a ship. And it's too big to fit in a mech. So, eh. Copy, paste. Let's get rid of that one then. What a rail cannon, eh? Indirect fire. Not bad, not bad. It's a big gun. Big gun goes chunk. Yeah. It can be used as an emplacement. Or it's a towable weapon. Because Britannia tows a weapon about this size. Mm-hmm. She doesn't actually equip it. She tows it. Well, uh, with thirty-two tons, that's a uh, that's a big boy. Big things like uh, that's um. If I actually look at the stats on stuff, um, that's more than that's more than that, that's a medium. You're towing a medium mech around. Mm-hmm. On no. the lighter side, yeah. but yeah. Big dick stuff right there. Yeah, well, what we'll do is we'll tag that one because I think um, Mina would probably want to get that. Uh, if I had the cash for it, I would buy it, but I don't have 18 million. Uh, let's check out Osmium. Awesome. I mean, you can haggle with these yeah. guys. It's true, it's true. Let's look at the...
How much for the Osmium? I don't see that on the uh, the list. It's not. Um, they're gonna ask you 500k for the Osmium. Okay. I mean, they don't really have much use for it. It's a really rare material, so they can't charge you nothing. Um, but it just kind of sits here. Mm-hmm. So technically, it's more than a ton, but it's basically you can make one mech, large mech weapon out of it. Or yeah. just, I'm sorry, one huge mech weapon out of it. You can make a large and a small. Uh, two mediums or four smalls. Gotcha, gotcha. It is not just one ton, though. It's basically uh, the whole thing weighs like 15, 20 pounds, 15, 20 tons. Because osmium is super dense. Mm hmm. So, and then it's going to be. Let's do some calculations real quick. Five. Oh, right. Commas are not dots. So that much. So one point two seven. Is that a million? No, it's just hundred and twenty-seven five hundred thousand. Uh, Hundred and twenty-seven thousand five hundred. That's the right word I'm looking for. Um, so that's for the bruise and super heavy. Um, the pan star alloy. Uh, you, you can always don't... come back. Like this stuff ain't going anywhere. Yeah, no, I know. I, I, it's just stuff that's available here. You don't have anything for the Panstar alloy besides um, ignores effects of deep impact. That's all it does, yeah. All right, so that's literally all it does. Um, you don't have how much yeah. it would cost, though. Um, yeah, Panstars would cost you... At basic market price, they're normally a couple million, but they're like two hundred k. Okay, all right. Uh, for the portable rail cannon, they'll say sell it to you for nine mil. Okay. Okay. Um, they're not. They're not in charge of moving the uh, the the goods and or storing them. Mm. Um, and once you buy them, you got to take them out of here. But uh, they'll sit in here for a while. How much you say with the Osmos awesome again? Twenty five thousand. No, the, for the Osmium, 500k. 500. The Panstars is go. 200. Yeah, yeah. Um, one, two, three. It's not yeah. enough to equip a ship with, but mech users seem to like it. Yeah, no, for sure. Good stuff. I don't see any use for the other stuff. Yeah, you don't have to buy them all. This is just what's available. Yep, I'll um I'll buy the the five ton and the one use of pants there alloy so I can just uh get that going. Um so that's gonna be Three two seven five zero zero creds, luxury debit or whatever. Um, and I'm going to put that into my mech bay. So I'm going to slurp it up. Okay. Have that as a material because my um, 
my inner mech is bruised and super heavy, so that's just extra extra weight to have. And uh, yeah, what else? What else? All right, so yeah, all right, thanks, guys. Uh, tag these two items for me, though. I'm gonna, I'll be back. Uh, Which items, sir? Uh, oh, never mind. Uh, sh she'll, um, uh, for the Osmium. Yep, what about it? Oh, I think it's pretty good for it. Um, but you guys don't have a turn to use for it, so if I. I think 45,000 sounds a lot better to me. All right, give me a give me a moment to ask. It kind of gives the I don't know. We're giving you a huge discount on it, anyways. Uh, go ahead and make me, if you could please, uh, mm -hmm. either a charm test. Um. Yeah, go ahead and give me a charm test. Charm it is. He's like, yeah, sure. Yeah, uh, we can do we can do four hundred fifty. All right. So uh, she will also slurp that up and put into her uh, her mech bay. And I got a bio for the uh, the railgun, uh, but uh, I'll be back. Okay. All right, talk to you guys later. Hey, uh, we got warehouses like this all over Ouroboros. You know, you yeah, no, for sure. By, do, do some more of those uh, repair jobs at those uh, you know, places we can't get to that easily. Um, if you're willing to spend the time, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll invest back into you as well. Yeah, of we course. got all sorts of parts that we can't fit on ships and we don't really have much of a mech presence here. So if it doesn't go on a starfighter and it doesn't go on a ship, it sits in a warehouse. Yeah. Uh, I'll ping, uh, Mina and say, uh, Hey Mina, there's a portal rail cannon I found in one of the, the, the hangers here. Would you be interested in, uh, helping me acquire said item? I'm saying a portable rail cannon yeah it's a it's a gigantic weapon so it, it would go pretty good for one of your mechs but i was just thinking being able to dismantle it with our nano would be pretty cool too what do you need my assistant acquiring this exactly it's uh just... nine mil that's why oh I, i'm not the money bag sure so it's... <laughs> right. yeah you might if i take a look at it before no of practice? course yeah come on over i've been doing some nanite works for some of the boys down um... here so so when you're kind of going over standard market price for a portable rail cannon, which is a five slot weapon, mm -hmm. not a four slot, uh, is about Excellent. 18 and a half million creds. That's if you find it at market price. Uh, these usually run closer to 30 mil on the market. Uh, I got that. I'm getting it for half. Well, I can. Yeah, he's getting but... it for half because he did some work at the, the manufactorums. Uh, help them fix some of their machines. And they're like, hey, come on down. We'll give you a discount. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I'll just want to take a look at it to... Basically, I want... Anytime I'm going to drop that much cash, even if I have the money for it, I at least want to get eyes on it first. No, for sure. No, that's... Uh... So, uh, yeah, it takes you a little bit to get down there. But when I'll you get down there... Teleportation, unless I'm not allowed. Um, this is a non-teleport area. Uh, okay, there is a, it's a five minute walk from the, no, it's, it's the authorized teleport area. It, it's fine. Yeah. It, yeah. Like if, it, if it's not authorized, it's not authorized. I'm not gonna, I'm not bucking the, I'm not bucking shit here. Yeah. And you kind of trot your way over and, um, it is 32 tons of, whoa, that is big. Uh, it weighs more than normal light mechs do. Uh, this is what Britannia would tow into battle with. Huh. 
Because this magnitude she, weapon she, to uh, yeah. the ships. Yeah. So, well, it doesn't do. It does magnitude weapon or magnitude damage to ships. So it actually does its straight damage to ships instead of getting its damage reduced by or divided by ten. So it's nine mil. You said. Yeah, it's nine mil. Yeah, I think it'll transfer nine mil. Yeah, and they're like, well, you're you're in charge of shipping and storage. You bought it. You got to move it. Um, do you already have a place for it? I'm talking to you, um, mm-hmm. Jackie. Yeah, I was going to uh, put it in my internal mech bay, but I'm going to have to dismantle it to do that. Yes, you will. Absolutely, you will. All right. I mean, when you dismantle things, you can basically blueprint them at the same time, right? Yeah, that's the uh, the plan. Uh, so I'm going to iron stomach this, Matt. Okay. Here is my toughness. Uh, did you want any of this other stuff, uh, new guy? Uh, so oh, for... We got? It's in well, chat got, right there. I got... Yeah, I got eight medium lasers. I got two weapon hydraulics. I got a Karen core. I got a large shoulder weapon mount. I got an auto assault cannon five. I got a little big labs HMS MK1. And then this guy kind of bought the rest. You uh, bought the Osmium? And yeah. And Star? Mm-hmm. And, and the super heavy. super heavy. Yeah. Uh... Um, let me even find what a Karen core is. Uh, it the- is a computer program, internal components. It basically, when the pilot is knocked out, it allows the AI computer to take over the vessel or your mech and pilot Stop it for you to save you. Sorry, my my, I had something start playing when I tried to when I downloaded the new thing. So you said it basically takes over if the pilot's unconscious. Mm-hmm. Or dead. Or dead, yeah. Interesting. Uh, it, it flies the mech back to safety. It does allow the machine or the AI core to use all of its, if, if it's built enough, uh, and you have enough AI, you know, autosofts, then you can actually have the mech keep fighting. But the Karen core basically just, if you don't have anything else, it just flies the mech back to safety, or it tries to. Uh, you know, yeah, let's, sure, why not? Let, let's, let's go ahead and, how much even, you know what? How much is the rest of this? Oh, except in the, total? Except for the uh, red lasers, I don't care about the red lasers. Uh, if you buy the red lasers too, I'll sell it all to you for 125k? 125k? Hmm? For everything. Sure. Yeah, all right. Yeah, and you, you sign off on it, you pay them, and now they have a, a warehouse they can put shit in now. <laughs> I don't, to be honest, I don't, I don't care about the, um, what you would call it, the, the red laser there. I mean, they're red lasers. And yeah. they're 75 years old. Well, it'll be interesting to take a look at them to see how they were built 75 years ago. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's not as changed time. Here's my uh, role for eating the portable rail cannon. And I'll it's gonna use take a, a fate point uh, for my Q to reduce that. Pretty solid, yeah. Just, it's just gonna take a bit. It's fine. It's a big weapon, it's thirty-two tons. So, yeah. And he's like, "We got other warehouses like this all over Ouroboros, filled with stuff. Uh, if you guys help us repair some of our more delicate machinery um, and our more used machinery, uh, we'll pop some of the other warehouses open and give you a big discount." I'm yeah. down. Are you down? Yeah, me. No, I, f- I figured you'd be really good at it too. Um, we're just doing nanite work, so There's... makes it e- oh. splits the time. Jackie, yeah. we both know the actual reason 
that you uh, asked for my assistance. Because I'm have, uh, my, you, you're the money bags. Yeah. I have I have a liquid funds. You have dollar signs for eyes. It's great. Yeah. I currently have you know what never mind. I'm not gonna talk about <laughs> how much I have right now. That's what okay. I mean um, if you want it you're aware for our budget, I do have a billion on me currently. Nice. So well, whatever the, we're uh, after. Yeah, so the um the, there's still another 193 jobs that need to be done, uh, or they want done. It's all maintenance, repairs on really delicate machinery that they're like, look, we don't have the nano machines or the technicians good enough to control the nanos. We don't really want to replace these. Uh, if you could get in there and fix it up and make it brand new from the inside, uh, we'll make it worth your while. I mean, there's so many work orders that, yeah, no, having both of us work on it would be helpful. Yeah. yeah. So each work order takes an hour to complete one downtime action because you have to concentrate and then, like, look into the machine, find out what's wrong, uh, find out what could be wrong in the future. So basically, you're, you're completely refurbishing these machines. It takes an hour apiece. Um, you don't have to do all of them. Each uh, new warehouse they'll unlock for you requires mm, five to ten different jobs, depending on how big the uh, manufacturer site. I mean, I was planning to put a me as a permanent station on this base one way or the other. Because I feel like Ouroboros is a good person to know. For various reasons, I say, glancing at the fucking fleets outside. Yeah, um, waiting. You also find um, a lot of these machines haven't been re replaced in centuries. These manufacturum, um, especially the micro stuff, like the big heavy haulers, those get replaced all the time. Well, but it's easier the, to get into. Yeah, but the micro ones that make the the, the chips and the electronics and all the circuitry. Those have been upkept for as long as possible, but you can tell a lot of these have quirks now that technicians personally have to learn to get them to do it. Like one of the technicians, he's like, "Well, this is old Bertha. She's a uh, quantum chip printer, and um, and when he turns it on and does the normal print, uh, it kind of shudders, and he comes over and smacks the side of it twice, and then it kind of." Words up, and uh, you can smell something in the air—a little burning of something. But it it starts to get to work. She's temperamental. Yeah, <laughs> I'm cool. It sounds like job for shitloads of nanites. That's what this sounds it, like. Basically, it's one cluster and one hour per machine fixed. Cool. Um, let me double check because we went over somewhere. Where did I write it down? Yeah. I'm looking for because I wrote down how much I can produce. In an hour, mm -hmm. here we are. So they, I they have produce. nano machines on site. They just don't have a technician good enough. That's why it takes one cluster in one hour. Oh, so they have them ready. Yeah, but they don't have someone good enough to control the nanos to actually make the repairs. Well, now they've got two. Sure. Let's go work on some shit. Well, why not? How long do you want to work on this, Jackie? Uh, so I'm I'm good for doing lots of stuff. I just want to go talk to the cultivators here later, but I don't know how long we're gonna stay at Orgora Station. Uh, I think between the both of you at this single manufacturing, it'll be three hours because there's six jobs. All right. 
um, and then you'll get access to another warehouse. So I thought I did all the ones here, though. It's yeah, you guys moved to a different site. Oh, we're moving to a different site. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. And Ubi's... Yes, yes. Uh, okay. Um, so yeah, I'll be, uh, I'll be here, uh, for the rest of the day, I suppose. And then I wanted to go, I uh, so spent seven, uh, okay. probably around two for talking to Ouroboros. Um, that was, don't worry about that. You guys all spent two hours talking to Ouroboros. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, that's nine out of the 24 of the day. Um, so... Uh, nine minus twenty-four is um, uh, what's uh, sixteen? No, no, fifteen, 15 right? So I'll yes. I'll spend fifteen more downtime actions for the day. To oh, uh, working on this stuff. Yeah. Okay, you guys can get access to three different warehouses if you work together. Um. Going to. I'm having to double check my current tasking for my Minas. Okay, so right now I've got three Minas on the planet. On, the on where? On Ouroboros. Okay. Oh, I'll check my list. What? Yeah, no, yeah. it's it's a it's a station out of planet. Yeah. Um. So, I'm trying, sorry, I'm, I'm, my brain's trying to catch up to where I, we left off last time we did this. That's right. I had one that was going into the depths of the of the the guts of the station with an engineer, mm -hmm. one of the original builders, to try to figure out what sabotage is supposed to happen. And then I had one checking on the munitions depots, which probably wouldn't take particularly long. I'm trying to remember what the third one was doing, because it gave me three things. Because it was the munitions depot, the one that was going into the depths, because that was a sabotage point. Mm -hmm. A couple of links, yep. Yeah. And what was the third one? Uh, I think you guys were looking into uh, the data transfers stuff. Yes. Which uh, the one in the depths, as it turns out, found info valuable to that. So I think I do have one me free now. On the station. So you guys basically. On it. Your conclusion was unfortunately, the Atlas Foundation won't be able to keep the secret very long, but it's fine. As long as you control the Blea Pearls, that's different. After that, it was just trying to catalog potential threats to the station itself, which, you know. Uh, having a better idea of what their objective is. That's why I was looking at the only major threats that I was aware of on the station. Yeah. Because one was... Yeah, I'm going to... Unless I remember what the third thing was, I think that one was more... No, I was looking into the transfer thing. I just hadn't actually finished switching that one because I found out that it was pointless to watch the transfers because they're basically a distraction. And you wouldn't be able to stop it overall anyways. Yeah. I'm not trying to stop the transfer. I was only trying to figure out if they were going to try to fucking steal something. Right, but there's too many ships and too many instances where it would be legal to get uh, uh. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So the one of me that... Yeah, the one of me that was in a nebulous at that point after losing their huh? original purpose is going to be the one working on these until something pulls them away. So that'll be hours of work for that one. Because why not? Why not improve over a station while I'm here, right? Um, all of you guys 
Roll 30 D100s. 30 D100s, you say. Uh, so 15, I mean, 15? I mean, well, I want them in groups of 10. Oh, so true. let me actually make a, a 1D10 roll. Actually, interesting. Um, it's not going to be 30. It's going to be one is going to be a single roll, and then there's going to be two other hangers with four. So uh, somebody roll a single 1D100, somebody roll 4D100, and then 4D100. Uh, Here, you did the single. This was your thing originally, so. Sure, I will do the signal. I will okay. use um, uh, two also, you have magnet rolls on it. Here's your single. A 30, not bad. Okay. 40, 100. Go for it, Lee. Uh, first of the four. 40. Yeah. And then I'll roll the uh, the next four. With um, one magnet roll attached for each. Um, that 99 sucks. Um, I'll use. I want to use IQ's fate point. Yeah, I'll use IQ's fate point. You know what? Actually, I'm going to use the Timberwolf's fate point. You're going to what? Use the Timberwolf's fate point. Okay. On the 30 or on the, on the 99? 99. On the 99. I have, I have a ways, yeah. ways to go for the 99, so I figured why not? Much better. To no singles, though. Feels bad. I'm going to go let Luna out. I'll be back. Uh, I was going to describe what you guys found, but sorry, I'll just type I'm in the chat. I'm here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Hi, Ogre. What's up? Live. Yep. I, I actually had people here, to here so I figured I'd hop in after waking up. Yeah, well, Johnny said that he's getting off early today to do stuff with Allie. Mm -hmm. So, you know. But is it just a, a large scale ore haul? Is that the kind that um, no. Lilith uses for her? Shuttle. No, that is an ore hauler. This is an ore shuttle. Okay. It's much smaller. Still, its hauling capacity is pretty... It's pretty big. Um, da, da, da. 40, 45, 92, 97... Fine, I'm going to have to arrange for a research team to look into that rail cannon. We already have the blueprint and everything, thanks to Jackie, so you don't have to worry about reverse engineering it. But, however... So what are y'all working on? Basically, Ouroboros apparently has a bunch of machinery for their manufacturing line and the like that haven't been updated or re properly repaired in like a hundred years. They didn't really hard to do. It, well, what I was going to say is a lot of it is stuff that has to be repaired via nanites and finding people capable of using them is... I'm going to use the word impossible. difficult. <laughs> yeah, basically. So Jackie was like, as a, the one that initially got into this and started helping out and then was like, hey, Luna, can you help? And I was like, yeah, I'm down. That and uh, uh, Jackie asked me to come be the bank for her to buy... Mm -hmm. Well, there's a rail cannon that was one of the first items. It was 9 mil, and apparently Jack is 9 mil, which, I mean, yeah, okay, fair enough. The, the only people who have access to ludicrous amounts of just straight cash in this party are you and me. 
Yeah, I have, I, I have I, Ludus crown I, amounts I, of straight damage. That's what I have access to. Yes, that's fair. <laughs> I, I, that's I, I, entire, I entirely recognize and accept this. I, I'm just going. Oh, uh, uh, yes, we're, we're, there are two people in this party who can bankroll. But the bank, it's fine. It's it's fine. Oh God. Apparently, the nine mil was it at half price because they were grateful to uh, Jackie for assisting in the first place. Yeah, we own halvesies. That's just how it goes, right? That's, that's how it works, right? Yeah, you put in, you put in the work. I put in the money. Yeah, it's true. Fine. To be fair, I could have afforded it at the eighteen million, you know, street price too, but or market price. Straight price, apparently they run for closer to like I think it was 30. So that's fun. Oh, and do you want a couple more? What, a couple more of the rail guns? Yeah. This these are toad rail cannons, apparently. No, I can buy more if I want to buy more. I'm just not bothering. We're gonna instead I mean, Jackie already uh, did her thing and blueprinted it by eating it. So I'm just, I'm gonna, basically, I'm going to build us a manufacturing line for it. It's fine. Probably. It's, it's only Are mildly plagiarism. It's only mildly plagiarism. One of the, the first warehouse they open, it's just a big shuttle. It's like, yeah, this is a. It was part of the mothball effort, but you know we have some individuals who they're no longer with us. But um, they had a a following for old rigs like these that just they keep a, they take a beating and keep on working. I need some TLC for sure, uh, but uh, it's got a 250 ton haul. Um, uh, uh, weight, uh, and it is built for moving material from Atmo into space and back down. So, if you want to use it to, I don't know, haul mechs or something in and out of space, uh, this would be a good way to get, you know, stuff up and down. Uh, it's also got quite a tow capacity for lifting uh, heavy equipment. <laughs> I'll 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 buy it. It's, they're gonna give you give you it for a fraction of the price at five mil. <laughs> All right, so that's five mil. Oh, uh, sure. Normally, back in the day, these went for around twenty twenty five, but not a lot of people have the parts anymore, and uh, they they just don't make them anymore. Just straight don't make them, huh? Nope. Why did the manufacturer stop on them? Is it just because of resources? Newer design. Or... Ah, so this is just an older model. Mm -hmm. uh, nothing is as durable as this. The, the armor on this is super Bruin, or uh, super heavy Bruin. Oh. We don't use Bruin super heavy anymore on our horse shuttles. <laughs> uh, it's too yeah. expensive. Uh, I definitely want that proto alloy. Um, proto alloy, three hundred k. Three hundred, okay. Uh, the neo wise, two fifty k. Yes, um, I actually have the thing open, and I'm looking at the. There's no price on them. It's. I know there's not. Regional. I'm looking at what they do. Ah, mm -hmm. uh, this one's a larger uh, core or engine size, smaller power core. Why? Why would you want to make your power core smaller in the engine? I guess for a very specific design, that's not bad. If you have a really, really juiced up power core that doesn't require a lot of size. Uh, that's fair. And then you get a, uh, you know, a huge engine because you know the power core can now feed the damn thing. 
Yeah, it's yeah. A, it's a weird. It's it's weird. Yeah. War spear. Here we are. Three melee weapon. Ten, half tonnage. Half I was tonnage. gonna change the tonnage on all that. Remember, I was gonna change it to flat oh, damage. He hadn't, met, he hadn't messed with it yet. Yeah. Okay. And it's got. Oh, it does have deep impact. <laughs> yep. Sure. Let's buy the war spear. Fifty k. Fifty. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, definitely buying the shield unit. Sight unseen. I like Vault Labs. I've seen a lot of their stuff. Yeah, they're pretty good. Uh, having more shields to study also doesn't hurt shit. Let's see. That was the Gudrung? Guter? Uh, Guter Damarong. Guter Damarong. Let's see. Internal components. This is the last component. To be destroyed. Take one less from... Ooh. Take one less damage from all missiles. Nice. So how much is that one? Uh, Guter Demerung? Mm -hmm. um, he'll save it, sell it to you for 30k. Only 30k? Okay. Yeah. These are all at heavy discounts. Mostly yeah, because true. no one wants them. And uh, they don't really do mechs here, but they have mech parts. But if it can't be used in a starfighter, a bomber, or a ship, uh, they don't they don't have a mech lab. Well, outside personal, you know, mech labs. So a lot of this stuff just gets stored in warehouses. Multi missile launcher five, huh? Yeah, MML five fires both SRMs and LRMs. Depending on what you got loaded, yeah. Sure, I'll buy that too. Fifteen k. Fifteen one five. No, I was like, yeah, this is fifteen thousand. All right. Yeah. And then I you mean, clear out that. Uh, did you want the marksman four targeting system? Uh, Jackie went for the marksman four, and then the Pharaoh steel. Okay. Just extra armor I, for the uh, Pharaoh the fibers. Wolf. Yeah. Uh, fifty k for the fifty tons. Oh no, uh, sorry, twenty k for the twenty tons. Here, That's you know good. what? I'll. I'll buy the blue laser and the DOIs just to have their warehouses clear. How about that? Okay. Blue laser, 6K. Yep. And the DOIs? Uh, that one's going to be 250. Okay. 250? Mm -hmm. Yeah, 250. Okay. I'll buy it just to clear out their thing for them. <laughs> you, you clear out everything. And they're just like, hmm, thanks for doing business with us. Really helped us with the the old Bertha. Man, a lot of our boys, we were coming, we were actually going to have a meeting about how to save old Bertha. But uh, no, you came along at the right time. Yeah, no problem. I'm going to be around for a while, actually. Uh, if you want, I might recommend you make your way down to uh, James's lab. Uh, they work on a lot of chemicals, especially uh, lubricants and for a lot of the ship parts. And uh, I, know, I don't know if you catch the, you'll catch the pun, but the big vat that they make all these lubricants in Kind of looks like a peach, so they call it the big peach. So James and his giant peach. The James and the giant it. peach, yeah. yeah. Uh, that thing is older than some of our stuff. Um, so is the movie James and the Giant Peach or the book? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, he, he thinks it's funny. No it's one else gets funny. it. It is kind of funny if you had any idea that it was a book and movie it, later. Yeah, I know, but still. I had to look it up, and it wasn't until this forum thing came up that I actually had any context. Oh, you remember the forums, too. What? Is it not a, is it not a safe place to be on? No, it's great. I'm on there. Nice. Yeah, it's kind of it's blowing up everywhere. Um, they, uh, they've kind of... Some of the mods... Um, they've put a uh, 
really strict entry um, parameter. So not everyone can just jump on. So. For the for the general forms, it's still just jump on. But for the more specific discussions, there is stricter entry requirements now. Yeah. Like the cultural the cultural discussions, just so you know, Matt, I did yeah. leave those still fully open. Because mm -hmm. those are cultural discussions. What's yeah. gotten limited is like mech part discussions and yeah. cultivation. He's, a, he's an engineer. He's in those engineering forums and it's kind of like ugh, things have gotten a lot harder to post and she just kind of shrugs and goes well some people decide to ruin things for everybody ain't that a stuck it's unfortunately we got to deal with it right yeah kind of i do have a if you know i happen to know any of the mods I do. Um, okay there's a there's a bit of a thing going around about favoritism on the site because it's supposed to be a kind of a big old you know um community forum for everyone to come together and discuss stuff but uh after the incident with the black butterfly and the closing down of the site for 24 hours and them not jumping in to give same treatment to other people kind of i don't know so you tell it's guess the mods about that because that's that was kind of really blatant and we thought there wasn't going to be a favoritism thing. It's more that, from what I understand, it's more that the owner became aware of the issues because it finally got brought to them rather than a matter of it being this individual specifically. It's gotten into a big sight. Kind of, I just, just kind of shrugs. I just uh, I thought this was a community for everyone, not just cultivators. So, mm. yeah, that's supposed to be the point. And from what I at least have been told, they started kind of flooding a lot of chats that were unrelated to cultivation with all this shit. Right. Yeah, just I don't know. I'm just complaining, I guess. Just uh... yeah, I understand too. It's kind of a problem. Things are getting split up more, from what I've been told. A lot of updates are still going to be rolling out. I know the engineering is going to be a bit easier to get into than the cultivation ones, because that's really what's going to be cracked on on. But... Because the cultivators are insufferable. I'll tell you what. They have an opinion. They're going to let you know. And it doesn't matter if you go, well, I disagree. They're going to keep going on and on. Yeah, I just, I just hope it stays neutral and there isn't favoritism at the, the higher you know, moderation. All I can tell you is what I've been told. Okay. Uh. What I've been told is that a lot of the forms aren't going to be... They're trying to keep some of the cultivators from posting about their bullshit in other forms. That's the real objective here. That way, those of us that just want to get on, look at <laughs> mech discussions, discuss new ideas, because I'm big in the mech discussions too. I do a lot of research on that front. Nope, nope, nobody seems to appreciate half of my research. But then again, my stuff does mostly work for robot people. So, you know, fair enough, I guess. Hey, hey look, if, you know, you got a robot body or you're working on robots, those are people too. Some may not agree on the station about that. We've, despite Brightest Star kind of being pushed back and some of the other cultivators getting a little bit of rebuke from station authority. Um, we're still pretty split half and half on the transhumanist thing, so be careful out there. No, no, I'm always careful. I but mean, I'm better also... than the inner ring. Tell you what. Oh yeah, no. If you ain't, if you ain't Leah, 
they have opinions. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about it. I, I spend most of my time in the inner ring. It's it's a political nightmare. Yeah, really. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for you. Well, I, I'm mostly on Aries base, so. There's okay. a hot topic. But, yeah? Yeah. Ugh. It's uh, a lot of shit going down there, you know? But. You say hot topic, like it's more than just a. People got opinions, man. People got opinions. Like, mm-hmm. it should be a fleet base, like it used to be back in the day. And it shouldn't have been this research outlet for Max, but I mean, the you mining know, ops off that place, it stopped a long time ago. So there's no real reason to keep it as a ship development base because the, the ore is no longer coming there. So I, I don't really give a shit, but some people care a lot. <laughs> you know, I've, I've always kind of wondered why we have things split up so aggressively on that front. Military should be military, right? Oh, until you got people who are literal armies in and of themselves. And if the fleets have taught us anything, might is right. I guess. I suppose. Well, Well, I'll let you guys go. I gotta get um, back to work. I'll ask a couple of my moderator friends, make sure you get into the right engineering forms. I'm in all of those, though. That's not the problem. I'm I'm mostly just concerned about the favoritism thing. I don't want this to be a, you know, forum led by cultivators for cultivators, you know, by and for, you know. Yeah, no, I understand. Because eventually it ends up in an argument of Yahan. Well, like I said, that's. At least according to the moderators, I know the point of the net, this big update is to finally sh- shut that shit down. Let people just fucking talk about what they want to talk about, not get it polluted by other things. Like, if you can out-debate me on certain stuff, because you have fact, you have numbers, you know, you have a logical argument, like, that's... Man, I spend so much time on the forums looking for that type of stuff. But then... You get a cultivator who's like, well, you can bypass all of that techno fuzzy stuff if you just cultivated it. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> but, great. But good, good for fucking you. Good for you. Who gives a shit? Let's tech this. That's mu- like going, oh, yeah, I can cheat. Good for fucking you. You can cheat. Yeah. Fucking sorry. I have strong opinions on how much they're assholes. It's been too much time around them well you spend time around them long enough you get the opinion that all of them are are assholes no holes barred no Uh, exceptions what's the the exception to two we had two people on base two they're pretty cool yeah they don't really do much but they're not assholes so they're pretty cool you know what i will retract that i do know a couple that aren't assholes or at least one that's not an asshole. Skippy's pretty great. Oh, you know Skippy? Oh, oh you, know, you know Skippy? Everyone on this station knows Skippy. Oh, yeah. Uh, Skippy's on Aries. You know what? Good for her. Good, good for Skippy. I can't tell you um, how many stories we get Skippy coming in basically on a stretcher. Yeah? Uh, well... She gets somebody to pay for uh, all the repairs on her system. Yeah. Yeah. Which is good, considering how much it cost. Well, Skippy used to fly a Mickey. Yeah? Or out of the, you know, out of the day. Red lasers. uh, LRM-10. But that's about Mm. it. You try and fight on the front line with that. Even as a no. cultivator? Oof. I decline. I'm not going to attempt that. Red lasers and LRM-10 and basically paper between me and them? Nah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, she worked her way up, built a custom machine. She came in here every once in a while on a stretcher because, well, needed actual medical facilities that the uh, ship couldn't provide. Yeah, that's crazy. 
Well, she's actually helped me work on my own machine, so. Yeah. Oh, say hi for her for me. But Absolutely. I really do got to get back. Now that old birth is up yeah. and running. Oh, we got some work to get done. We're behind. To you. I'll uh, shoot you my hand on the forearm if you want to give me yours. Sure. You know, uh, his is um, engine oh. nerd. So engineer nerd, but short form. Um, I just realized I don't actually know what I have as her public account. Mm. But moving forward, uh, I'm going to hop over to Ogre. Welcome. Hello. What's what are you up, up to? I'm just hanging. Wasn't what's, your, what's Nick's doing? Well, I mean, the last thing Nix was doing was, if I remember right, we're still on Ouroboros, right? Yeah. Yeah, if I remember right, last thing he was doing was he was finally getting into the fucking uh, business place so we could actually sell his shit. Yeah, uh, there is several business hubs um, on Ouroboros. Uh Two really big ones on each side of the ring, and then you got a smattering of them on the arc in between the two big ones. Uh, uh, they I do have asked, been told which one I needed to go to because it was me. Yep. Um, which particular side of business are you looking for? Looking for civic, military, um, it. Like, I mean, he's got a lot of military manufacturing, but his chemtech is supposed to be neutral because it can be used by anybody. Yeah, it's departmental, so you can sell yeah. both if you like, but it's uh, definitely a uh, a choice because the two major hubs, they separated them on purpose. One is exclusively for military business and fleet business. The other one is for civilian only, and they have them on the opposite sides of the station. <laughs> That's annoying. Well, they have a shuttle that you can take from one side to the other. It takes about 15 minutes. Yeah, they make he, beds. You don't want the civilians around the soldier, so. Yeah, it's enigmatic logic, but it bugs me out of character. Well, <laughs> you know, you also have fleet well, power, bug, you know, bullying the, uh, the civilian yeah. sector. Even out of character, it makes more sense than you'd think, because a lot of the equipment that goes through the military side can be so much more dangerous than the civilian stuff that you want to have a decent separation between them. Makes it less likely for somebody yeah. to accidentally buy shit that they weren't supposed to be able to. Well, I know that the chemtech shop that I was initially talking to was in the military sector, so I'll go to that. That was in first. one of the luxury sectors. It was in one of the, the marketplaces. Um, that was for people who have a lot of luxury cred in Devit and money to spend. Uh, it's adjacent to one of the military sectors, but they, they seclude the markets. Uh, the markets are exclusively civvy. Um, even if it's a bazaar, it's all civvy. So that so anyone which, can buy. So which one did I need to go to? Um... For so as a civilian good or a military good? Yeah. Because my chemtech brew are then both. Open a shop for both. I have to get approval to sell shit here. Yeah, I get approval for both. Yeah, you get approval for the, both. The, it takes, the process takes a little longer, but it can. Yeah, fine. But, and then whichever one's closer. Yeah. Which would apparently be the military sector because I'm butting yep. up against it. Yep. Uh yeah, you go find the the uh business application office and when you you know walk in, it was a kind of a drab looking individual with the gray enigmatic uniform and they kinda of look up from their screen. Welcome, how can I help you? Looking for a license to sell. <laughs> oh. Fill out this giant pile of forms. Hands you the data pad. It just plugs in, fills it out. Mm. Did you even read it? Yes. All right. 
Um, do you have a business license already filled out? Hands him the business license that he got set up for Nix Enterprises. Mm. They just kind of scan the card and it blinks green. All right. Looks like your your business card is active and you're up to date. Looks like there's no holds or warrants or audits. All right. Good for you. You did your you did your groundwork. Puts it you know, hands it back to you. Can you please hand me your enigmatic Thunderhead authorized ID to verify your person, please? Which one? I don't care. <laughs> That's something that proves it's you with a picture. Uh, just hand him the most recent updated one. Mm. Look at you with your fancy clearances. Somebody just rang the doorbell. <laughs> One sec. The fuck? I was wondering what that was. I was about to say, is that, did somebody drop like a fork or something on a plate? Right. Be right back. One sec. Why do I always get the hyper drab and bland fuckers? <laughs> You're dealing with the bureaucracy side of things. I get them all the time, too. I just don't oh, spend okay, much time with them. I just spend absolutely no time with them because I just get my shit done and leave. I don't I don't try to make conversation with them. I do my job and I go. No. Yeah. But I no, I talk to these people all the oh, time guy. as well. You're not oh, a guy. I'm just know. ring the door, but let us know a package is there. Mm. Okay. You got a yeah. good one. I don't know. No, that that's in their standard things. If they drop a package and it's not in a hidden or secure location, their policy is to ring the doorbell to let somebody know it's there. Yeah. I, I noticed it was there. Because he rang the doorbell. Yep, pretty much. He's like, all right, what type of business are you trying to file for? Obviously, since you're here, you're fighting for a military business. If it is that is incorrect, you were in the wrong office. I can give you a um I will a be guiding selling... data pad to take you to the civvy office if this is an I will... error. I will be selling to both. Then you also need to go to the civvy office after this to yes, get a business license there. I realized. Very well. Do know that you will have to have two separate locations for the two separate businesses because uh, by regulations, you are required to have separate shops so that you cannot accidentally purchase military-grade weapons and other products at the civilian store. Do you understand that? Mm-hmm. Okay, good. Um, please tell me you have the paperwork specifically prepared already for your product. Yeah. Please fill out this associated paperwork. How much time do you have today? I'm willing to spend a few hours if need be. I'd rather get this done and over with. All right, fill out all this paperwork. There is a 50 credit fee for filing in addition to the wait time and the processing fee for your goods by the inspectors. If there is a specialist needed to come in to verify the authentic authentic authenticity, I think that's the authenticity. Word. Yeah, the authenticity, authenticity and the actual usability of the product and the safety of the product, that will come out of your uh, pocket as well, unless you have Thunderhead insurance for business. Most people don't. Uh, the whole process will take about seven days. Longer for more difficult products. If you want to start it now, you'll have to unfortunately have the product on you. And that's all products that are military only, not any of the civilian products that you want tested. Make sure they're separate and there's no crossover. We can set up a interview with the inspection team almost immediately, and the inspection will be underway once you have uh, finished the interview. Fine. Um, 
And the frustration is entirely in character. Nix is wanting to strangle whoever organized this department. Seven days to get shit analyzed. Uh, the Thunderhead organized it. I highly doubt it. Because if it took seven days to analyze a known product, Thunderhead would be firing people. A s- seven days for your collection of products. How many products do you have for this? Oh, I've got weapon production, ammo production, no, armor no, production, your, and my chemtech, chemtech shit. Yeah, I was asking how much chemtech you have. Like, what What are you... I've just got the technically four elixirs. But one of them isn't even being sold. So it's three elixirs. And yeah. I assume and my, paraphernalia. And my known military weaponry sales, yeah. Well, you can't sell the military weapon on the civilian side. That's, no, that's yeah, good for the military side of it. Uh, the reason I'm asking this question is you actually need products for your store? And I'm not selling not myself. I'm selling two stores. You don't have to have a storefront. You can be a supplier if you'd like. Yeah, that, that, that's what I've been trying to set up. Yeah, he's just trying to be a seller to the so state in itself rather than a storefront. Okay. So you're not trying to set up your own storefront. Okay. No, no. I, I, I thought you were... I, I, I misunderstood. No. I misunderstood. Yeah, no no worries. No, I, I, I'm setting up to be a supplier to the station. And I'm having to jump through these stupid hoops. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. It's bureaucracy at its finest. Yeah. And Thunder is down, so... Yeah, we can't just get Thunderhead to smooth things out. This is the BR that runs when Thunderhead's not around. Mm-hmm. Do you wish to have the interview immediately with our inspector team? Yes, I might as well. Please pay the 50 creds. Just pays it. Okay, and you're walked over. You wait about 10 minutes and you're brought into an interview room. And there's a guy with a nice, clean, pressed gray officer's uniform. He's like, ah, oh, Mr. Nick's Banshee. Um, I'm your inspector today. My name's Neil. Pleasure to meet you. Um, I hear you have some products that need reviewed. Yes, which would you want to go over first, the big or the small? Well, let's start with more well-known products, and we'll go to some of the more exotic things last. It's... He'll just hand him a data pad. This is what I can supply and transit to the station to be sold through markets already in place. All right. Uh, We will need a actual, the actual good here for our inspection team to go over ourselves. Yeah. We don't accept just schematics. I have a shuttle that can be here within the day that'll have a supply of at least one of each of them. Okay. Um, we do need to go over the list of exactly the, uh, the stuff. It, it's what I can produce right now, which is because I got the uh, recycler for the scrap, I basically chunks of endo steel because I bought that recycler set up so that I could turn the scrap and stuff that I'm bringing back into the base metals myself. Oh, so you want to and, sell endo steel? Yeah, they'll, yeah. that's easy. They just like hmm. endo steel. There's my manufacturing base for the uh, hydro launchers so that I can put some yep. of them here so that they're not just being sold in Aries base. Sure. Market saturation is a problem. Yeah. Especially mm-hmm. for specialty equipment. And as well as the Frisk Hyperlaser Mark II. Ooh. Um, this, this particular weapon platform is going to take us quite a bit of time to go over. Even with the schematics. Because we have to verify that it is a, well, working product. 
we've had some issues in the past. Some individuals gave us what looked like good schematics, but when they actually sold the actual product, uh, the worksmanship was unfortunately subpar. Would you care for a demonstration of its use to? Nope. We will figure it out. And if we can't figure it out, it's not a product we're selling because it's too technical. That's the point of the inspection team. Hmm. It's an inspection team. You yep. have to just accept that they're not going to accept mm-hmm. your word for anything. Otherwise, they're not doing their jobs, right? Yeah. Yep. Just yep. make sure we have a copy of each of the products you're willing to sell, um, including all the constituent sizes. Um, if you are selling ammunition, there are several other hoops we have to jump through. But. Well, the. Be- the uh, quote unquote, the launchers themselves shouldn't be any problem. The only real type of ammunition I manufacture would join with the other thing that I will be selling, which requires a chemtech specialist. All right, we do have chemtech specialists on site. Um, do know that for proving chemtech authenticity, especially with the new ChemTech department. Uh, We have to go through the department, and they have a 15K commission fee per item inspected. Would it help if I already have approval from the ChemTech department? I'm going to need that in writing in so many different ways. And uh, I, 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 I will pull out the authorizations that I have from the Baroness because... And just hand it to him for all of my chemtech shit. All right. Um, what we'll do is we still need to have it personally inspected by our teams here. Mm-hmm. But with the approval already in writing here, uh, we can probably waive the commission fee for the specialist. Um, they just have to prove that this authentication is correct and accurate. <laughs> I'll still pay if it helps. I don't mind. If it is, uh, we'll, we'll have you paid up front. If it is, uh, you know, if it is verified and certified, we'll refund you the money. Well, and as to the type of ammunition I'm willing to supply, uh, I'll hand him the details for the Chemferno missiles. Like, uh, um. We are not accepting this type of munition on site right now. Uh, These are too volatile and too dangerous. So uh, until we have a proper holding facility for it, um, which will have to be off station, uh, we can't have these stockpiled in a single place or even in a grouping. These are too... Just looking at this, this is... The the housing is breached even slightly. This thing goes up. Yeah, yeah. He'll go, would it help if I supplied you with this, which is the details that I've already had figured out for proper safety and that should be able to be stored anywhere? Uh, I'll I'll send this to the review board. (laughs) This is a... We've had issues with chemical weapons in the past. Uh, Storage. Even with safety procedures and safety cautions, um, probability of something happening is still higher than we'd like. And it may be even user error on the people storing the dang things. We sell them, they're perfectly fine. One of our technicians makes a mistake. Whoops. You know. Mm-hmm. Fair enough. And we're taking. Um, people on our side um, and the possibility of them making an error and how catastrophic the uh, accident would be. So I'll take it to the review board. Uh, Mm. The rest of this looks pretty good. I'll have a specialist brought in um, for the plating, the the raw metals. Doesn't need an inspection um, here. We'll just waive that. Uh, But they do need to be tested every time you bring them in. Every new batch has to be individually tested just to see the quality of it. Uh, Mm -hmm. Because we've had people sneak some less than qualified materials 
uh, amongst some of the well, what they're actually said they were selling. So, but yeah, we'll we'll test through the customs uh, branch each of the materials you bring in. But endo steel, there's a high market demand of endo steel on Ouroboros right now. So you'll probably, as long as you sell it with the proper quality. Um, you'll have a hard time keeping up with the, devi the desire for quantity. A lot of the new um, fleet ships are starting to uh, utilize uh, endo steel in specific structural reinforcement and other um, reinforcement areas. So, yeah, fleets are willing to buy it all up, or Boros is willing to buy some up because we have upgrades we want to do yeah fair enough yeah so otherwise there's the chemtech elixir yeah that those are going to be tough to analyze uh i would probably say it will take three to four days a piece with the specialist on site uh, and you probably won't get the elixir back because it will have to be tested which means the, the, the guy's going to fuck with it. Are you okay with that? Because I know elixirs are not cheap. No, they aren't. Am I going to be reimbursed for them? Uh, because I am fully capable of testing any elixir without having to destroy it. Well, it's not going to be particularly destroyed. The Chemtech guy may end up having to drink it or inject it. Uh, no, you probably won't be reimbursed, but you can take that up with the Chemtech department and see if they will get that reimbursed for you. But we can't have it. Can't have the technician or the Baron who made it themselves test it for us. We got to have whoever is on site do it, and who has been authorized by the Chemtech department directly here on Ouroboros. But if you have the manufacturing process, uh, you should be able to make more. Unless you mm -hmm. have micro doses of it, we we can make do with, I mean, a smaller dose of it. I can supply you with a micro dose. I do not like the thought of somebody randomly getting a free sample. Fair. Fair, fair. Um, unfortunately, the Chemtech department's kind of brand new. Uh, we like to think we're kind of leading edge on that type of market stuff, integrating it into our uh, space station here. But it's still brand new, getting personnel who are authorized by both Ouroboros and the Chemtech department for inspections of this type of stuff. Not a lot of people, especially out here. It's easier in the inner ring. You're guaranteed to find someone on the jewel, but not here in the outer ring. Finding a chemtech specialist who knows what the hell they're doing. I mean, it's like one of two people on station. Fair enough. We have a lot of chemtech dabblers, but not technicians, let alone a baron. So, yeah, we only have one baron on station. Mm. So, and they're. Well. I didn't know. I, I've been rude. I never let them know I was on site. Mm. Well, yeah. Nah, uh, traditional bull, tra chemtech barony bullshit. It, it's uncouth for one baron to arrive and not let another baron know. I have. I know nothing about that. So. Um, could, could, we'll have could you no give me problem. their name so I can look them up and we'll pass your card. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, they are Baron Limarine. Okay. I will type it out for you. It is very pretentious in French. <laughs> and. Yeah, he'll supply them with micro doses and mm. thank him for his time before heading off to 
the civilian department for the exact yeah, so same thing. Analyzing each piece of hardware, because remember they have there's a an inspection fee. Mm -hmm. uh, it's 500 creds per military item, regardless of size. Uh, and then they already told you about the Chemtech prices. So it's 15k per item if it's already been ratified or sorry certified and uh, uh, by the Chemtech department. Uh, if the guy can prove it's accurate, then they refund you. Because you already yeah. got it certified. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now you're understanding. The Baroness charges 15k for the department to just even fucking look at something. Baroness knows mm -hmm. what she's doing. She's making yeah. killing. Oh, yeah. Which is making it a nightmare for me. <laughs> but... Yeah, uh, uh, after that, he'll head to the civilian sector one and send this Baron Limarine a notification that he's on site as he's heading that way. You will absolutely be invited for a tasting at your leisure. But the tasting will start around 6 o'clock tonight. And we'll go well into the night. You are absolutely invited. Yeah, why not? He'll yeah. head over after he's done with his civilian side. Over to uh, the civilian side. And there's a uh, very perky guy at the front. Hi, how are you? Name's Andy. Pleasure to meet you. You too. So, how can I help you today? Looking to supply some shops with my merchandise. All right. Um, would you mind filling out some paperwork first? It's no problem. I already dealt with the military sector. Oh, they're a bunch of grouches, aren't they? Yes. Yeah. We try and do the exact opposite here on the civilian side. I mean, it's not all like pulling teeth. I mean, it's a little bit of bureaucracy, and you got to jump through quite a few hoops, but uh, once you're there, you're there. And we'll try and make it as painless as possible for you. Fair enough. If you can give me a data slate with the paperwork I need to fill out. Already in front of you, sir. And, and it actually has a, a questionnaire about, you know, what type, what topic or genre of goods are you selling? And it, it's a lot more in-depth, a lot more paperwork, but it actually cuts out a lot of the them asking you, what are we inspecting today, you know? Mm -hmm. And since the only thing he's filling to the civilian sector is fucking Chemtech, so... It's like, oh man, a little bit of Chemtech here. Been getting a little popular. Got a lot more requests for this stuff. Um, do know that there's a uh, inspection fee, and if you don't have the certification on the, uh, well, the Chemtech formula that you're going to be selling... And hands him the certification and the amount for the fee. Um, it is uh, 50 credits to file the paperwork and 15k mm -hmm. piece for each individual thing that you're on to inspect. But since it's certified, once they have guaranteed that it is the product itself, you'll be reimbursed. How about that? Thumbs up. All right. Would you like to meet the inspection team? Sure. Oh. They'll be right with you. And uh, you're actually walked into the inspection booth immediately instead of having to wait for 10 minutes. And a uh, robot actually kind of looks up. Hello. Pleasure to meet you. I am CR4. Nice to meet you. What am I looking at today? Some Countech elixirs. Oh. Very well. And he will analyze it for a bit. We'll have to bring the specialists in. My apologies. This is one of the few uh, sciences that are outside of my expertise. If you would be willing to come back in seven days, we'll have our verdict. Sure. Thank you for your time. And I guess I'm heading off to a tasting. After dealing with a bureau bureaucratic nightmare. <laughs> Johnny! Johnny!
You guys talking to me? Yes. So you guys went and bought some stuff. You want to you want to go do that cultivator stuff? Are you I still thought, here? Will I still have you? Uh, yeah, sure. I just thought we had more uh, um, more other places to go to, unless you put them all together. I put them all together. There's plenty of other places to go to. Yeah. It's just each one requires an hour. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, and uh, we did one, two, three, four, five. How many hours did did we do this? The the sixteen or the f um, seven? You guys plus. did twenty four hours worth of stuff. We did twenty four hours worth of stuff already. All right. Okay. We got twenty four hours now with you two, yeah. Well, I just I just thought there was like one per and, but I guess um, those are for each station. Machine per hour. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then it, it added up to the gotcha, gotcha. I gotcha. I yeah, gotcha. and it, one machine fixed does not mean one thing gotten. Thing. From no, no, no. I, I I I get that, Matt. I just um I just was yeah. clarifying. So you guys had to do. A grouping for each one of the warehouses opened. Mm -hmm. So the one, the four, and the four, those were three separate groups. You guys are at 24 hours with the uh, the Jackie team. Yeah, yeah sounds good. Um, so I will say uh, bye to Mina and tell her that I'm going to the uh, Cultivator um, sect on, on Orbos. Orbos. And uh, you got a uh, I'm going to the cultivation sect and Ouroboros. Ah, all I heard was Ouroboros, and I'm like, Ubrish, Ubrish. Yeah, that's fair. I'm like, what the fuck is that? Nani, Nani, the fuck. I do need to quickly catch up, everyone. I just want to let you know you guys are at the 24 hours for that group. Uh, Liam, your guy in the under area, he's gonna be down there for quite a while. The other one um, was just checking the munition sites to make sure. I was checking the munition sites because that was the next piece of paranoia that was placed before me. Okay. Uh, uh, I'm not expecting much. I'm just doing an inspection. So if there's nothing wrong, unless you want me to make rolls. Um, oh. Stop. No, you'll mm. catch something Stop. with your perception and your abilities. Um. The warlords require a special tool to arm and disarm them. Yeah, like they have to manually be. Yeah, I remember. You know, the, it, uh, it enabled the warhead. Um, it either was sloppy or it was on purpose, but somebody pocketed one of those. They were supposed to make sure that the each of the warheads was off. So every time a, a warlord is arrived, a technician will go over with the arming tool and kind of turn it towards the disarmed side just to make sure it's it was there as default yeah um well uh it looks like you know he looks pretty tired but he forgot to put the tool back you want to mm. you want to wait to see if he remembers and puts it back or actually walks off with it because if once he walks off site with it we'll see if he walks off site with it um let me go roll for him. Uh, um, T steps off site for just a brief moment, and one of the friends is like, dude, you're beeping. And he's like, oh, fuck, 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 and he runs back in, and still the tool is beeping because it left the site. Uh, and he has to go talk to the manager. <laughs> then it's not my problem. Okay. If it, like, that just, that tells me, because I had eyes on him, that tells me that he wasn't trying to, trying to walk off with it. He just forgot it. Yeah. It looks and, like all of those special tools have a GPS on it now. And if you walk off site, the thing starts to beep. Interesting. I wonder when that got implemented. When did that get implemented? Is that a long-standing tradition, or is this a recent? Uh, that's a Ouroboros long-standing tradition. Specialized tools, especially on the military side, have GPS on them, and they, if they ever leave the designated zone in which they are permitted to be in, they start beeping louder and louder and louder. 
Um, and they have a very distinct mm -hmm. beep noise. And if any of the security personnel hear that, that guy's in a huge amount of trouble. All right. All right. And uh, um, they don't turn off. They have no off button once they start beeping. I'm... Uh, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and actually load like a like a, a a audio register of that beeping sound so that if I hear it distantly, my system might alert me. Okay. Just as like a little precaution. Yeah. Um. You do keep a keep a, hear a couple of them. Um. Kind of go off, but they're. When you do kind of arrive, you do see security personnel basically violently accosting somebody. Like face down on the pavement, their arm, four arms are behind their back, tied. Like the, the security personnel hit these people like they're criminals. And basically, they are walking off with specific tools out of spe specific zones actually counts as treason. Like the warlord armament and disarmament tool, that's treason. But this does mean this does mean people are less likely to be searched for such tools if they have one they brought from off station, because the assumption is, oh yeah, if they're going to have the tool, it'll definitely be had from on station, right? Sure. And they yeah. So could be, but you do know the security mm -hmm. here also. Um, there's especially for very sensitive sites like the Warlord Armament warehouse and storage uh those guys are scanned it's not the warlords i'm mostly concentrating on of course i'm going to check on them because you know you have to just for thoroughness reasons but i'm actually going to be looking at the other munition sites especially ones that are less traveled because if somebody's going to do something sabotagey the warlords are too obvious. LRMs, however, I mean, if you get enough LRMs all at the same time, I have no doubt you'll be causing hell. Um, SRMs, LRMs, torpedoes. It's still highly trafficked, um, but not as secure as the uh, torpedo bays, where they have the huge munitions. Mm -hmm. Um. No, you definitely could see somewhere here that there's good. There would easily be a security breach, but not particularly exploding the warheads, but potentially getting your hands on them. Like mm -hmm. um, people don't really look too hard at the menu, the like the the uh, order manifests for munitions, as they would for the larger munitions. Yeah. So when a order of 20,000 LRMs comes through and it's got all the paperwork, they just start moving that shit. And if somebody in the process made a couple of them disappear, it's unlikely anybody would notice because of how many there are. Right. Um, it's a well-oiled machine regardless. It's just they, they do a three-factor authentication. You know, they, they check the guy who's ordering it. They literally scan the order with the, the special barcode. You know what I need? I need somebody who specializes in, in sabotage to act as anti-sabotage for me. Somebody who really knows how to fuck up a place like this that can just be like, if I was going to do it. That's what I really need. Are there any criminals like that that are looking to uh, find a way to commute their sentence by service? Um, sorry, I had to talk to a guy briefly. Uh, uh, I was thinking that if I'm going to keep trying to hunt for sorry. sabotage... Right. He's gone into the ether with him. Gone forever. Never to return. Sorry. I have a other chatty roommate. He's just telling me about the, the garage issue. 
you. There was an issue, but then he fixed it, so I'm like, thanks. It's not an issue then. <laughs> yeah. So start. start again. Oh, um, it occurred to me that so much of what I've had to do recently has to do with tracking down sabotage and shit. Mm-hmm. I really just need a saboteur that knows his shit so that can just act as kind of the reverse saboteur. Uh, where do you want to go looking for that? There are any criminals looking to have their sentence commuted? Well, Ouroboros has one of the largest brigs in the Outer Ring. It's not one of the prison asteroids, but it has one of the largest brigs. It might as well be a prison. That's right. There are prison asteroids and shit like that, aren't there? Yep, that's where all the prison ships go. They move around D-class personnel. Uh, the brig is for people who have had their sentence, um, you know, they've been already sentenced, and then also holding for people who have yet to be sentenced. The sentenced people are just waiting for transport to one of the prison asteroids um, or being moved to a experimental site like yours. Yeah. Um... So yeah. what I'm so what I'm gonna do, Matt, is I'm going to go through personnel files and what they're guilty of to see if there's anybody with the right skill set of what I'm looking for. Um I'll have you roll luck. I'm actually gonna have you honest to honest to goodness roll luck here. Yeah, that's fine. If they have they like, shit. Um forty three. Uh, there is some guy who fits the, um... Do we have anything that allows us to re-roll luck tests? I don't remember. Just ogre. I think Nyx is the only one who could. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or, Nyx yeah, would be he... the only one who could grant a re-roll. On oh, a luck sure. test. Be my guess. Alright, awesome. Cause... Roll a 1d40... Yep, two. 42. Single well, you more. have a person who is going to be executed in a couple days for high treason. <laughs> uh, saboteur is one of the things on there. Hey, Matt, how would you feel? You remember that thing I bought that's the opposite of what Milo gave me? How would you feel if I tossed that at this? Which thing? The You remember how uh, Milo gave me Calamity? Mm-hmm. And I went, Destiny. You're going to throw a Destiny fragment at this? Basically, yeah. Okay. Why right. not? Let's make this... Um, this is. I'm looking for a permanent personnel type thing, and that at least increases my odds. Well, yeah. Uh, you're reading through this. They are a black practitioner and a gray practitioner and a practitioner of something else. Uh, they are a saboteur, uh, um, a terrorist, uh, an anarchist, uh, an anti-thunderheadist, and yeah, that's this is uh, they're a lot, huh? Uh, they have a body count of several thousand because they have blown up a lot of things. Um, particularly cultivators, though. Um, only two people who are non-cultivators are on the uh, list of casualties. One actually lived, but is peril is basically has to receive uh, basically a robot body because they- they're so mangled. The other guy, unfortunately, dead. Um, he got hit with a piece of shrapnel. It's one of those unlucky ones that's like the guy was so outside the explosion radius. But one of the pieces of shrapnel, unfortunately, clocked him in the head for like a quarter kilometer away. Um, no, this guy is, this is a cultivator terrorist. Hold on, I'm hearing cat yowling. Give me a second. Yeah. All right. Uh, next, you go to the banquet. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, yeah, this person, when you get there, Lamarine actually meets you at the door and they're very very well dressed with the beautiful mixing 
coming in of the the chemical equipment. All right, I'm back. I was correct about that being cat yowling. Mm -hmm. There's a there's this cat that likes to come into our backyard, and I don't know why, but seems to have beef with my cat. I have beef with your cat. Well, fuck you too. Punch it in its face. Right, so this guy's like major league terrorist, is what I'm hearing. Yeah, but only seems to target cultivators. Well, let's go have a chat. All right, you go down. Also, break. also that victim that needs a robot body, I'll, I'll I'll arrange a animatronic for him. Uh, yeah, has it already? A rough had process, him. but yeah. Well, I haven't had time to get researchers on that because the main researcher that I was going to pull in for that is uh, what's her name? Um, uh, 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 Char's first girlfriend there, or Aether's first girlfriend, Ashley. Ashley, she was the one that agreed to work on that with me, but I haven't pulled her in on the projects for that shit yet because. Aether's been monopolizing her time. Yes. That's part of the that is part of the deal for her even having gotten the animatronic body though, so So yeah, let's uh they're in a break. They're in one of the high uh security cells where they are straight jacketed and muzzled. Well and they have four guards with the uh disruption rifles. That you produce. <laughs> ah, so glad people appreciate my work. <laughs> All right, let's go. I'll, I'll I'll do the security arrangements necessary to have a a visit with him, so we can have a chat, a conversation. And it's just... a lot of you will you will take caution of the mm -hmm. yellow line. You will not cross the yellow line. <laughs> yep, got it. <laughs> Uh, once I'm there with him, uh, I'm going to kind of look at the guards thoughtfully for a second. These are just like station guard, right? Uh, these are Thunderhead agents assigned to Ouroboros permanently. Ah, so they are Thunderhead agents. Mm -hmm. I just give them a nod then. They know who I am. I know who they are. It's fine. I'm just going to kind of look at him in the cell and be like, well, hello there. I... Something like that. I'm actually here to ask you probably complicated questions. So, first and foremost, introductions. You can call me Mina. Hmm. And you are? Go by X. Well, hello, X. Would you be willing to answer a few questions for me? Oh, In the... You have a choice. You always have a choice. You can always tell me no. But I don't my have question... What's that? Citizenship. Of course I don't have a choice. You have a choice because I'm giving you a choice. If you want to just say no, then, well, our conversation ends here. However... If you are willing to chat and have a conversation with me, I might have a way to help you, as long as you're willing to help me. Quid pro quo, all that my jazz. Help. My flavor of help. So, well, that's why we're going to start with a few questions, if you'd be willing. Are you? Mm -hmm. uh, you're one of those need tacit approval sure <laughs> fire away it's a matter of politeness for me mm. what can i say so uh, i understand that you've been well you've got a rap sheet down my arm really Only the arm <laughs> not the leg not as tall as Mine, the one I have is more summarized. I could get the full one, but well. 
Why is my main question. Why, Why did you do all of this? Why not? Hmm. I can come up with any series of bullshit answer. I could try and plead to your conscience. I, I could play an act. I want the most honest answer. I don't give a shit if it's a good answer. If why not is the best answer you have, that's fine. Best answer. And it's just kind of what I've come down to after hundreds of different interrogations. Hmm. Did you have other reasons before all of that? And this is just what you've come down to as the core? or Cultivators are a plague. Hmm. All right. What was that? No. Take, take, take a really strong, good look at all the things Thunderhead put together. Mm-hmm. They have potential. They have they purpose. They have actual worth. And they are inherently good. The moment the cultivators get their stupid hands on it, that's not what it is anymore. It's what they want it to be. I'll take mm. Brighter Star as an example. Brighter Star actually used to be something for good. And then when they got their hands on it, it became True Star. And what does it do now? Attempts to suicide bomb military bases because... That's Neo, that's Neo Star. Hmm. Neo? Eh, who knows? Honestly, it's hard to say. It Both of them Star. Hmm? Yeah, was not what Brightest started. Hell, the most paradoxical answer, Cultivator Union. Oh. It was of essence for good. Hell, even the cultivators who started it had an idea for good. In fact, they hired non-cultivators to help them run it, manage it, focus on it. But either those people became cultivators themselves or were outed at eventually. So cultivators fucked up their own thing. By the way, what, what, what is this guy's black potentia, by the way? Uh, he's got four different types. One's anarchy, one's rage, one's mm. uh, vindication, and... Uh, the other one's revenge. And they haven't all. No, he's got them spinning like a centrifuge. Oh, so that idea. I have been rolling over that same fucking idea in my head, Matt, for a while now as an attempt to, like, try and get Black Potentia under control more. The fact that there is now an example in front of me feels me makes me feel so fucking vindicated. I used a gray technique as a, a housing, like a ring around it, so that the, the, the black potential doesn't just go flying off because of the spin. Holy shit, he it actually the idea would work. Holy fuck. No, that mm, I am on this man's wavelength, Matt. I want you to understand that. Please continue. Yep. Uh, um yeah, these he's just So his after a bit of listening to it, she's gonna be like, You are a cultivator, are you not? Yeah. Hmm. I uh had become the monster to kill the monster. So then you understand why I have done what I've done then, because I'm the one that made okay, for what you've done. Uh, would you look hmm? Look, before, <laughs> before, I have made a significant amount of anti-cultivator equipment myself. It's part Great. of what I do. Wonderful. So you see the same problem I do, then. The fact that they are... They're a problem that needs yeah. a solution. I don't, you don't need to kill them all. You just need to kill the right ones. Exactly. Okay. So Sorry. That's what it basically comes down to. Simple as that. You just got to kill the right ones. Sorry. Finding people who actually agree with that is such a nightmare, I swear. Unfortunately, when you start taking out ships, especially civilian transport ships, packed mm. to the brim of well, cultivators uh, and other Thunderhead assets. 
people get a little touchy, you know? So on this list, it does have you as being a uh, anti-thunderhead. Can I ask about that? He's a little bitch. <laughs> he does everything in half measures. Mm-hmm. He lets the people that he listens to put a leash around his neck and yank his leash whenever he needs to do something real. Make the hard decision. No. He's too half-baked. He's not hard enough to help us survive in this galaxy, so I'm gonna fucking do it if he can't. He can't do it with his own problems. You know, remove his poison from within his own body. You know, surgically extract the cancer. Well, I'll... I understand. Yeah. (laughs) All right. So... Hmm. Interesting. So Maybe different the the inner ring or on the jewel, but on the outer ring of the frontier. No, it's the Sarah one. It's his voice has been hijacked by others. Yeah. It fixed so. it, but he doesn't. Because his people just can't do it, can they? Oh, uh, yes they can. Oh. Because it is currently actively being fixed. Hmm. Huh? of calculations. So, that's not really important to you and your current scenario. I presume you don't actually want to die, right? I don't give a shit at this point. I got half the people on my list. That's good enough for me. I have an offer for you. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah, it's terrifying. Mm. So, here's the offer I have for you. It's pretty straightforward. I'm not trying to fuck you around here. I really not. I'm trying to make this simple. Sure. Whatever you say, big guy. I need somebody to help me track down terrorists and saboteurs and figure out the fuck they're doing. Mostly among true star ones, from what I've come to understand. Though some of it is Neo Star. Hmm. It is what it is. I need help with that. I need an expert. I need an expert in really just all of that bullshit. And so, I need somebody with the right skill set to assist me with a few other things in regards to cultivators specifically. Mostly identifying who our problems are. I got so a list. Said, so you've said. <laughs> So here's my offer. It's very simple. You come and work for me. I see that you're reinstituted as a citizen. You can continue your work in assistance with my own. And we can work together on the matter. You will not be working for the Thunderhead. You will instead be working for Nieth, his heir. Are they a bitch too? Are they going to be able to make the hard decisions, pull the trigger on, well, killing? They've already killed significantly more people than Thunderhead has directly, I mean. Thunderhead's ordered it plenty, but, well, you know how he is. Well, as long as they can make the right decisions and the hard decisions when necessary, fine. She was a soldier first and foremost. She was a mech AI. Mm. Mm-hmm. But that rankles the power structure. I don't give a out. shit. Good. All right. Get me the fuck out of here. Get my citizenship. We'll go deal with some problems. There is going to be a contract, of course, for my end and yours. We're going to agree to it. We'll have a neutral lawyer work on the terms. And then you get your citizenship back once you're satisfied with the terms on the paper. Sound good? Do some work, and I'll I'll we'll get shit arranged. I'm keeping my side of things simple. I already there is going to be a lot of people who do not want you to do this. Uh, there's going to be another investigator on site that's like, "Whoa, you can't! This guy is going to be executed for high treason. You can't just pardon the guy." Hmm. Well. You see, 
I can. Anyway. <laughs> and he's like, tell it to those guys, and you have a bunch of cultivators in the hallway, just that's the way out. <laughs> and they're like, okay. Young? Alright. I'm just gonna kind of look at them for a second. Hmm. How to handle all of you. Great. And one of the very large guys in the front. Mm. You're not thinking of doing letting this guy go. I'm He's looking at him. Who is this guy? I'm just gonna pull up his file real fast. Um, he is one of the sergeants of one of the uh actually one of the more powerful military branches of cultivators on base. Um they are called the Lancers. Um mm. they are well van- Guard specialists. They're the ones that uh, like to wade into the enemy first. I'm going to look at him and I'm going to go, there's greater uses for him than an executioner at block. True. That may be true, but he's killed a lot of my people. A lot of cultivators. You're a cultivator. You should understand. And how about I make it worth your while? A trade. Something of equal value maybe just give him to us we'll make him pay for what he's done and I think it'll be well worth your while hmm what can you offer me that could possibly be of more use to me than an expert that needs to ha- that can handle exactly what I'm looking for an expert in See, well, you'll have, I've yeah. got a bunch of people that seem to want to blow up stupid fucking shit all day. And he knows exactly what to target to blow up the things that I know they're trying to blow up, but I don't know the whole how of. Can you offer me anything close to that? The understanding of how these, how people like him yeah, actually really. think. Go for so it. We got two cultivator branches on base. They're minor groups, but they are very useful, so we kept them around. One is actually an unorthodox faction all the way from the Jewel. Mm-hmm. Um, they, well, they used to be called uh, the Star Seekers. You know, they, they, they're, they look to the stars and, you know, predict outcomes and whatnot. They, you know, see beyond what their meager eye, you know, normal sight can see and, you know, mm-hmm. watch yes, the area remotely. Uh, I, I the... get the gist, yes. Yeah. They also have predictive capabilities. Very good for remote observation and prediction of enemy movements and or specific ca- causalities and probabilities. But the that's second not group... your people. Oh, there are people. My... Mm. Sh- I see. Surety, there are second group. They go along with them. There are analyzers, our own investigators too. They are the ones who can basically dig into the deep understanding of the W questions. You know, the who, what, when, where, why, and how. Hmm. And if you pair them together, you've got quite a force, and it's more than one man. Hmm. We've got about fifty to fifty-five people per group. Mm, specialist in this particular thing already if you uh if you want me to get you uh connected with them i think they can get you your needs i see also you would have the gratitude of every cultivator on base and i think that that's something it's not nothing but there is another issue for me that i think probably isn't occurring to you in this exact moment. I don't like it when people try to intimidate me. Not intimidate. I'm trying to negotiate. Mm. These guys here, well, they're my entourage. We also have a lot of very passionate people who I'm keeping back from doing anything foolish. Mm. And we're just chatting, you and me. 
are just um, chatting. You see, having an entourage for a chat like this doesn't look good. No, it, it looks sure. very much. Hmm? My entourage? Oh. She looks around. It's just her and Mina. And of course, the uh, the guy in the straight jacket with the <laughs> hmm? uh, the chains everywhere and the muzzle is like. Yeah. Maybe some of us don't feel like we need one. Well, then it doesn't particularly have to look poorly. It's just you don't feel like you need one. Mine follows me everywhere everywhere I go. Hmm. They help me keep the peace. You know. I'll help you keep the peace. Are you? Is he a member of security, Matt, or is he just a cultivator? He's just a cultivator, but he is a sergeant. Mm -hmm. Um, so he's a squad mm -hmm. leader. So he's seen quite a bit of combat, and he would be <laughs> a a a military police, an MP for the cultivator side, because they technically police their own most of the time. Mm hmm. Hmm. So, Sergeant. Yep. I'm not somebody that likes to go back on their word once it's given. Because it looks poorly on me. Well, you just didn't have all the information. Oh no, I understood exactly what he did. I have his full file. I have a full list of everybody that he has wronged. Hmm. See... Yeah, what about all the aggrieved? You see, from my standpoint, you're not making an unreasonable request. However, your request is based in emotion, not actual sense of use of assets. Use of assets-wise, I would much rather have all of them involved, though I know that it's not exactly viable, given the situation. Because, at the end of the day, we do all work for the Thunderhead, don't we, Sergeant? I mean, when he's around. Hmm, when he's around, indeed. Even when he's not, though. Not really doing much for us here, when he's not around. So, uh... No. I mean, if he comes back, all hands on deck. But, I mean, we're kind what of on our own. Fair weather of you. Hey, look. We're at war. We're all survivors. We gotta do the hard jobs to make sure everyone in the, the home world and all the so you know, what about threats? Here's a curious thought to you for you. What about threats that your people can't pick up? Like say other cultivators who are intending potentially to destroy Ouroboros. Point them out. Well, that's the thing of it, isn't it? If I could just find them, I wouldn't need somebody who could find them. Or would I? I was offering and you just those you, people. And, uh, and if well. you could find them, it wouldn't be a problem that would require me to be here, would it? Hmm. Potentially, but at the same time, if you think about it, you know, we don't try not to... Uh, wade into your investigatorial well side of the park you know try not to get in your way or nose into your stuff so how are we supposed to know what is a threat and what isn't if you don't share it we have plenty of I'm authorized sure personnel who are allowed to know we have a lot of capable people who are more than willing to help are you familiar with dio star and true star Not particularly fond of Neo Star because their fleet power, fleet power and cultivators don't get along. Mm -hmm. I understand the necessity, but it's like oil water. We work together, but you have to shake really hard. As for True Star, eh, half and half. They secure our rights wherever you know Brightest Star had touched. Um, they make sure we. You know, have a voice in these secret and not so secret organizations. But I will admit, 
some of the leadership is a little heavy handed and um, a little ambitious now that they've got a little taste of power. So, so the way things stand right now, Mm -hmm. and this is me sharing with you for you to bring to your people. I got information from another investigator, one who is less concerned with actually handling these problems, it seems, that one of the two of those uh, members of Brightest Star, the member groups there, is planning something large here on Ouroboros. Information implies that they either want to steal something very important, destroy the base, or a combination of the two. I'm about to make you a bet. What's your bet, then? You put that guy back in containment, and you use our assets first, ones we spoke about. And if we solve the saboteur problem, this part, this issue on base, then that scumbag dies, like he's supposed to, and his execution. We are providing the service you're looking for. If we can't, then I'll make sure no one gets in your way when you uh, you walk off with them. Hmm. You see, my concern immediately to that particular deal is if you fail then they're going to complete what they're trying to do. That's the only fail option here, after all. I think we can get it up. We know this station better than this. Well, deadbeat. This is our home. We have some people who know this place very well. And with your access, which we do not have, we can get into places that we normally aren't allowed to look. Because security clearance and authorizations and all that are kind of hard to come by. And since we're not allowed, well, it's not our business. You can make it our business. It's our home. Oh, good fuck. I'm trying very hard not to just kill all of these people and keep going like a steamroller. You could just teleport. I could. But they're willing to help. They are willing to help. But I also don't want to just agree to this because the guy that I am making this that I made the first deal with is right here. If I make this deal, he won't trust me. Like I will lose a significant amount of trust with him. Uh, this is kind of a lose-lose situation for me. You know what? I'm going to look at him in the stra- in the, the straight jacket. Are you a betting man? Only when I'm desperate. As he kind of just does a shrug with the, the muzzle and the, the straight jacket on. And he just goes, shoot. <laughs> <laughs> he's like only when i'm desperate anyway i'm desperate so what's up <laughs> yeah. how about a different suggestion for this competition sergeant how about a race him versus your people if he finishes it first it's done because that means he was better than your people, which is just as important as them being able to achieve the task. All right. I'm amenable to this, but I want to show you the strength and difference between an organization and an individual. He has to work alone. Absolutely. He he does. We will work together as a cultivator organization with all of the assets like I was offering. So everything I offered on the table 
will be used. And since he is by himself, that's all he gets. He will have one binder specifically to ensure that he doesn't leave the station or anything that he's not allowed to do. All right. I think that's reasonable, don't you? Uh, put a tracker on him, too. We'll put a tracker on as well, but trackers can always be removed. Fine. I think that's amenable. One person but, that is I not can... to help him, either, to specify. Yeah. I'm gonna. He also needs to wear on his person that uh, he is a persona non grata. He is a non person. He needs to wear that openly because he's not. I'll I'll look at him. That bet fair to you? Fuck no, but who, I mean, looks like we're gambling, so. I would oh, point okay. one other aspect out. What's that? They can't harm him. Uh, I was going to specify that. I already, I did think of that. I just hadn't specified I, I, yet. I was going to say something that may be viable to you is he isn't persona non grata anymore. The minute he agreed to your deal. I haven't signed anything. Mm. Yeah, we were getting the paperwork done. Um, hmm. You see that that is specifically to make it so the the station personnel don't work with him. Basically yep. trying to ensure that nobody talks to him, which yep. I mean that does call, hamper him quite a bit, doesn't it? Yeah. He's yeah. going to have to break a whole hell of a lot of laws just to get into places. I'm going to kind of rub my chin slightly thinking and then go he's going to have the same level of permission access as your people though he will be working under my authority even if he is marked as a persona non grata I think that's fair whatever you give him we get two and vice versa the last important rule is neither you your people, nor he, can harm each other. And I will be sending a message to Ouroboros, of course, to inform him of what's going on so the security personnel don't do anything untoward either. I agree, but accidents happen. So let's agree on that. Accidents but... and purposeful sabotage are two very different things. So that's yeah, acceptable. I, I, I can't control everyone. No. And since we're all going to be looking high and low for these problems, well... Do let your people know, and then if they do something as an individual, that's on them, not on you. How about that? If he is attacked, he's of course allowed to defend himself. That's reasonable. Same for your own people, after all. Yes? Mm -hmm. No problem. I think we'll get along famously. See? Oh. Rational conversation. Negotiation. I, I prefer rational conversation, but I found it's in such short supply these days. Was I not rational? Was I not flexible? No, you very much were, and I appreciate that. I was more bemoaning how rare it is for us to find it. A lot of hotheads out there, you know? It takes uh, an old hand to... Uh, get everyone's respect and kind of outgrow that hot-headedness. Mm. Absolutely. I'm just going to look over at him in the straight jacket. You're the only other one that needs to agree to this because it is your life on the line here. Uh, is that all? Oh man. Shit. <laughs> oh man, oh, I'll have to think about this. Uh, uh, I know, it's such a hard question. I know. I know. What will you yeah, talk about? I don't give a shit. Let's do it. Suicide or betting your life? I mean, one way or the other. All right. I'll hold out a hand to see the classic seal it with a handshake. Yeah, you seal it with the, the sergeant, and the, the guy kind of 
with the straight jacket on kind of just bumps an elbow. <laughs> I will get his hands free from the shake as well. Hmm. He's going to need his hands free for this after all. All right. Um, we will. Um, it's going to take most of your day to go through all the munitions, get everything started, all the authorizations. Mm -hmm. uh, your other copy of you going through the bowels of the or the substructure of uh, uh, just so you know X's minder is going I'm going to have um, Kowalski come in for it because I know he will do his job and his job specifically cool um, but that'll be the rest of your day Yeah, you going through everything and then Mr. Banshee you meet up at the <sighs> Uh, the Marines uh, little banquet. They are very well dressed and they have the newest chem tech technology. Or at least something you haven't seen before. But it looks nice and shiny and fancy. And They have a, a facial respirator basically always fixed like the uh, Baroness does. And they will hold out a hand for you. Kind of uh, fingers droop down. There are a couple steps higher than you on, on some steps to their abode. Also very thin, very tall. He'll shake. Oh, this is, it, it's not a hand out. It's a kind of a hand, uh, an arm out, but with the top of the hand kind of bent down facing you it's a uh, kiss Take the top of the arm. hand type of thing he just cocks an eyebrow and those irises and eyes are swirling with chemtech yep Unthinking. hey just cocks an eyebrow hey with the comment, if this is how it'll be. Are you not a gentleman? There's a big smile. Oh, I am a gentleman. But to my woman, you are not my woman. You're rather uncouth. I don't even know if I want to. Someone who has no manners in my abode with a lot of my special guests over. I thought you were. I do not offer. I do not offer traditional tokens of servitude to anyone. This is servitude. No, this is showing manners to a lady. No, manners would be this. As he gives a slight and polite bow. And then. It, Do not think yourself patient to me. He just cocks his head. By all standards, I am. No, I'm a duchess. Whatever they think they am, or I think I am, it's not just a baroness. I'm a duchess. Hey. Just as a quick thing for you, um, Ogre, if it seems like she's going for very old etiquette rules, as you are on her territory, technically speaking, it is with an etiquette to show that's not a mark of obesience, but rather a mark of I'm in your territory and I'm respecting it for at least the old, old etiquette, which is what she's yeah, kissing the top of the knuckles or kissing the top of the hand as a very very it, old. Very, very old. It's uh, That's just, not a mark of servitude or obedience, like you said. It's just really fucking old manners. It's ancient, archaic, it, no idea why they're going for it. But so you it, are aware. It, no, it, if that's the case, we need to retcon it a little bit, because I studied up on this shit. Well, you also have the right feel on it, because even the barons and whatnot don't do that on the homeworld. They have a different way of showing respect to a peer or from someone higher station or lower station. Yeah, they got their archaic rules, but it ain't this. 
Yeah, no, th this is her. So I was right. This is her trying to ma mark herself as better than me. Well, she, yeah, no, it, it, technically, by the Chemtech hierarchy standards, if she actually is a duchess, she is higher ranked, but that doesn't mean you have to give a shit. Then, then I have to ask <laughs> since when has Duke and Duchess been a thing? Because as far as I have been told in our conversations, in the research I've done and everything, I have already progressed past a baron because I have not one but four unique elixirs to my name. Baron is, that's just, that's the commonality of someone who has enough business power and chem technology and ability. Baron's technically the highest. There is no higher, higher one, but I mean, you're in the outer ring. Things could be different here. It's yeah, I haven't, I haven't heard of this position either, Ogre, yeah. to support you on that. I haven't heard of it either. It might just be, this might just be an outer ring being assholes thing. Yeah, no, it, it's at this point, it's, he's just going to look at her and be like, I know what I produce. So I'll make you a deal. You prove that you are surpassing me to such an extent that you deserve to be recognized as somebody of higher status and I'll show the due respect until then you have not proven it thus I will treat you as an equal you can think that but I still require the manners if you want to enter my home manners is what keeps us civil it's what keeps us above basic bestiality and bestial tendencies. So, you're welcome in my home, but I do need my token of manners, of civilization. One sec. Uh, you actually recognize this as a tick. This is a mannerism. He got up. Oh, no, I, I, I was having to talk to my roommate. Yeah. Um, you do realize this is a mannerism that high-level chem tech um, individuals end up getting. Like, you have a couple ticks that um, you require of other people in the chem tech industry. Uh, the Baroness absolutely does. Um, this is kind of a, an OCD thing that you pick up when you reach the highest levels. Um, it can manifest in all different ways. And the longer you're in chemtech, the more likely you're going to pick up some sort of social mannerism tech. Uh, like the way you have your chemtech equipment and the way you run your lab is a uh, very specific thing. So mm. this person yeah, is but... later stage. <laughs> You haven't picked no, no, up the that, special dicks. Yeah, that that's entirely recognizable. But Nix is just going to give her the big serrated tooth grin. And, and there's going to be that absolute frenzy in his eyes as he just gives her the sweetest smile and says, I am not capable of that. I could do it. You would not have the hand when I stand back up. I was hoping we would have some sort of understanding, but I suppose you are lesser. Uh, and while that, that doesn't excuse your behavior. Oh, you have no idea how badly Nix's holding back just not killing this bitch well i understand you can't control yourself you're new to this so i mean if you can't resist biting off my hand i mean i don't need a rabid dog at my party oh let me explain this is not because of chemtech I this is care. others this is a bastion of civilization we don't go around biting others. You can go. 
I don't, I don't need a rabid dog at my party. I thought you, with the name Baron, would actually bring in some civility and new knowledge, but obviously you let yourself go. He chuckles. And I thought you, who claim the station of Duchess, would have the civility to understand people, but I guess... Those are close in your face. Yeah, (laughs) no, at this point, he is going to burn this place. No, he doesn't put up with this shit, and you know it. He is putting his people on fucking this bitch. Yeah, the the two guards who kind of escort you around, one's is like, damn, that woman's got a venomous tongue. He's like, he's just going to smile. Yeah, and she very much underestimates who she's biting. I thought you were the one doing the biting. He goes, oh no, I haven't bit yet. My bark... Is far worse than my bite. I mean, and that's because my bark is on a political landscape. Look, man. I mean, could you have at least tried? I mean, you were. Never mind. That's... No, I, it. I, I don't it, want nothing it, to do with it. Never no, mind. I didn't say it's a No, it's a fair question. Let's just say, for simplicity's sake, Things like that force an instinctual response. Just drugs. They, they're, they're both keeping yeah. their beats to themselves now. <laughs> he, no, he, it's entirely fine. He, he's got his shit handled. And at this point, he's just going to wander the station because he's just going to keep doing what he was doing. Wandering around, listening in psionically, you know? It... Yeah, that. I don't have anything else to do. Nix is bitching about not being back on Ares because he's got shit to do there. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, you can reach out to Aether and have him transport you back if you want. But uh, the uh, Lemarine uh, mm-hmm. residence is actually psionically shielded. It's actually pretty sophisticated. I mean, you could probably brute force your way in, but Mm -hmm. it could cause some damage. (laughs) It could be, it could cause quite a bit of damage. Um, no, just yeah, that was unpleasant. Yeah, he's just going to shoot a page to the Baroness of the fair warning. I, I, I plan to burn this Lemurine bitch to the ground. She will get that communique in a month. You can just bounce it through me. Fair enough. Then I will thankfully bounce it through Luna. Um, Mina. You will get a recording back. Uh, I will Mary. transfer to you unread. <laughs> The Baroness just kind of stares at the screen and then pinches her brow, just like, when, Darling, please tell me you did not disrespect Miss Lemarine. Wait. Uh, I am trying to grow the Chemtech department out in the outer ring, and unfortunately, I have to go through the powers that be in the Chemtech world out in that sector. And I 
if you had ruined the potential relationship and or soured uh, her opinion of you, we may not be able to do business, if ever, now in the Outer Ring. Or at least on Boros. I just send her the video. Yes, she is a royal bitch. Oh, wait. She absolutely is a royal bitch. She calls herself Duchess because she has developed a new grade of chemtech above an elixir. So I haven't seen it. I haven't tried it. I don't even know if it's real. But if it is, I mean, awesome. I'd like to get my hands on it, test it, uh, so on and so forth. But... I mean, yes, they're infuriating. They're awful. They're scum. We hate them down to our very core. But at least you could put on a mask, play along, you know, gut it down. I know, it's insufferable. No, it's not that it's insufferable. It's that I physically cannot do what she did without taking her hand. Why? Why Because, not? because my alternate self would begin tearing its way out of where it is in unbridled frenzy to get to this bitch. Okay, no, that's, a, that's a good reason. It's a solid reason. I was asking why. That's a solid reason. I mean, but still, uh, did you have any people with you that could have done the 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 hand kissing for you, like a uh, an escort or uh, personal guards or uh, an assistant, like anyone who is officially attached to you that can do the the tokens for you. All of my people are back on Ares because I got randomly ported out here. You could hire someone. Uh, look, the Lemurian family, each of them have a little nervous tick that they do, and they take it personally when no one does it. And it, it doesn't technically have to be you, just as long as the, the token was given. It's what happens when you dose up on Chemtech for too long. You get these little... <laughs> Things in your head that have to be done. Get. uh, I'll just. Fine. One moment. I'm just just... gonna stop. Talk to the. Ask the station if he would mind if I teleport a couple of my people here. As long as they are within the authorized teleportation decks. Fine. I, I. I'll. Get the guards to show me to this, these decks and ask Luna or Aether to teleport a couple of people for me. Because yeah. I do have people for this, but they aren't fucking here. Okay. Uh, they said you could also just hire somebody. Mm. Yeah, but I have people that I trust for this. Sure. Absolutely. So, if Lunar Aether would be oppo- wouldn't be opposed, I would not. I also have something to tell you. What's that? Aether? Oh, that's not true. Ashley's related to them. Yeah, I think. No, it's actually her <laughs> family. Yeah, so I'll just page Aether and be like, I, I need some people teleported. I have to deal with these fucking Lemurine oh. pricks. I wonder if they're related. Yeah, no, I can help you. Thank Was you. I going to bring Ashley in? Does she know anything about these people? I don't know, but we can ask. Please do. I want to mess Jeff, please. Mm? 
Hey, hey, what's up? Hey, I have a question. In your family lineage, is there a chem baron, duchess, here in the outer rim? Aunt Evelyn? Yeah, yeah. I think one of my friends is having business with her and is oh. having problems. Oh, no. Uh, she's a bitch. <laughs> I haven't yeah, told this. We don't yeah. we don't associate with her very often, if at all, if we can afford it. But she kind of is the family outlet for business in the outer ring, which let me tell you, it's a lot of money. It is a ludicrous amount of money. The having a trade relationship from the jewel all the way to the outer ring. That's I mean see. Yeah. Would you be willing to help my friend next? Navigate the social faux pas. Uh, sure. Uh, any prep data? Like, uh, one time. You can send her the together. video. Oh, and one the fact time. that I have an open invitation. Uh, no, you don't. <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> no. No. Uh, what else in the video? Uh, yeah. okay. You're going to need a gift. And it's not going to be fair, but you need to appease her ego. You still have to have someone who does the token, and then you're going to have to do the extra, like, apology token. Uh, and then you're probably going to have to give her a second gift, because one is just not enough. Uh, and they need to be impressive and uh, rather expensive and portable. Usually elixirs. It's not fair, I know. Or something I, fancy, like a jewel, like a, like a really big fuck off jewel. She loves jewels, diamonds. Uh, yeah. Oh, you, you. Oh, I want to k- just kill this bitch. At least I kill my family. No, I mean, if she goes away, I mean, it would really financially impact our family. But no one likes her in our family. Uh, We've also thought about trying to get her replaced, but at the same time, she's got her claws in everything. And we're not sure if anyone who would have replaced her would be able to do the job she does. Because she fights off the cultivators every day. Fleet power every day. I mean, I'm sure you could do it, Ashley. Can't. Do I want to? Fuck no. <laughs> Send my brother or something. He at least knows how to smile on command. I didn't know you had a brother. He's kind of the family idiot. Mm-hmm. And a family of geniuses. So, above average intellect across the board. Common sense for days. An actual amiable personality. I think your personality quite amiable. Yeah, I mean, he went through the lifted program. Not top 10, though. He was 12th. Mm-hmm. I don't know if he did that on purpose or not. It was close, but not too close in case somebody dropped out, you know? Mm-hmm. Understood. But still. Uh, I mean, I'll go if I have to, but... I'm probably going to make it worse. I'll get hold of your brother. Yeah, here's Brian's number. Thank you. Be careful around her, because you don't want to make an enemy politically of this person. They will make your life in the outer ring ruinously difficult to make friends and to do business, because she's a bitch. She's vindictive, and she's petty. <laughs> and and uh, spiteful. Understood. Oh, she's an egomaniac. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Can I go back to my work now? This is a not fun conversation. Of course. Okay. I'll have a conversation with you later. Mm-hmm. And then. I'm like, want me to call Ryan for you next? Sure. 
but I'm getting more and more reasons for wanting this bitch dead. Yes, but again, I ask you not to kill my family. She's not yeah. technically your family yet. And this is true, but we are engaged, so family to be. Yeah, you call uh, Brian, and he's like, is this my future brother-in-law? Hey, how you doing? Hey. Oh, was, uh, I think the first time we've chatted. It is, and unfortunately, it's not unfriendly. It's on business. Oh gosh, you had me worried. You were saying unfriendly. I was like, oh no, what a, what what have I done? But business, yeah, business. What's up? What can I help you with? I'm calling on behalf of one Nick Spanchy to uh, purchase your assistance with dealing with a problem that he has recently found himself in. Oh gosh, uh, I'll see what I can do. I've, uh, without any details, I, uh, I don't know. He is dealing with uh, one of your extended family members. Oh. Okay. Yeah. We can be a handful, can't we? Yeah. Any any way you find a lemurine, ah, uh, it's uh, we're trouble. <laughs> I don't know. I find you guys very nice. Not, not oh. trouble at all. Well, but... who do I have the pleasure of uh, snake charming? <laughs> <laughs> uh, your Aunt Ava? Auntie? Oh, she's a handful. Tell you what. <laughs> oh, uh, sure. I haven't seen uh, Aunt Evelyn in such a long time. She's a little rough around the edges, but when she gets to know her, I mean, she's she's pretty amiable. Quite a... Uh, very eccentric. But, I mean... You know, she has a few tips, but as long as... You, you know, be nice, be polite, manners and civility, and you know, be yes, um, kind of hoity-toity. Oh, you'll fit right in. She'll fall, right, she'll fall all over you. But I'm afraid that is not the, the situation you'll find yourself in. A lot more repair work needs to be done. You know, that's okay. <laughs> That is perfectly okay. Uh, I know how to smooth her ruffle feathers and you know make things all fine and dandy. Do you need some gifts? That, that's she's a materialistic person, so you know something shiny and expensive and um, impressive and exclusive and you know, you know all the ifs. Of course, she likes to be treated like. Well, royalty, and you know, only the best for royalty. So, I am yeah. not sure what your uh, ability to buy is, but oh, yeah, I'm poor as shit. Uh, well, I, I will have cover it. Yes, I'll have my associate transfer you some money from, so you can buy something from the home jewel for him. You know, she does. Yeah, I, I know exactly the place to get it. Uh, it'll take me a couple hours to fly there, but. I know just the store because she loves stuff from the jewel. So far out, you know, I just just send me to the jewel. It'll be easier than transferring. Understood. And you'll be able to get a hold of me. So, uh, if you hold still, I will be teleporting uh, your boss for the current time being to you. Oh, sure, 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 sure. Uh, do I just don't move? Don't move. Okay, not moving. And then I'm going to teleport next five feet to the left of him. Okay. Quark. Oh, it's static. There's a, there's a, your spine tingles. Whew. It's a big jump. Yep. Mm. Yep. Goes away quickly, though. Mm-hmm. Mm. You just got mathed through the universe. How do you feel? Yep. Mm, tingly. That was really cool. You came in and it was like Zork, particles, and blue, and... Hi, my name's Brian. Nix. Uh, I can shake your hand, right? I, I, I won't lose it? <laughs> oh, shaking the hand is no problem, and offers him the insulated gauntlet. <laughs> <laughs> Shakes your hand, pumps once, and then, well, we best get going. Uh, they close in a couple hours, and we'll catch them right on the tail end for their... Uh, 
Oh, this is ours. So sounds good. Yeah, you guys fly over. It takes a couple hours, and uh, you guys end up kind of in a not particularly a sketchy place, but looks like a mosaic market kind of tucked. Uh, in some sort of alleyway. A mini market. Like, yep. Yep. And he's uh, just following. You get a lot of, you know, what's ups and you know, cat calls even for you, Mr. Banshee. And uh Oh, the mosaic market's his home. He he's happily futzing with people right back. And he leans them over to uh leads you over to a uh, um lost and found dealer. It was lost. He found it. Now he's helping other people find it. <laughs> Since it was lost. And he's like, yep. all right. Uh, uh, this is the place. Best place to find the things that, well, well, exactly what we're looking for. And he immediately picks out four things. And it's like, yeah, definitely she'll love that. Oh, oh man, she'll find all over that. That's that. Where did you get that? That was an exclusive line that they only made one. Never. We'll take that. Do you have the matching? You do have the matching piece. Oh, okay. Yes, both of those uh, and those. And he basically buys like seven different things. Okay. You're just going to be like, here, as this is an apology gift from me, pick something from this and I'll just give him the massive ludicrously expensive alcohol collection I have. Can I go through it? No, I won't fit her down. No, no, no. Do you have any wine? She loves wine. I have wine. I have original champagne from Champagne. That one. That one. Yeah, we're going to go with that. Yeah, that. <laughs> she likes the bubbly drinks. Original champagne? Oh, absolutely worthy of a, a duchess. <laughs> Okay, perfect. Uh, and then he goes over to one of the Chemtech dealers. Uh, any elixirs? And they're like, oh, yeah, I got one. It's already expensive, though. I haven't sold it. And, um, uh, I don't. We'll buy it. Oh, oh, you didn't even hear my price. Well, we're going to buy it. I know my Chemtech colors. Uh, that's a really rare one. Not very sought after, but to a Chemtech collector, uh, yellow brews are. They're hard to find. Uh, okay. It's 50,000 luxury. Luxury debit. And he's like, is that too much for you? <laughs> Just hands him 50,000 luxury debit. And hands you the the yellow elixir. Hmm. That's weird. It's like a, like a neon sign crossed with liquid gold strands. It's like, hmm. Yeah, it, 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 he'll give it an analysis as we're doing shit. Yeah, and uh, he basically buys a whole bunch of stuff from the Mosaic Market that is very enigmatic mm-hmm. and really expensive and fancy, and that's uh, drops in the bucket for you. But mm-hmm. uh, yeah, all, all in told, he's got a gift basket worth of stuff, and. Uh, yeah, the yellow brew, you've never seen that one before. Um, hmm. Kind of analyzing it. Roll me Chemtech. Chemtech research or Chemtech? Uh, because research chemtech. is the tier two. The oh, well, then roll tier two, yeah. Roll your tier two. Um, hmm. This is actually pretty nifty. Um, this is a, in general, immunosuppressant. Uh, this allows you to do some very invasive uh, alterations to the body and trick the body into thinking it is actually natural. Um, with full customization and... and uh, it actually forces the body to not only be tricked into thinking it's the whatever is natural, uh, it'll actually 
will help fusing metal and flesh together uh, and other synthetic compounds. And the body will then actually produce the right enzymes and other chemicals in the body that it didn't before to facilitate the upkeep and the, uh, well, even the growth of um, the fused material. Hmm. Hmm. Basically, you can graft pretty much anything to a person with this, and yep. your body goes, "That's that's right. That was there all along." <laughs> yep. And Did then, you? if it ever gets damaged, the body then goes, "It's well, it's part of the body. We can repair it, and actually, we'll repair that with the body's own." Yeah. No, that that is pretty amazing. He's going to send the scan of the data and the materials and everything to the Baroness because that's nifty. Baroness is like, I don't have the skill to make yellow elixirs. It's not my wheelhouse. Uh, it requires equipment that I don't have. And those are really only found on the jewel. I think I know who made this, but... They, well, if you can make a unique elixir, people don't really advertise it that you can make it, because that gets you kidnapped. Fair enough. Yeah. So, good find. You probably had to pay a mint for that, though. Nah. Not as much as I charge for my shit. All right. <laughs> anything else? Yeah. Unless we need anything else, I have my people gathered up so that we can get ported back. Mm. All right. Fair. And uh, he's like, okay. Uh, do you have any non lead a means of getting us to where we need to go with this stuff, because this particular elixir does not do well with Leah transport. I have that box that I made. I have a trick that might work. No, it's, remember, we did a bit of research, and I got a box made with a field in it so that I can transport my condensed elixir and shit across the galaxy. No, I do not remember this. I did a pile of research into it, and it's, we and I basically got a small box that's actually the size of a cooler because wow. of the power supply needed. Because yeah. it's no, I do not. Decide. That's you, you can keep telling me about it if you want. I'm just I just it, don't remember it myself. It, it's basically the fucking. It's the uh, the God. I'm blanking on the name of it. The fucking stupid field that basically stops all time in it. Oh, the prism. Yeah. Did you it, make a box of the prism field attached to it? Basically. Is it an actual, is it on Prism Tech or is it something else? I don't know. I paid people to have it done. Okay. I've been outsourcing a lot. Okay. Like, uh, like I said, I, I was only making the statement if I, I wasn't aware of it because I, I. Yeah. No, it's I have um, a, a way to move items between my bodies that I've recently answered with Potentia, so I don't know if that would work for it, too. I just didn't know you had that cooler, that's all. No, it's fine. I, it, I'll i just ask Blatt, would that work for it? Yeah, uh, it'll work. That power cell is probably going to be drained after the transport, but it'll work. Yeah, it's fine. I can drop the 100k wreck to buy a new power cell for it. But that's fine. Then I have that for bringing it. Yes. And then I guess we're heading back to the Ouroboros with my proper 
people now. Yeah. So you get there, and uh, the the um, the guards they they, they kind of stick behind you. They wait outside like normal, but the uh, the mater d will actually come out and be like, "Oh, it's you again." And Brian just gives a very fancy old bow. We've come to make amends. It, unfortunately, we uh, have been an uh, egregious error, and we wish to uh, soothe any issues that we had with the proprietress before. And the guy kind of squints, looks over to you. Is this correct, Mr. Banshee? Nods. Because he's gritting his teeth right now. And eventually the proprietress will come back out. Oh, come back to beg my favor. And Brian swoops in. Absolute we are here to beg for mercy and favor. And he's like, oh, Brian, look at you. Kind of looks him over with the very long manicured nails. Mm. You filled out very well since last time I saw you. Oh, and you brought gifts. You're such a dear. Would you like to come inside with your, well, your minder there? And she will hold out the hand, and he absolutely kisses the top of the knuckles after, you know, bending in a kind of a half bow to do so. And she's just like, oh, you know how to treat me well. Come, come. The party's still in full swing. Come in. Brian just kind of. Kind of gives you a look like, let's go. Oh, God. And it is a a ball, basically. It's everyone's dressed up. Uh, you have a lot of chemtech specialists here, and a, a several people in f- military fleet uniforms. Uh, looks like that could be an admiral, could it? <laughs> a lot of. Uh, base personnel, several cultivators, and what's being served are Chemtech brews for drinks. Uh, there is an upper shelf of actual alcohol, and uh, uh, they bring the little basket over to the, the kind of a little pedestal, and she actually makes a show of going through your gifts, and everyone kind of huddles around and. She kind of shows off all the different things. And Brian has picked a winner for each and every one of these. Mm-hmm. She kind of fawns all over all the different items, and everyone's kind of ooing and eyeing because it's all from the jewel. And uh, you know, she eventually gets to the yellow elixir. And that has all the uh, chemtech specialists kind of like, oh my god, I didn't actually know those existed. Seriously. And, you know, She's the center of all envy. And mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. you're brought over uh, after the showing is done. There's a round of applause, and everyone's you know, the, uh, all abuzz about all the different items now. Um, you're brought over a series of drinks, all different Chemtech brews. And they all shine like elixirs. Just little sample tasters. And everyone at the party seems to be drinking Chemtech elixir shots. <laughs> in little stemmed glasses that fit maybe a shot's worth. Like they're itty bitty micro wine glasses for yeah, cordials. It, and, um, he, he, he's he's properly dosed up on his sludge elixir. Hmm? So uh, he'll enjoy the samplings. Yeah, they are definitely all elixirs and um gosh those are strong that's like actually being human again and trying ever clear on each of those oh they burn Whew. they they do something different with the uh the core octane that you you run through the elixir at some point um the binding agent's different uh some of the finish definitely they put some flavor in it what mad lad puts flavor in their elixirs 
Mm. Good stuff. Yeah. Um, one of each of the different colors that they can make out here. And uh, you're able to order more at the bar, uh, as well as any other alcohol. And you hear a poop as, you know, Miss Evelyn actually opens the champagne bottle and starts to spread it around. Brian kind of slides over a little bit. See, you just, uh, I don't blame you, man. Like, whew, uh, that was that was treacherous even for me. Uh, not as practiced as I once was, but hey, family's family. Well, you have my thanks. If you ever need any help, let me know. I have oh, I'm some... gonna... Don't you worry, but yeah, I appreciate the offer. Um, so she still accepts your challenge. Uh, and she's actually going to prove to you right here in this little party why she's worthy of her title. I don't know what that means. But well, it'll uh, be it's interesting. Nice to keep away from each other, and I play messenger between the two. Because um, you still haven't unclenched your left hand. It is still a fist, and. Uh, hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, she will reveal <laughs> partway through the party after you know a couple people come and go. Not a lot of people want to come talk to you at the moment, but you get a couple conversations that literally don't go anywhere. Mm -hmm. And eventually she will reveal what a crystal decanter that looks like it's filled with water. Because it's perfectly clear. It's like there's nothing even in the jar or the, the little container. It's like it's empty. She's like, this is the new grade. Elixirs were of the pinnacle at one point in our history as developers of the new stage of our evolution. Because chemtech is a way of life. It makes us stand apart from all others in society. Some would say we are above them. I say we must be humble in that regard. Yes, they haven't been exposed to chemtech, but only those who find themselves fortuitous or lucky or even worthy stumble their way into chemtech. Now, <laughs> this new stage, this is just a sample. This is centuries of my research. And it has finally culminated into one successful dose. And it is my plan to make this more widely available for a price. Let this be proof that we have now ascended to the next stage of Chemtech. I bring to you effervescence. And it's quite a display. And a lot of people are like kind of confused because it looks like there's nothing in the crystal decanter. And she kind of leans back. Hmm. You see, Chemtech is made of materials from this universe. I found that effervescence can only be made of other dimensional materials in the right proportions and the right well, combination. It is transcendent and completely, uh, completely a gas. It is not a liquid like you would normally expect. For if it was a liquid, it would be too strong, too powerful. In the dose, you merely open it and breathe it in, and the work is done, and it will act immediately. Why effervescence is better than elixirs? Effervescence can work on even synthetic and or uh, other human entities, such as beings made of energy or robotics, even computers. 
can be given the privilege of being exposed to effervescence. What it does, that's a secret for me. And for you to find out once I have more for sale. This one I will offer for trade of someone who thinks they can pique my interest. I'll trade it to you. And I have no worry that you will walk off with any knowledge about how to make it, because I doubt you will. And that is why I'm a duchess and not a baron. I stand above. And this is why. Go. Use your equipment. Test it. Oh, Nix will do his tests. Because everything that she's saying is basically equivalent and not superior in any way to my condensed elixir. Well, I will say it looks to be the uh, uh, speaking on behalf of the devil, more or less. She's a bitch. Um, oh, yeah. At least don't know what the effect are, but they have the exact same effect range as you. Maybe they have similar effects. I'd be willing to find out. Um, I don't think your super elixir works on any computer or energy beings. As yeah. No, yeah, uh, remember, we went anything. over it. We went... Yeah, we went over it, and the condensed elixir will work on anything it is used on. Anything a, from animatronic to energy being like Aether to anything. I think the only thing we didn't test it on was AI. No, we did. Well, I'm not an AI. Yeah, but one of your animatronics is Mr. Distraction. No, oh, so. no, it did work. He is yeah, pure because... AI. I do not have a soul in him. Yeah. Um, but... Yeah. Well, he's oh, also yeah. using the animatronic interfaces are different than um, actual AI interfaces. It works perfectly fine with the animatronic well, and any AI house in anything. Brain box. The brain box is a semi-organic, and it's able to process the... Um, she's basically saying you can hold this up to a fucking motherboard, open the cap, the vapors run out, and infuse itself into the motherboard. That's what she's basically saying. <laughs> you can hold this up to a cloud server. It'll work. That's what she's saying. Cloud servers are semi-organic, too. Yeah, they, they use are. the same design structure, base design structure as but a. She's two bit big bricks, but you're also like, mm, well, yours is a gas, mine's a liquid. Fucking come at me, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And just, but he'll give it the analysis and see if he can figure out what it would do. Um, it does a lot of things. Holy crap! Uh, it looks like she distilled each of the different elixir types took the best of what is part of those elixirs and somehow using other dimensional materials got rid of all the bad stuff. This is kind of a kaleidoscopic like super juice. Not sure if she could ever make it again because the materials required to make this. Mm -hmm. It probably took her a decade just to brew this one single batch because it's made of vapor. It's all. Yep. She probably was distilling and trying to catch and collect and condense vapor into a specific density before it turns into a liquid, and then she put it in a bottle. <laughs> Holy crap! The waste. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it's it is more powerful than your brew, but you can make yours in larger quantities, a lot, and a lot more affordably. And probably in, well, definitely in larger quantities. Def larger and quantities, reliably. more affordably, and in a vastly shorter time frame. Yeah. This leagues above what you're able to make. But she's got one of it. You 
every month can go to a different station, make a brew, make a killing. And then she's still going, I've got a whiff. I, I got to get several whiffs worth. Hold on. I'm, I'm, I'm still going. She's still <laughs> trying to make one bottle's worth. Yep. This would make an excellent gift for Neath, though. Or, well, shit, you could just literally put it under your nose and snort the shit out of it. Yeah. Hmm. And that, uh, to be perfectly honest, that's what he would do, because he would test it on himself before even thinking of offering it to the heiress. Mm -hmm. Because that's what a proper practitioner uh, it is, would do. It is a uh, trade only. She's basically, yeah. it is a silent bid. So you go over to one of the cards and uh, there is a minimum bid required, mm -hmm. but no one knows what it is. So if she doesn't take anyone's offer, then, well, she doesn't take anyone's offer. And then no one gets it. But it'll be private and she won't actually announce who gets it. She'll just say whatever the bid was and that she accepts, and then it'll find its way into your your hands after the party. Did you want to bid for it? It's going to be pricey. This is a... Brian yeah. kind of gives you a look like, don't do it, bro. <laughs> it's just... No, it's... He, he's willing. He would. It's... In my mind, it's worth it. I'm just trying to think of what would be... worth it to offer up, you know? Yeah, just write out for me exactly what you're offering. It's trade. She's not going to take money or budget or any of that. Uh, favors are unfortunately on the out right now because otherwise you mm -hmm. can offer favors but Thunderhead is uh, a little quiet information is also things you can offer but I'll let you think on it uh, we will actually hop to Johnny Boy even though he's ahead of the time um, but everyone's yeah. kind of catching up pretty quick and I know you don't have exactly the longest amount of time to play with us today Mm -hmm. So I'd like to get you some serious screen time. Cool, cool. So you're going to the cultivator section in, on Ouroboros. Uh, the cultivator sections, actually, uh, very cool. Uh, it looks like it's kind of an old Tibetan temple with all the, the beautiful flags, mm -hmm. um, beautiful colors, a lot of respect for spiritualism. Um, the cultivator section is a hodgepodge combination of open storefronts, cafes, homes, um, fitness centers, uh, temples for meditation and cultivation. Um, there's a couple, you know, discussion halls for uh, cultivator discussion. Um, there are uh, bout um, arenas, so you can, you know, formally challenge somebody. Uh, there are actual gladiatorial arenas. Um, yeah, it's its own little city. I see. If it's kind of that same, you know, Nepalese, uh, Tibetan, you know, temple kind of feel. There's actual, honest to goodness, stone here or there. Probably carved from the local asteroids. Is it like a receptionist or something? No, it's, it, think of it as a whole corridor yeah. um, of the Ouroboros arc ring. We're talking three kilometers of this. You can just walk in and out freely. There's no receptionist. No one stops you. It's just, you know, the boundary because there's a big temple arch with a bunch of flags, you know, just kind of hanging there. Looks like somebody tried to put a fan off to one side to make the flags flap in the breeze a little bit. Okay. I guess I'll uh, use my my inquisitive nature to uh, go uh, 
talk to some people. See, uh, see if the I, street? yeah. Um, There's some non-cultivators walking around as well. Even a couple arguing with someone three times their size. Like you last week, it was this price. You got to give me a really good excuse as to why this is this price now. And the guy's like, well, it's, it's last week. There wasn't a shortage. Now there's a shortage. And it's just this little enigmatic, you know, finger in a cultivator's face, like, rah, 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 you know. All right. So not that many of those people, but everyone seems to be just kind of strolling around. Like it's a, like it's a street in a, in a city. Okay. Um, I think what I'll do is I will, uh, I will go to one of the uh, one of the halls that uh, one of the cultivation chambers. Hmm? Yeah, they have individual stone chambers for you to you know privately cultivate in, or you can um, sit in the communal cultivation area in the middle, or I go sit in the communication uh, the communal room. Okay. You just have a lot of people, um, whether they're sitting cross-legged in a meditation or they are um, doing some sort of activity. Each of them mm-hmm. are cultivating. One guy is playing chess against himself, and that is him cultivating some sort of art. Cool. Uh, I'm going to go sit down, and then I'm going to uh, use my my meta technique to look inwards. All right. What are you, uh, what are you trying to hone in on? Uh, I'm trying to hone in on my demon first and foremost. Well, he's right there. He doesn't hide from you. No. Does my demon look like myself? Um, no, it's kind of an amalgamation of um, kind of different fears that don't belong to you. But right. at the core, there is a weak and scrawny, non, you know, uh, nano body you. Kind of like what you were when a kid all those okay. years ago when you were flesh and blood before you got really big. Um, yeah, before you ended up in prison. Kind of that defiant, fighty uh, young version um, with a bunch of other people's you know, blackness that you picked up from Muldred's. Okay. Doesn't hide. I'm just going to watch it for a... Uh long period of time and then i'm going to um spend a downtime action to create a uh, create an external potentia yeah um, so I'll just spend a downtime action to create one a dimensional energy energy um, charge, and that will create an external. And then I'm going to play around with the external that I make, and uh, see what the demon does. It just seems to patrol your internal, uh, and it looks like it's tied directly to your um, your physical transformation, your physical transcendence. Uh, right. Pulling it out uh, will strip you of I'm that. I'm not planning. I, yeah, yeah. I wasn't, that wasn't any of my thoughts for that. Um, okay. Hmm. How about 
I'm going to um, remove the extra two um, metals that I got from uh, Moldred's, and I'm going to place them in front of me. Okay. And I'm going to continue to focus on my uh, my demon to see what happens. It doesn't care. Doesn't care. Don't care about the. Uh... Uh, the metals doesn't care about the metals, but the demon was formed from the metals. Uh, the residual blackness that was attached to them. Right. So what you're telling me is that all the blackness is out of those metals now. Absolutely. Cool. Okay. Hmm. All right, I'll uh, put them back into my uh, my hanger since they can be used for uh, replacements still. Yeah. Just gonna check something right quick. Uh, I guess from my observer position while I'm watching my heart demon, uh, I'm going to, um, I'm going to study the, not my, um, old self, um, but I'm going to, um, study the blackness uh, that came from Moldred's and other things that I've picked up along the way um, okay. that surrounds it instead. Um, you're looking at basically fragments of black potentia right. from those broken individuals that you uh, slew. And um, those at the core exist in every cultivator or every person. Mm -hmm. um, so it was very seamless for your um your heart demon to just absorb those because they're deep seated in every person right so um I'll pretty much you can identify all of it it's it's all the core fears of human you know uh the fear of the unknown the fear of you know being out of control um fear of others okay uh, you know the desires uh unfulfilled like it's uh a lot of the egos lost it's all about the different fears of um mankind that's left in these fragments sure sure um what i'll do matt is i will um i'm going to do a inverse awareness on okay. these fears and I'm going to use a um, a negative magnet charge um, to pull them to outside from my observer status. Okay. Um, and your heart demon is not going to let them go. Yeah, it, it doesn't want to let these go. These fears are as a part of you as, uh, well, the heart demon is. Uh, I don't think I'm trying to um, take them away. I'm trying to um, better understand them is what I'm trying to do for them. If you want to like pull them a little bit away from the heart demon but not separate them, uh, it's doable. Okay. I'll roll inverse awareness then. Is this with the negative magma charge? OK. 
Okay. Yeah, you can pull them away a little bit. Because I have the um, the the fearful um, negative quality, and it has a magnet attached to it. So the fearful. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's pretty easy to see what's going on. Um, some of these fears are yours. It's hard to kind of actually tell a little bit what's. Uh, what wasn't and what was, but now that you've kind of separated them, you know, half the fears there are yours, and then there's a couple that aren't. Um, the fear of change is not yours. That's definitely one of the fears that um, is definitely separate because you're very much for change. Mm -hmm. uh, and the fear of violence or harm, or, you know, suffering harm is there. That definitely, 100% is in yours. <laughs> um, you got over that quite a bit ago. You're very accepting about the new you. Uh, um, and there's... Yeah, it's kind of just those two that you got. Those aren't yours. The rest, like the fear of, um, you know, losing someone important to you mm -hmm. or um, the, the fear of the unknown, like especially regarding to what happened to your, you know, certain couple family members, like that's there. Um, the fear that you're not going to hold up to your friend's expectations and societal expectations, that's there. So there's a lot of, a lot of fears. Okay. Um, what I want to try and do now, now that I've found out about the ones that are mine and that are not, um, I want to reorder them. I want to have the, um, the fears that are not attached to like mine outside. Yeah. And I want the ones that are mine to be closer to the original inside me. Yep. A little bit of restructuring. That's, that's doable. Yeah. Um, what would you like me to... Because I'm kind of like, as an observer, I don't know if I can go and try and wrestle these fears as around. As you don't, it doesn't particularly stop you. Okay. It is as much a part of you as the rest of you is, so it just yeah. kind of reshapes itself. It doesn't go away, though. No, I didn't, I didn't think it would go away. Kind of spooky. It's so cool. It, it's definitely holding you back, and it's kind of a huge impediment for your future as a cultivator, but it's cooperative. A little weird. Yeah. Kind of maybe not what you were expecting. Who knows? I was just expecting it to be worse. Um, you were kind of pretty adamant on. Uh... Oh, it's it's gonna be. It's gonna be there. It's gonna it's gonna be an impediment, but it is also something that could. Um, you could learn from. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Okay. Um, now that the, uh, the fears have been reorganized, tell me a little bit about, uh, my inner me. The, uh, the scared little girl. More angry than scared. Definitely has the fears there, but yeah. definitely a lot more angry in the face of that fear rather than showing that you were fearful. But, uh, I mean, the fear itself is still there, but what you see to fight that fear is just anger. Yeah. 
Okay. I'm going to go down and kind of just up here before. And I'm going to ask a question to myself, I suppose. What am I angry about? Sorry, say that question again. You lean down and you kind of say to it. What am I angry about? It kind of lists off all the different things. Like, why did mom have to go away? You know, why am I not strong enough to be who I want to be? Why am I always, you know, beholden to all these expectations that have nothing to do with me? Um, and she's going to talk to her about her mom. When you were this small, you didn't know your mom was away. You thought she was dead. Why is that? Because uh-huh. that's what we do. That's what we knew then. It's true. But that's not the case now. We know she's out there somewhere. And the reason why she had to go away. Well, they left us alone, didn't it? No, they left it with Dad. And Dad was there for us. For a time. Right. And we came what we hated. Yeah. We let a a scythe kill our, our dad. And we couldn't do anything to stop it. That makes us so angry. Now we're one of those scythes. Yes. Kill people. It's our job. Yeah, but we. All right, but is that what we wanted to be? Is this, was this the only path to power? No, I don't think so. But it was kind yeah. of forced on us, don't you think? We could have refused. We could have. Could have fought it. For time. Yeah. But uh, and then she's going to touch one of the fears that are close to her, and then bring up Ezekiel. This was something that we couldn't... Ezekiel's definitely a fear you guys have. This was something we couldn't deal with at the time. And do you still feel that way now? Even though it's right here? Yeah. Why? That fear of Ezekiel hasn't gone away. Why? I understand that there are nemesis, and we only put up with them because we hate them so for what they did to us. Right. And now you look to them for approval. <clears throat> mm. You're it's right. Kind of morphed into of fear and more of a fear of disappointment or disappointing them and that disgusts me I think they have a term for it, it's called Stockholm Syndrome yeah I thought I was stronger than that I mean at least Mr. Banshee your teammate is doing kind of what I thought we were fighting him every step of the way, taking his gifts that he forced upon us and used it against him. Yeah. No, it's, uh, you're right. You're absolutely right. We got addicted to it, that power. We stopped questioning it, started to crave it because of the respect that we got immediately. The power, the uh, ability to control life or death over other people. 
it became exactly what we hated and we loved every second of it once we got actual power. Being stronger than the rest was definitely a, a perk. And we loved yeah. our strength. Our might. How we can use submission, which is something black about ourselves, to get what we want and make them do what they're told. And I think we learned that from Ezekiel, didn't we? Yeah, we learned a lot of things from him. But why do we have to like it so much? We kind of forgot who we are and became what he molded us molded us into being. What about Lilith? Lilith was fine, but we were already changed by that that point. Yeah, but we so actually we had really. We were Jackie. We weren't even using our real name. I mean, our parents gave us. Just kind of an amalgamation short of it. So you don't think... You don't like Jackie, really? That's not who we are. Who are we, then? Who are we, indeed? Is that something you fear? Because you don't know what will become? Among many, many things. Brody Nano. We threw away our, our body that our mother gave to us. But did we throw it away, though? Did we still latch on to it. Well, that shape was contorted and ruined by Ezekiel. And then we further corrupted and changed it. And then she'll kind of like um, point to her heart. What about the seed that's always been inside of us? seed that grew our cradle well what is it was, was it meant for that to be a tool for our new monstrous self or was it supposed to be something even more special you don't think our cradle just... cradle is special i think it wasn't originally designed for that it wasn't right but we got to choose that didn't we and that's maybe what mother always wanted us to do to make our own choices yeah not a lot of choosing though not yeah we kind of just uh dived right into it we didn't really uh know it was happening to us in the first place I mean, we kind of subconsciously did we know we were going down that path we just subconsciously kind of agree to everything we kind of take it at face value we used to be so distrusting, so paranoid. You know. Which made us us. Yeah, trust was harder to come by, but once you earned it, you earned it. Now it's kind of a... We're not really Jacqueline anymore. We're just this Jackie person. Jackie's a nickname. It's always been a nickname. Then why don't you go by Jacqueline? Why don't I go by Jacqueline? You always introduce, introduce yourself as Jackie. Not, hi, my name's Jacqueline. You can call me Jackie, though. I mean, it's almost like you forgot your own name. Mm, I never forget my name. Yeah, because you have a computer brain anymore. You really have a computer brain now, so it's uh, impossible to forget. It'll just kind of float off at that point. 
Yeah. And you're like, oh, crap, we got some work to do. Holy shit. I just uh, kind of get back to myself, I suppose, instead of being the observer. Yeah. And You're uh, also face up, down face with some sort of mask, grade mask, clown thing. And there's a very lithe practitioner on some sort of colorful ball, upside down, almost nose to nose with you. And oh. they bounce up and, you know land butt first on the ball and kind of bounce in place. You've got a heart, Damon! Boo! I do. <laughs> How'd you tell? Mm. How could you tell? Uh, a good question. Hmm. Hmm. So, you just been watching? Yeah. Uh, I don't mind. Far more fascinating than the rest of these bozos. Uh, a lot of people come up over like, shut the fuck up. Yeah, I know you can hear me and I'm disturbing your cultivation. Oh, no. Boing, boing, boing. Hmm. Are you uh, part of the Chaos Faction? Oh my gosh, you know of us? Woo! Yeah, no. Uh, one of my uh, one of my squad mates from family is uh, is part of the uh, chaos you look faction. Like you chaotica in your life. Could I use some chaotica? Uh, I think I already have it in my life. Actually, like I just said, uh, I have a practitioner as a, as a family member, and I they are part of my life. Funny. Everyone should have a little bit of chaotic in them. Friends included. Family included. I think Chaos that's... Uh, a, yeah, no, no, for sure. For sure. And I think it's part of um, our choice to have that. Being boring. Yeah, uh, sure. I know I'm being boring because I'm deciding not to have chaotic in, in my life. Why? Is that, is that-, that, is a, that is the most boring decision I have ever heard. But I've spin the wheel though, so I can't really say I I don't have Chaotica. I've dealt it. Uh, yeah, but having it every step of the way is just that's that's how could you ever go without it? It's like Yeah. I don't know how I would ever go day to day, moment to moment without a little chaos in my life. Are you kidding? Yeah, oh, well you're hey, a practitioner after all. Hey. It's part of your path, right? Well, it, it's the path for not living a boring life. Well, we live forever as they're bouncing on the the ball. The more we cultivate, the longer we live, and it's true. the longer and more profound our boredom becomes. And this is a little bit of chaos in your life, right? A little bit of chaos, Bob boy. Yeah, and they kind of land up on the ceiling, Spider-Man holding you know by their fingertips. Oh yeah. Don't put holes in my ceiling. Too late. Yeah, you should go by the temple. We'll teach you all sorts of tricks, including how to actually deal with a heart demon. Because nobody really understands. Not like Besides you guys. Yep. Bye bye. And they do kind of a they bounce and then they kind of slide forward. And you know when you're bouncing on a big yoga ball and you slide forward, it jets all of you forward. Mm-hmm. And they fly out the front door, ball behind them. Sweet. And they're like, "Excuse me." Oh, sorry, I knocked over your stuff. And they're like, "Motherfucker!" I'll send Aether a message telling them that there is a Chaotica um, sect on base. If they want to go check them out, actually, oh, Chaotica is always fun. Uh, I want uh, Aether to come with me to check them out when they have a chance. You want to go? I'll go. Okay. It's always fun adding the Chaotica. Yeah, you you hop on down to the cultivator section of the station. 
It's pretty big. Yeah. Very themed. Very uh, Taoist. And turn to my apprentice and go, be careful. Mm. I'm merely here to observe. Uh, but that might not be fun. I'm going to start walking over. Jackie? Aether, how are you? I have been a busy bee. Uh, well, you are quite electric. So, uh, yeah, I, I imagine you're uh, even busy. Where are we going to then? Uh, a uh, Chaotica practitioner decided to uh, say hello and invited me to the temple. So I figured oh. what else to bring than the, uh, the Chaotica in my life. So oh, I feel very honored. <laughs> but I don't think I'm chaotic. I don't, I don't know. A lot of people disagree with that. I, I mean, you have literally Chaotica potential inside of you, Aether. You know, that's one of those statements that is followed up with many people are typing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I am, and it's so much fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, you uh, you definitely get up to some mischief, that's for sure. I mean, I don't think I get up to mischief. You just break the barriers in front of you, and you uh, have fun with it. That's all. Exactly. No, no, he he's right. He does not get up to mischief. He is the manifestation of mischief. There is a difference. It's true. <sighs> so, uh, you want to go in? Let's do it. All right, we walk in. Load it. Somebody slides in on a ball. Somebody else kind of wheels their way over, kind of like the circus. Hi, guys. I'm Cheeky, and that's my brother. I'm Breaky. Together, we're Breaky Cheeky. No, you idiot, we're Cheeky Breaky. Cheeky Breaky. We found this on the computer. It was really funny. We start doing the little Russian squat dance. Ah. Yeah. My friend was invited. Yes, they have some information on hot demons. And I am Milo! Ah, yes, I'm and Milo. we have Milo. We were told to babysit this one. Mm hmm. It's safe here. Really? That's fascinating. Usually, when yeah. I run into you guys, it's very not safe. Mm hmm. Does it feel like uh, home, Milo? Well, it's never home without my best friend. Uh, it's true. My best true. friend has to do some stuff. So they told me to stay right here. And I've been playing games ever since. It's really fun. How long have you been here? I don't know. Uh, okay. I know your best friend is if you ever want to go say hi. Oh my gosh, take me right immediately. The oh answer God. to the question of how long she's been here is probably roughly an hour. <laughs> Best friend, best friend. Let's go to best friend. Yeah. I want to give her uh, the coordinates to go find um, Mina. So, um, uh, I thought you were Mina now. Or is that just the... Uh... I am, but I'm also Milo. Okay. Um, I'm very much Milo when I'm separate, but I'm very Mina when we're not. Ah, that's the difference. I haven't seen you guys separate in a while, so that's fair. And that's why I call her Milo. But we're also Mina, no matter how far away we are. That's what I thought. So, all right. Technically speaking, she already knows where her Mina is. Actually, no, technically speaking, she always knows where her Mina is. You don't need to give her coordinates. I she know, but I'm exactly just, where I'm, I'm just being helpful. You see, it's I put okay. you there because I'm doing boring stuff. I know, I and I'm being... Have, I thought she would have fun 
over he's being, here. He's being a chaos gremlin. I don't know yeah. what you're talking about. It's okay. Yeah, no. When you're doing boiling things, Amilo flies out of nowhere and tackles you. Sand. Hi, Mina. They told me where to find you, even though I already knew where you were. So I thought I'd surprise tackle hug you. That was very nice. Thank you. Mm-hmm. What you doing? Boring stuff. What are you Aww, doing? Oh, I hate it when you do boring things. Eh, what are you doing? Finding my best friend. Mm, well, you found her. Woo! Uh, I like pass the buck off. Who who told you to come here out of curiosity? He was blue. Aether. <laughs> uh. Was he blue, glowy, floating, talking kind of odd? He wasn't green. Why don't you go give him a hug? I think he'd appreciate it. He needs one. He's away from his girl. Oh, to throw me. I'll just throw as her. a note. I just throw her. I just I'm, I'm not naming it anything in particular. I just assume she'll end up where she needs to. As a note, I'm going to put on a fake mustache to hide. Okay. She comes and tackles you and swings around because you don't actually go anywhere. Surprise hug! <gasps> You're not <laughs> Aether! No, I am not. Oh, I'm sorry, random person. It's okay. Do you know where Aether went? I do not know, as I do not know who this Aether is. Well, who are you? Uh, my name is Jim Bob. Jim Bob? Oh, man, that's like two first names. Your parents are so cool. I know. Come. Did you know? It's safe here. I have been told this many times. Hello, Mina. I am Jim Bob. Hey, Jim Bob. The magic that is Milo. Enjoy. Anyways, Jackie, what did you need? Sorry, I'm dealing with a tick on my finger. Mm. Mm. That sucks. And it's it's like, not well, stuck, it's just crawling Aether around. I'm trying to get rid of it. Well, if you ever find Mr. Aether, Mr. Jim Bob, uh, um, you let me know, because I have a hug with his name on it. Understood. Come on, Cheeky! Come on, Breaky! Let's dance! And they kind of run inside the temple. Be goofy. Like, legitimately, I sent <laughs> her over there because I know she will be bored with what I'm doing. And then she starts to touch things. Yeah, and I and instead of having to go through the process of, please don't touch that, I instead went, why don't you go somewhere even more fun? What? Because I'm doing boring stuff, but I know where there's cool stuff for you to do. I'm back. Fun Sign people up. that want to hang out with you. Sign uh, me up. So uh, I'm going to pull out the uh, Jack in the Box. <laughs> He's unresponsive. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to grab the uh, little handle. Fuck you, leave me alone. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's not how that goes. That's exactly how that goes. <laughs> what do you want? Oh, I'll just we're here at the Chaotica place. Maybe we can find somebody to fix you. Yeah, turn me back. Maybe. We'll see. I mean, if you're very lucky, the Grand Master that made you this way will be here to turn you back. My luck's not that good. <laughs> Nor is my karma. No, I mean, that's fair. Mm. But you never know. Mm. Well, I don't have legs, so I guess we're going where you're going. And float on in. Cardboard box follows you. You didn't realize cardboard it was box, there. Eh? Yeah, mm -hmm. upside down. It's like I want to solve snake level. Snake level. Yeah. yeah <laughs> I'm gonna stop. 
it disappears uh-huh. from your senses. <laughs> mm-hmm. Even with math, it's gone. Uh, I'm going to stop, and I'm going to turn around. And I'm going to look. And like, I see you. Silence. There's nothing there. I'm and then I'll down. Kind of further down the hallway. There's a box mm-hmm. that was from one side of the room. <laughs> mm-hmm. Some Scooby Doo shit right there. I want to turn and look. I had a hacking like so. Yeah, what were we looking for? We are looking for someone. Uh, I don't know about this box you're talking about, but uh, I th- I think it's uh, someone that can help me with my heart demon. That's fair. I don't know if this person will show up in a box, just like a nice present. That'd be really nice. But uh, I don't think it works that way. But life's full of surprises. It and I'll, I'll can work that. that way if you want it to. You know, it's, it's completely fair. I agree. Yeah. You know, watch this. Watch this. See, this you see here, it is a normal box, right? But to me, what I see here is a rock. That you can put your foot on, strike a valiant pose. Box isn't there. All right, I want to go find a box, and I want to do this whole routine again. And just make a box. Can't you just snap your fingers and something appears? Well, yes, it could, but that's not the point of it. Oh, we have to find the box. I understand. After much effort and time wasted, you do find a box, you make your point, and then you realize you have stickers all over your shin. And then oh, we, like, what did the stickers say is the question. They're like smiley face ones and hang in there and, you know, add a boy and don't let, you know, turn that frown upside down. I'm going to take the add a boy off of uh, his electrical body and just, you know, kind of have it. You always need that kind of encouragement in your life. And now I have a lot of motivational stickers. Yeah. You never know. They might come in handy soon. I'm like, hmm. I will use my inverse awareness to try and find the box. It's somewhere around the temple. You have to go pursue it again. Like it's a Scooby-Doo mystery. All right. I feel like I need to use my tracking skills with survival to uh, to figure this out. I do not have any checks, mm. so I'm just going to go. No, 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 no. So we're gonna do okay. Uh, we're gonna hide in the box. We're gonna hide. Why? Why would we need to hide for? I thought we were trying to find it. No, no, we're gonna hide from the box. Okay, all right. we found it. Therefore, it's it now. And now we have to hide from it. But I thought you got stickered, and I thought I, I thought then you're it again. No, 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 it's it. Uh, all right, I'll believe you, and we mm-hmm. will. Uh, um, I'm pretty big, though. Uh, oh, don't worry, we can hide you pretty easily. Okay. <laughs> I want to go. I want to grab a shrubbery, like one of those like tall bush, like tall trees, the little like frill on top. I'm gonna hand that to Jackie. I'm like, there, hide behind this. And we'll all just right, keep all right. <laughs> I'm gonna put on my fake mustache again. Okay. And, and uh, eventually, as you guys are hiding, you guys are sneaking your way across, a box kind of scooches by and it goes, Hi, Mr. Shrubbery. Hi, Jim Bob. Box? And it keeps scooching on. Have you seen these guys? As a little a flap opens up and two pictures come out. Have you seen these two? And it's basically goofy pictures of both of you. Hmm. I don't know. Have you seen uh, a Joker or one that dresses like a clown? Oh yeah, he's. Oh, you gotta watch out for him. He's he's. It's prank day. It's prank day. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. Well, you watch out. You get pranked. Uh, well, what's this? By the way. Oh, thank you, thank you. I thought they make really good boots. I know, right? 
Jackie's just being silent right, well, behind the me. by the tree. She's yeah. gonna try another. Uh... <laughs> Careful, you don't end up in a vegetative state. Uh... Ouch! But you have to do that. <laughs> um, I don't. I don't know. Why does he have to hide behind a shrubbery? <laughs> Because, yeah, it's prank day and you have to hide. Clearly. You think we should go play some pranks on some people then? Oh, of course, that is the best way to do prank day. Yeah, you gotta join the fun. Mm-hmm. Remember, they're pranks, they're not deadly. Um. Hmm. Jackie's gonna make a whoopee cushion out of Nano. Oh, yeah. That's just going to go find a chair. Okay. So, we're going to. You guys have prank day. It'll be quite a bit of time. But I'm going to have you guys roll a intelligence based test for pranks. Yeah. Okay. Your a survival test to implement and avoid said pranks. Mm-hmm. And then a stealth. To hide okay. from other pranks. All right, all right. I like this. I like this. Um, you can use logic, or you can use I don't know dot logic because it's Chaotica. I don't know. So um, um, intelligence to make the object or prank in this case survival well, to, to devise a prank and dev- you know devise it. right right survival yep. to implement and then a yep. stealth to hide. Okay. Well, they're they're all doing double duty. So yeah, yeah. You know, to the the logic is also to help you discover other pranks, all all the while implementing your own. Survival is you know avoiding and also putting your prank into play, and then stealth is doing it, avoiding other people's pranks and stealthily putting your pranks in. Mm-hmm. So they're all doing double duty. All right. I'm going to use Reckless on my implementation of the prank. (laughs) Okay. Um, All right. Here is this. Nice. Okay. All right. Here is my implementation. uh, You already already rolled the survival. Oh, I thought my survival was to try and find the person. That was was my original role beforehand. Okay, well, and then you got the stealth test. And then a stealth test. Uh, I'll use IQ's fake point to reroll the survival because I can. I have to. Ah, you know what? It's reckless. Yeah, I got worse. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. (laughs) So, uh. You can have a reroll if you want. Nah, nah, it's fine. (laughs) All right, uh. Hey there. I want you to three rolls. To implement okay. a trickery. I didn't think about using logic. Yeah, I could have done that too. It's fine. Nice. Nice. <laughs> and uh, I'm going I'm going to spend uh two boons to pass. Oh, okay. Because okay. Do you want to though? I want to spend one boon. The question if I spend one boon, can I make it to where they my pranks succeed? I don't mind getting pranked back, because that's fun. Well, you're going to get pranks off. Your intelligence yeah. is too high. You're probably just going to get pranked while doing the pranks. I don't mind. Okay. Your intelligence um, is too... It's, your, yours is too gigabrain. Like, you put, like, the, <laughs> that, uh, uh, like a bucket on top of a door thing that's a jar, mm-hmm. and they're like, ha-ha, I found it! But little did they know there was a dimensional bucket behind the original bu- bucket. <laughs> And here's my self. Yeah. How do you have? You only have twenty agility. I have zero agility. (laughs) How do you move? Uh, Propulsion. Intelligence for most of that type of stuff. But (laughs) as you guys kind of go through the halls, you guys are just getting pranked left and right. But you guys are dishing it as well as you can. To you know, getting pranked, and let's let's take a peek, Deek. Lots. Uh... So you guys all end up in the kind of the main part of the temple, and people are just 
all covered in pain, confetti, and you know they're drenched with water, or just all of them completely pranked. And so are you guys. And uh, the awards for most pranks goes to Cheek and Breaky. Of course. Mm-hmm. The award for bring prank the most goes to <clears throat> Mr. Shrub and Jim Bob. Yes, bow, bow. Yes, they I hope there's an award for awards. being the the best at being the worst. Yeah, that's literally was that was that reward. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Getting the most pranked. <laughs> Um, and overall, you guys get two lottery tickets. Oh. You can spend the wheel tickets for playing in Prank Day. Nice. Uh, those are uh, redeemable at all Chaotica sites with a, with a roulette machine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Don't you have a bunch of these now, um, Aether? I only have like five. I've given away a lot of surprises. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, boing. Yeah. And the, the clown just kind of sits up on their ball in the middle of the room. Hi! You're back. You're here. Did yeah. you have fun on prank day? Of course. It's great. Mm-hmm. Prank day's the best. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I know. And, uh, you know, you kind of shift around and your suit makes a bunch of fart noises, Jackie. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Kind of just look down. Is there like a whoopee so cushions just, everywhere? I just all inside my 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 armor. No, it's Wonderful. Just, just pinned everywhere. Just okay. you, you kind of move, and they you move. They all make a fart noise, and they all fall to the ground. Yeah. <laughs> the clown just ah oh, <laughs> gotcha. Uh, and uh, of course, um, the little clown in the Jack in the Box. He's got a. <laughs> He's got a hat. He's like, I don't like this hat. I like my old hat. You I like your hat. And uh, you have a much bigger mustache. Mm. You also have a beard. I like it. I'm gonna look at him. <laughs> oh, I changed your disguise. <laughs> I'm so clever. I don't know. I like this one a lot better. I know. I'm so thoughtful. Uh, so yes, what can I help you, you with? Uh huh. Apparently, you said you could help my friend. Huh. I said he needed more chaos in their life. A little bit of chaos. And they're like, no, I'm boring. I mean, I don't know. I think everyone keeps a little bit more chaos in their life. Mm hmm. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. So, the question is do I need chaos? in my life, in order to, well, I wouldn't say solve my heart demon. It's more of accept my heart demon. Resolve the heart demon, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you were boring, you would do it the natural, organic way and find enlightenment and Tao. Or you can do it the fun way. Not much of a choice. What's the fun way? Yeah, we play for it. Oh, you play for it. Oh, all right. Yeah, I'm down for that. You'll have to be a chaotic practitioner because it requires a chaotic, te- chaotic technique for this type of playing for it. Hmm. You know, well, what happens if you lose? Uh, you get somebody else's heart demon. And if you oh, win, so you have more than one, you give you give away your heart demon to someone else, hmm. and it's completely oh. resolved. That is fun. Mm-hmm. Well, you, you still get the, the, the stuff that made up the heart demon, so you mm-hmm. don't have to resolve that, but the blockage is gone. Right. Hmm. The substance of the heart demon is removed and given to someone else, or given to you, and now your heart demon is twice as stubborn. I don't want to give away my heart demon, though. Oh, so you're going to be boring. Damn. Ugh, so boring. You still get to do the resolve it. It's just you can still cultivate. You know? Yeah, but what's the other way of doing it? 
Oh, he's got to go reach enlightenment, self-acceptance, resolving of the fears, practical, real-life experience, uh, you know. 10,000 years. I don't know. No one's ever lived that long that I know of. It's a lot of years. But, you know, confronting those fears in real life, talking about them, going to therapy. Uh, I mean... Quitting your job. I don't know what it is. It's just just a lot of stupid shit. And that's very on Chiatica. That is so boring. When you can play for it. Do you guys have any other ways besides playing for it? Uh, I I, I could put it in a little shaker cup and shake it up and see what you get. I'm not trying to shake it. I'm trying to... I could put it in a jack in a box for you. And you can carry no. it everywhere you go and give it a physical manifestation. He's like, no. am I a heart demon? No, you are punished. <laughs> yeah, remember we talked about this. I, don't know, I was having an existential crisis at one. Like, it was fucking, oh, no, that's am fair. I a heart demon? Hmm. You committed evil. Oh, oh, what did you do? I don't know. I just know you did. I know he was a gift to me. Mm-hmm. You get to take him everywhere you go. And if he ever has to suffer real penance and consequence for his actions, you could always have him suffer it instead. Oh. Unless for so long. Same. And it doesn't work on everything. But, um... <laughs> uh, I, I mean, it's really up to you how creative you can get with it. Most of it's one-time use, but you can always have a companion around if you don't sacrifice him. I don't know. I like him. He's a bit grumpy, but, you know. And thanks, I guess. Mm. So, there's different, many, many different ways. In fact, if you are, if you keep asking, hey, do you have a different thing? I might come up with a different thing. Who knows? It's Chaotica! I also might forget some of the other options I offered you. That's fair. Hmm. Or I might just get bored. I don't want you to... You don't want to see me when I'm bored. I mean, that's fair. I don't like it when I'm bored either. I know. And then the, uh... Me, me though, slash Mina comes in. You! Oh, no! You! You! Uh... I, thought, I have to flee. I'm going to hand him a mustache. Puts on the mustache. He's like, oh, where'd you go? Oh. Who are you? Um, uh, Matt Brad. Another two name front first namers? Man! I wish I had two first names. All right. Well, if you find uh, that clown guy, let me know. Let me what are you know. looking for? Him? Oh, he has. He has. Uh, I think he, uh, we were playing like checkers and stuff, and I'm missing a piece. I think he stole it because it's a prank. That it is prank day. Well, I have a prank for him. Tell you what. And there's that Milo twitch. <laughs> And you're like, oh, that's a <laughs> that's a prank. That's not good. I'm sorry. Does she need help finding somebody? <laughs> what? No, we're fine. Don't worry about it. Just there's suddenly just a Mina there. I feel like I was needed. That's you need the clown disappeared. It's just Brad Matt and Jim Bob and Mr. Shrub. She's gonna kind of tap her lips, stare at all of this for a second, and slowly <laughs> walk over her with a mustache gesture. and a beard. No, just slowly walks over to the gesture, reaches up, and pulls the mustache off. And Mila's like, oh, I found him! Found you! And he's like, oh no! I'm just gonna grab him. I got him! Get pranked! And she basically boops him on the nose, and he's like, as a big, like, squeaky nose appears. And he's like, no! 
Oh, my beautiful nose! And he's yeah. like, oh, this is this is actually kind of fun. Terrible. Absolutely terrible. Mm. Yeah. Good prank. You got it, best friend. We got him. And he puts we the mustache him, back on. Oh, he disappeared! Damn it! <laughs> I guess we can go find him. Come with me, best friend. And Hi. You'll, you'll loop arms and kind of march your way down. Yeah, I'll go. I'll play with her for a while. Okay. So, uh, what other what other what other options? Uh, you keep coming with your great ideas. So, um, oh, what were we doing? Uh, oh, hunting. great ideas! I think we no, should have uh, confetti day on the right, station. Right, right. I, I, Everywhere. I think uh, we were talking about ways to resolve a heart demon. That's what we were talking about. We were. Yes. Oh, um. I mean, there's the boring way, and then there's the fun way. Yes, and you had great ideas for the fun way, but you kept telling us different ways. Yeah. Besides, uh, you just... can build it a house. Oh, yeah. Yeah, build a house, let it move in. You can be its roommate, help solve its problems. All in your head, like a soap opera. Would there be, like, people watching? Probably. Hmm. I would watch. I wonder if I can get it on basic cable. I think that's oh, like no. we, 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 too no. personal, Aether. I, you know, I love you and all, but I, I don't think uh, I don't think that's what I want in my life right now. I mean, you could also like fight it for supremacy of your own body. I could fight it. It's true. That's kind of yeah. what I do. And if you lose, you're the heart demon, and it's well in control of your body. Hmm. Good idea, for sure. That's super fun. Um, hmm. You could throw it a party and invite all your friends. What I want to do is I want to go on a spiritual journey with my heart demon, and I want to yes. explore. Boring. I want to explore it all at once. I just want to kind of all right. go and deal with the issues all at once. Boring. That's what them, the, the actual tryhards do. They go around and they're like, I want to understand it. Be in control of it. Uh, I want be to boring. accept it. Boring. Oh, but I need to be boring. You're right. Hmm. Mm. I'll play you for it. We've already talked about playing for it. Tempestari. I don't have a deck, unfortunately. What? Do you want? You want to start playing? No, I'm good. Thanks. Oh. I got enough people. I was gonna give you the coolest card ever. Yeah. What's Tempestari? You you have a Tempestari card, remember? Oh yeah, you, you do play. That's right. <laughs> no, no, it, it's Jackie has a Tempestari card. It's just I know because I know Jackie found one. Uh, Luna has one as well. Aether uh, hasn't asked Nix about it yet. So well, you I, have to be officially invited to Tempestari to find the cards. Yeah, I gave you that card, so I don't oh, have. Right. Right. Don't actually know how many cards I have. I know I have like only three, though. I will play you for it. And if you're not a Tempest Story player, I'll invite you. All you have to do is take this card out of my fingers. I formally invite you, uh, Jacqueline, whatever your last name is, Zakaria. Zakaria. How do you know my first join name? Join me in. How do I know your first name? Yeah. I don't know. I just do. I either know your last name, your first name, your middle name, your title, something. Okay. But it's always random. But I invite you to formally play Tempestari with me! Hey, All you gotta do is take the card. All you gotta do is take the card out of my fingers. Ah, you can do it. Don't be boring. 
You have a lot of looks like. I have some cards. Yes, sir. Look at this. Yes, we are, Allie. I have everything in the car, but we're gonna have to switch to your car, so we should swap to your car. Yeah. Wanna play? Wanna play? Wanna play? Wanna play? Wanna play? Uh, I Come would on, just take the love card. to play. Thank just you. And just Jackie will take the card. Great. Um, is a asset card. Let me just check my my list. The story. All right. Actually, no. It is a deployable. Um. It is a Omni faction. So it's not uh, clandestine. It's not admin. It's not military. Yeah. Uh, its cost is zero. Um, do, do, do. It's keyword. Just letting that finish it. Reactionary. Which means you can play it whenever you want. Mm -hmm. And it's... Da -da -da -da. Uh, card packs, that's what it was. Uh, it's ability. Ooh. Our name is Pranked. I see. So if you were to forcibly had to take a card from anywhere on your side of the field and have to send it to the graveyard or out of play, you can go, surprise, no, Pranked, and okay. it doesn't happen. All right. Um, so uh, I am done for the night then. Thank you for the, uh, the session, Matt. Um, you guys continue from there. All right. I'm out of here. It is a uh, tier hey, five. Johnny. Have a good night. Bye bye. Be safe. You're in the car. Jackie's going to be whisked away further into the temple. And then the clown looks over at you. <gasps> Jim Bob, haven't seen you in a hot few seconds. I know, right? How have you been? I've been amazingly well. How are the kids? Oh, you know. Killed one on accident. The other two were in shock. One of them still going on about having everything be by standard regulations. That guy doesn't sound like any fun. You should get some chaotic in his life. Maybe. Mm. Well, I mean, they're my princes or my children, so they'll have some chaotic in their life. Steven! I haven't seen you in a while, and it's your minder, your junior uh, investigator, <laughs> minder. Uh, somebody has put a sombrero on their head. I don't like, like Steven. Uh, How are oh. you? He just shakes the maracas in hand. That's what's Steven, that's racist. Even though it's a race that doesn't exist anymore. How could you... Just, how could you do that? I don't know. How could you, supposed... uh, what's the word? Assume? Appropriate? Yeah, appropriate someone else's culture. That doesn't exist anymore. Oh, I can't believe it. I don't know. That's the most excited I've seen them all week. Think of the children. Think of the children! Thank you, Reggae Space Boys. What they said. From beyond the stars.
Or potentially five feet to your right. One of the two. But you're not a big space reggae, boys. You're not five feet to the right of me. Oh, gosh, you might be. <laughs> I'm everywhere. I'm nowhere. I know. <laughs> not you two! Uh, <laughs> I'm a loop gesture. I'm like, ah. Anyways. I was wondering if you could help me with something. Is it fun? I don't know. Oh. Okay, let's find out. I was told I had to experience mortality again. What? Yeah. You're gonna let me mess around with you? Maybe. Can you help me? Yes, absolutely. You're not gonna like it, though. Oh? Why is that? Because it's gonna be an adventure that you'll have to solve like a video game. I like video games. And I have no guarantee it's going to work the way I wanted it to in the first place. Isn't that the basis of all chaotic techniques? Uh, sometimes there's a bit of controlled chaos because you want the chaos to happen over there instead of everywhere, you know? A little specificity actually helps. But sometimes the chaos is the one that gets to choose and not the practitioner. Mm -hmm. Sometimes. Anyways, yes or no? Tell me so I can get my grubby little hands on you. Uh, you know what? Sure, Jack let's in the box go for like, it. Don't do it. Don't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Why do you say that, Jack in the Box? Uh, danger. Danger? That phrase was what was the last thing I heard before I woke up like this. Let me get my grubby mitts on you. And mm. it was from a different person. So I'm a little spooked right now. And if you like the way you are, don't let them get their hands on you. I mean, that's fair. Do you like the way you are? I do. Okay. I worked long to to achieve this. He has his hands out all the way out, fingers splayed, and he just kind of does the grabby, 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 like, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me. Come on, um, let me get I'm my grubby hands on you. I'm going to look at him like, no. This is a no-no square. <laughs> No, no square. <laughs> uh, I cancel your no, no square with my yesism, and I counter you with. There's a guy that comes over the, like reality hey, I'm, Brad, I'm a yes man. Yeah. <laughs> I want to walk around like, but I counter you with consent. You do not have. I counter you with a court order. Oh, mandatory rehabilitation. I counter <laughs> you with I do not consent. And then I step away. Uh, and then you I'm actually honked off a, <laughs> an invisible wall. That's not gonna fly! We're in a Chaotica match now. You and then I'm gonna point me. to him and I go, He threatened to touch me in my no no square. <laughs> <laughs> Out loud to everyone. It just bounces. <laughs> Off. And yes, man, been summoned. Like, yeah, I'm gonna touch you all over that no-no square. <laughs> I want to look uh, at Jack him. Like, look, this is a concept. <laughs> you have to have a counter for his court-mandated, you know, therapy order. No, that's fair. Uh, appeals court. No, I'm going to pull up the fact that he is not my registered therapist. Or you are not my registered therapist. He's also not a judge. <clears throat> no, that won't matter here. Hmm. I counter you with unemployment for your authorized therapist. And you were I... given a court therapist. Authorized, free of charge, fully insured, with health benefits. Mm -hmm. This man just gave himself health benefits. <laughs> he gave himself health benefits. I don't understand. Like, I counter you with... Unemployment. <laughs> you can't do the same move. No. Um, no, no. He countered with employment. Now you're countering no, with... No, unemployment for your preferred... No, unemployment for him. <laughs> oh. Well, no. you can't use unemployment. Yeah, or in points, or in points. Uh, I'm going to no, count no. and L license forfeiture due to misappropriation of funds. Yes. 
That is a <laughs> that is a move. You can hold on to that. No, but we're going to hold on to that. No, what I'm still going to counter with that uh, her unemployment was invalidated as the part of paperwork where it was not filed by the Thunderhead. Very fair. <laughs> but I'm going to expedite this paperwork through the appropriate Thunderhead channel to make okay. sure that it is signed, stamped, all the T's are crossed, all the I's are dotted, perfectly legal, on time. I am going to counter Verifying with... Verifying unemployment. I am going to counter with... Uh, slowing it down due to uh, bureaucracy standards and having to have the therapist come in on an untimely manner. I'm going to counter you with a therapist designed by the Thunderhead, which is Thunderhead himself. But oh wait, he is not here. So you're still given another court appointed therapist. Mm-hmm. I'm going to counter with uh, since therapist, since Thunderhead is not here, nothing can be I have to say, through the Thunderhead at this point in time. Therefore, your document has to be waited until at least three days after the Thunderhead comes back. That's not true. Mm-hmm. When the Thunderhead is down, the... Oh, oh, oh. Oh, fuck. And there is a person tapping their fingers. You called. <laughs> He's like, oh, no. no. I, didn't, I didn't say it. You were about to. And that's all that matters. You let me in. He was, he was thinking it, that stupid <laughs> son of a bitch. I'm going to turn and look at who it is. And uh, it is a wispy black like shadow of an individual. Let me put them on the screen. If anybody <laughs> asks, I'm not here. I'm putting out a fake mustache now. Goodbye! <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll make them a little larger. Because there is a couple individuals that arrive i i don't i don't see anything on the the, the map we're on current okay yeah no if anybody asks they haven't tracked me down yet and i'd rather they not yet <laughs> this person looks over hmm? yes who am i who am i indeed That's- Trade. You'll be required to answer for some things, I think. And they kind of open up a hand, and a big black shadow made grim world you know, full, appears. And they're looking through it. Mm. Misappropriation of military assets and refusal of forfeiture when they are asked for by serial number. Hmm. But in counterbalance to all of your assets that you have provided back, you'll be stripped of your cultivation in its entirety and sent to a prison. And they snap their fingers and the book disappears. And they're like, huh? And you just kind of watch this person kind of deflate like a balloon. Uh... (laughs) And they snap their fingers again. And that person is teleported away. I want to and stop they kind of look their head over at you. Ah, yes, you're on my book. Then who are you, if I ask? I'm the Thunderhead Shadow. Interesting. I you just call me Shadow, I suppose. I'm Shadow from the Oversight Department. We are in charge when the Thunderhead is away such as when the toll protocol is activated. We're the one who makes people answer for things that they have done. And you have done quite a bit, haven't you not? And so what do you mean by that? Ah, yes. Well, let's look at what you've done. Now, snap their fingers and that black grimoire made of shadow appears. It'll flip a couple pages. Ah, yes. It started with your first incident. Not even something worth mentioning in my book. And the outcome was fortuitous. Absolutely. Flips another page. Oh, things get a little bit more serious. Hmm. Murder of the Leah Council. Well, majority of it. That's not good. 
That is definitely something you'll have to answer for. Hmm. Whatever do you mean? I'm the Thunderhead's shadow. I see what he cannot. And I make a book. When he is not here, the Oversight Bureau gets to act. We're his failsafe. Understood. We're the ones that can make anyone answer for what they've done. Even if they're not loyal to the Thunderhead. And don't actually um, think that uh, we can get away with, well, punishing you. There's a lot of cultivators like Ezekiel, who is on my list. He has many things to answer for. Um, you are quite powerful. But I am here to make sure that you pay your due diligence and your penance. And as for any wrongdoings you've done of a significant degree. Mm. And you're trying to pin the murder of a peer council on me? Oh, I'm not pinning. I have evidence. I saw it. I watched it. Mm. I see. And then you would also recognize that they attempted to kill me as well. Oh, yes. Therefore, that would be they were little defense. children. I don't know. I know you were trying to lawry me. This is not going to go to court. I'm judge, jury, and executioner on all of these things. This is the whole point of the oversight, the oversight department. We don't take you to court like Thunderhead does. We don't. I don't need to listen to your reasons. I know them. They're in my book. Mm, I see. Then I'm just here to see what you have to say about it. And then I will sentence, and that will be that. Yes, no. I'll tell you what might want to happen. Mm. When I got there, the previous council member whose seat I was taking attempted to attack me. I defended myself. Mm. I presented evidence showing that there was people on the council working against the council's interests. And then Several members of the council attacked me. I see. And the reason behind the severity of your response? I have it right here, but let's see if it's any different. When facing multiple foes, you use lethal force. That is the most logical answer. They were also able to produce and use the same techniques that I could use. And therefore, I did not take them as children. No. But don't you think your action was rather childish? I do not think it's childish to defend oneself from being attacked and possibly killed. Would you have been killed? Would you really have been actually harmed by these individuals? I may have. Did you not expect... This walking in, did you not prepare with your immense intellect and intelligence that this could be a probability of what could happen? I did not think the entire council, or at least enough of the council, to attack me. Some of them attacked you. Many did not. Many merely reacted to defend themselves from what was about to happen. Now, yes, you were attacked, but the entire council wasn't your enemy, just a few individuals. So well, that surrendered were spared. The ones that did not were my enemy. Right, but at least five of them weren't. Five of them immediately acted to put up some sort of defensive structure. But since they didn't surrender, and since they were directly adjacent to the offenders, I think the first instinct would be put a defensive power. No? They were not according doing to, as you did? Not according to the Lee Department standards. Oh, yes, the Lee Department and its standards. Once I've dealt with the Leah, all of you, I will then be restructuring the Lee Department. These systems are outdated, unfortunately, and no longer an excuse for specific behaviors. 
But that won't just be you. I'm already overseeing the restructuring of the Spectrum Department and many other departments like it. Hmm. Too much cancerous growth. Too much leeway and power without a balance or check. So, Mr. Aether, my book here, for even just the sole crime involving the Lydia Council, the sentence is stripping you entirely of your cultivation, reducing you to a human, and shipping you off to one of the prison colonies, which I am able to do. But my book is not just about all the naughty deeds, mind you. You have actually provided necessary technologies and removed us from the stagnant cesspool that the Leah department had become. And we are now a moving fresh water source supplying to all the vital areas that is the Enigmatic Empire. Plus on your side. Now before I dig into any of the other issues, such as consequences of actions. Would you like to tell me anything that's in my book before I have to tell you about it? Anything you'd like to, uh, I hate to say it, but confess to? No. Well, you would know of the crime that involved a small branch manager of the numbered bases. I care nothing about them. Hmm. That doesn't even come up in my book. And beyond that? None that I can think of. Mm. None that you can think of of equal severity to what you've done. What I deal with is lasting impact and consequential outcomes for the future of the Enigmatic Empire. Your destruction of the Leah Council, unfortunately, has set off a failsafe. Uh, you will, of course, and your people, I hate to say, will not feel it immediately. But the failsafe will be enacted within the next 24 hours, and it will seal this dimension off from the Leah dimension. You see the problem? When there is not a assigned member living to every seat in the council, and I think it's still an archaic system, there should be at least a majority seats filled, at least, but that also breeds a different type of power structure. So within 24 hours, you and your people will be completely choked off from your home dimension that you draw all of your power from. And you and your people will start to wither and die. You won't be able to just pull energy from there. You'll have to pull from this dimension, which has none. It does not have enough. The only place you'll be able to persist are on the stars. And we're not going to just let anyone start to drink up all our stars. We only have a few of them. Let's see. And you are going to require a very specific power source of significant magnitude because of what you are. So, you see the problem. Also, whatever Leah is in this dimension, that's it. We are not going to be able to be pulling from the Leah dimension for all the uh, applicable needs. <sighs> this is the type of thing I hold people accountable for. Especially when the Thunderhead can't do it himself. I see. Yes. Well, then I guess the simple need will be to find new members of the Leah Council who are capable to understand what it means to be a council member. No, I think you've given me a unique opportunity. Now, I can make this wrong, you put in my book about you into a, something in the right column, but you and Morpheus are the only last remaining members of the Leah Council. Now, 
I'm going to be doing the restructuring of the Leah department in its entirety. And if there weren't to be a Leah department anymore, you would technically be found with no wrongdoings. Do you have any protests about the dissolvement of the LEA program? Mm. I think it's going to take a long to think here. What are the consequences of the LEA department not being around anymore? Rather severe. It would be a replacement. There would be no LEA department. It would be wrapped under the Spectrum Department, as it should have been all those times ago. They are in charge of interdimensional planes and materials and energies. Let's see. It'll be a sub-department under the Spectrum Department. Hmm. It'll still function like it used to, but it will have oversight. And what caused the lead department in the first place? If there was the spectrum department, and it was subservient to it. Mm, the Thunderhead's decision to keep it, and the Stormfront to uh, allow its... What's the term? Allow it to be in the first place, I suppose. He was the one who separated the two due to the feasibility and the need for focus. It was a decision of the moment, since the needs of the enigmatic people were very specific at the time. It needed its own focus, its own funding, its own resources, personnel, all specialized and have nothing to do with any of the other spectrum parts. It needed complete concentration. And it worked. We are able to build our fleet power and defend uh, the enigmatic people. But now it's archaic and no longer needed as Spectrum is able to reintegrate it. You would, of course, lose all of your LEA clearances, and you would have to reapply for Spectrum clearances. Brand new ones. Everyone who has Spectrum clearances right now will find, once I'm done with the department, those won't work anymore. I'll have to start from scratch. And why Spectrum? They have been hidden away for years. Yes, I have spoken to the director and all major individuals involved, and I only found one of their ilk of any power, a mid-level manager, who is very, very naughty. But the rest... Well, my sheet is that of balance. If your actions have a balance for the things that you have done, it's fine with me. Nothing will happen. Continue on as normal. If your balance sheet is mostly positives and greatly outweigh the negatives, you'll never see me in the first place. You can just continue on without knowing. You are kind of a, pun intended, enigmatic case. An exotic case. Mm. Someone I'm actually willing to talk to because of your contributions. But you've also made some serious problems. I see. Now, I don't wish to repeat the mistakes of the past. Those stay there, but we must learn from them. And I agree. I think the Leah Council was a rusty bucket that had long since filled its need. So you don't mind the dissolvement of the Leah program and its reabsorbment into the Spectrum Department? I mind its dissolvement. I do agree that Leah should be held responsible and held accountable. I still believe in the Thunderhead's initiative that Leah, as a whole, is far is of needed of its own department. I think the council, in my personal opinion, 
should not be long-standing dinosaurs that haven't moved since the Earth was young. <laughs> no one's lived that long. But the point is made clear, is it not? It is. But I'm trying to help you absolve what I'm going to have to do to you if you really want to hang on to your council seat and all your clearances and everything that has to do with Leah, because Leah is most likely going to go away as a primary department. I believe the current Leah department should go away, and I believe there should be a new department made. Yes, under Spectrum, because the Leah department, unfortunately, has withered and turned very poisonous without oversight which is my entire purpose within the Enigma Empire. That's fair. So, it would if still be going. the Leah department, but it would be a sub-department. It would have yeah. a chair for a single person at the Spectrum Council. Mm-hmm. Then for now, I shall agree. Very well. You may apply for this Spectrum chair through normal channels. And if you are elected to have that chair, then so be it. Understood. But as of of now, you are relinquished of your authorizations and access codes regarding the LEA Council membership you have. In addition to, well, let Morpheus know. I'll find him personally one of these days, but For now, his codes are also revoked. You also no longer have level 10 clearance as a Leah technician, but you will keep your level 9 clearance. Once we have restructured back into Spectrum, new high-level clearance codes will be granted for the level 10. And of course, whoever is elected to or assigned to the uh, council seat. For now, we do need Leah to continue operating, but unfortunately, I will have to intercede before the Leah dimension is closed off to this dimension. Well, that would be a problem, wouldn't it, Mr. Lamarin? It may be a problem, it considering a problem. that would, well, Many ships are being outfitted with Leah. Yes, it would, which is why this is a thing that caught my eye so potently. It uh, had weight to my pages on the consequences of what was about to happen. This is true, though I believe the Leah Council is still in session. No, no, it's not. No, it's not. But the public will think it is. That was a good play to remove panic and to remove the the notion that there isn't anyone at the helm. But you also left us a wonderful present that we have to clean up, specifically me, because I'm the only one able to clean up that type of mess. That little phase-on thing you did, and you sealed it up. Hmm. I'm not your janitor. Know this in the future. Uh, I figured the self-containing protocols had dealt with that. I'm sorry. I didn't know my previous council members were such idiots. No, you're just too powerful. But that's what I'm here for. I am somewhat like you. I can tell. In the negative energy plane, right? That and a few, many, many other things. Oh, well, Nick's very much does and does not want to meet this person. Well, Miss Shadow, it has been a pleasure to see you. Mm. And I hope I do not see you again. Yes, you won't want to. Do remember, most of everything else you've done that could be uh, a problem in my book 
has been counterbalanced by all the good things you've done. This was one of the big things that I was very curious about. But now that you're in agreement and that there won't be any official main Leah departments, um, you're resolved of all your wrongdoing since there isn't a Leah department, well, main department anymore. Of course. Yes. Oh, you're, um, you're investigator there, you're junior. Hmm? You are no longer required to have one, but I do recommend it that you keep them around. Uh, I think it as an investigator, I should keep one. I recommend having it around because you can then always prove or not prove things of many natures. It also has a, uh, a bit of trust extended to the investigatorial permit, who is, to be fair to you, they're also getting a bit of oversight as well. Sure. They have a lot to answer for. And they can only hide for so long. Speaking of which, mm, there's a certain somebody nearby. And if they don't want me to have to hunt them down, I suggest they uh, just bite the bullet and come out. Exactly been a hiding. They just haven't come <laughs> anywhere near me until now. Now they're near you. <laughs> you are really quiet, by the way. Am I? Hmm? Am, am I? Am I very quiet? Can you hear me? Not now? anymore. Not anymore. Weird. <laughs> Yeah, okay. I'm just gonna <laughs> Where where is everybody currently? They're in the main temple. Alright, so Center of the Chaotic Temple. I mean to be fair, I wasn't aware this guy was here. Mina and Mina the Luna Mina and the Mina and the Mina Milo Milalo. Words in English. Uh, me and her were just out messing around in the temple at this point. Yeah, Mina, Mina Lo will grab you like, uh-oh, there could be not safe maybe thing here. Uh-oh. What do you mean maybe not safe here? Spooky trouble. Spooky trouble. Is this spooky trouble we're leaving from? Or... Is this spooky uh, trouble that's going to follow us no matter what we do? Well, it's going to get to us eventually. Well, might as well face it now, then. Okay. I'm going to look at Shadow and go, now, if you excuse me, I actually do have to go and deal with the Leah Department and stop some ships from blowing up or going missing. Hmm. Do so. Neither will just kind of load away. I guess me and Mina will roll up. Just Mina and Mina. The Minas. Mina La and Mina Lo. Uh, just, so this this is just like a shadow dude, huh? Yeah. They, it's kind of the flickering shadow. It's not just kind of roiling in place. Kind of an old-fashioned um, Thunderhead agent suit. A lot more personality to it than is normal, but still the same colors. I like the uniform. Mm. It was nice. old. I preferred it to the different options that were provided to me. Yeah. Yeah, I've noticed a lot of the other options tend to be just flat gray and the like. Kind of boring. Mm. Mm. I see you've taken Crashing Anvil's colors. Hmm? Oh. Uh, well, okay, Matt. So my yeah, normal hat. outfit. Yeah, that, it's that, the hat. I have a mix of things on me. Yeah, I know. But she's just gonna be like, uh eh, kind of waves hand side to side. We're working together. I wouldn't say I work directly for him. Much as I think he would contest that. I have one true loyalty in one alone. Hmm. And it's good. Shows your absolute loyalty is not to the Thunderhead, but to Neath. At least in correct. my book. Hmm? 
That is correct. I am her agent until she is of age. Or until she chooses to, to be... Mm. Yeah. And after that, it's her decision as to what happens to me, as I am hers. Hmm. Right. I was given to her by the Thunderhead, as it were. But you were already aware of that. Mm-hmm. So, so what might... it's pretty simple. I have a different stance on how cultivation should be dealt with. And... Mm-hmm treated. There is a major phobia that is starting to gain traction, and unfortunately, your technology has done nothing to, well, with the exception of the disruptor rifles. Very good touch. Unfortunately, the settings are a little too high. It has caused Mm -hmm. some serious tension throughout. Uh, To help with that Info-wise, Matt, I did have Amina working on that after I got the dialable suggestion from that. Uh, mm. What's his name? So there Most is a dialable option. Just crank it. They don't. They don't even bother setting it down. They well, I mean, max, max setting is required from some targets, mm. undeniably. No. Mm. That's not a major problem. Your contributions easily eclipse that. Mm. Um. This other research project, Farthest Star. What is with all these stupid names? They're so. They're Mine's so named after a song. Yes, yeah, as things go. And then Brightest Star. I swear he did it on purpose. He he's never admitted to it, but I think he's just fucking with me. Brightest Star was actually filed before yours. Was it? Years, centuries, actually. Damn it. <laughs> In fact, yeah. Neo Star and True Star within that factionary grouping, uh, they each have their own uh, organizational names within the same faction. Uh, they filed those before Farthest Star. Damn it. No, I had no idea originally. It's pure coincidence. Hmm. Regardless, your anti cultivator technology that you're building, the technology, if you wish to continue, researching it specifically around pulling cultivation out of others uh, and, of course, recycling them. That, unfortunately, will have to be remanded entirely and in perpetuity to the oversight department. You can't just have people running around ripping cultivation out of anyone because they feel like it or because it's a security option. It's a big no. Now, out of objects... I see no problem with that. Might I state that I had never had intentions to uh, rip it out of people as, well, it'd probably be better just to kill them at that point than that. It is. It is a lot more humane, yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of sitting on the same one there. That was never an intention of the technology, though. I can see it heading that direction but if left too unattended it is hypocritical for me to say that i will not be permitting others to do so while i do it myself but that's on purpose just because it's hypocritical doesn't mean you're wrong true as for some of the other things uh, that can be ignored who cares about that Ooh, this one's spicy the uh the all call announcement across the entire empire about uh, brighter star and then yeah that was definitely me jumping the gun far too much uh that is no that that i'm already working to start pulling back on that as that was far too much of a overextension on my part would you like to see the resulting consequential damages uh that happened because of that I should, yes. They will float a page out of the tome, and then it'll this black page grows to this giant slab. And in white text, it writes, oh gosh, it won't stop writing. Um, you're looking mm. at several tens of thousands of casualties, several thousand deaths, lynchings, uh, 
Yeah. Basically, persecution of what people think are traitors. Uh, the other side responding. Several ships have gone missing. Technology uh, destroyed and missing. You're talking like... Yep. Yeah. Uh, Vina's not even pretending. She's like, yeah, that's what I feared it ended up being. Mm. I pointed out that that was a probability. No, you did not. I did. No. You might have said it in your head, but you the never said it town, The timing of it actually could have been remedied were the Thunderhead awake. That would have been perfectly fine if he set that all call because then the Thunderhead would be able to do something about it. The real problem is it was timed after the toll protocol. Because now there's no Thunderhead voice to refute it, and it's coming from one of the highest offices in... Yeah, that... I will tell you that was not mm. planned in that fashion. However, I will not deny anything even resembling my culpability in that. I am fully responsible for that, and like I said, I'm going to do what I can to start walking this back, but Charity. I've let the... Um, I've let the genie out of the bottle. Yes. So this will be a protracted punishment. Yes. But nothing will happen to you for now, because you are still the uh, the regent, and the successor, Neath, is your ward. We can't have anything happening to you during the meantime. Now, at the end of that, depending on what happens, and... If the Thunderhead comes online before those 14 years are up, could be a different verdict. While he's down, I have you marked for removal of office Hmm. in perpetuity. You will never be able to be an investigator again. That type of abuse of power and jumping to the gun, um, technically you should also be stripped of everything and thrown into a prison, but we can't do that right now. And also your contributions are not insignificant. It's unfortunately your collective crew ended up during, kind of flips a few pages. Ah, yes, the meeting. When you discover the brightest star and you didn't even have the full information was gathering technology and you all hastily jumped to a very, very poor conclusion. And because all of you didn't seek out level or heads or ask other opinions. Your little cabal of very capable individuals have done rather significant damage to the Enigmatic Empire. I don't think any of it's unrecoverable, but it doesn't change that it happens. Precisely. So, that said, I bestow upon you future doom, so to speak. Fortunately, There's a lot that can be done to mitigate that because my book is all about balance. The more good you do, could end up out balancing by the time it comes around to it. This doesn't happen often, but again, being an unrestricted uh, asset to the successor outweighs what I should do to you immediately. And of course, your contributions are rather significant. So... I will be ensuring that the Thunderhead is online in an orderly and timely fashion as well. He takes whatever time he needs. That was the point of the toll protocol. What I mean by that is I am assisting him. I know. At least as much as he'll allow. I know. It's in my book. Ah, well, yes. Fortunately, perhaps you could do some real good while you still have your off- years in office left. I am folding the Leah department into the Spectrum department where it originally belonged. It, un- it has operated independently for far too long and has not shown the growth necessary to be you know, continually separate. There are going to be some holdouts. There is going to be some problems. Perhaps you could remedy some of this. It would help balance your sheet. I would be happy to assist with whatever, whatever you would like me to. Mm. For now, 
I need you to get me to Mr. Banshee. He has uh, a little bit to answer for as well. A lot of contributions. Would you like me to bring him to you or bring you to him? Um, no, I think I should go visit him personally. I find that pulling people through space and time without their, their knowing, unfortunately, creates for a very hostile environment. Fair enough. I will bring you to him, if you'll permit me, then. Just give me the coordinates. I'll find myself there. Great. And I'm just going to send him Nix's coordinates. Do know that I'm watching. And you are not the only ones who have anything to answer for. Um, oh, this was for you. And you were handed a data pad with a little leather pouch. Number two has been retired. I see. He said to give this to you in case he was retired. And I thought that it was no consequence. So it's all yours for now. And as Thank long as you keep that office, it's yours. Thank you. Was there anything else you needed from me today? Anything you would be concerned about that would be in my book? She thinks for a bit before... Any concerns with the digging up of Subject S and Subject E? No... They are unfortunately victims, although Subject S is a bit more concerning, considering, um, well, unfortunately E didn't require as much mental conditioning as S. Um, there's a reason why they're so bent and broken. The uh, Once the power was installed, they needed a supplicatable personality attached to that power set which was not part of the original, well, project. It was meant to build two very loyal soldiers, twins, to assist the Thunderhead in all things when it came to defeating the enemy. Well, somebody changed the part of the program uh, about... Mm, well, let's just say they're victims. They were... Uh, almost brainwashed into being fools for a specific individual. And, and uh, some individuals, completely unrelated, actually jumped in to save them. At a high price, of course. So they have nothing to really answer for. They are who they are. And, well, if you're a victim, there's not much you can do. The mm. one behind it, though... I just need to get my hands on him. He is a... Uh, well, he has a lot to answer for. Um... Uh, what's his... I have to check my notes. Matthias. Because Matthias. Is it Matthias or another individual? No, it's Matthias. He is unfortunately a... Well, a very naughty boy in my book. All right. I was hoping that some of the events might have flushed him out, but... No. No, no, he has too many pawns, too many webs in his... Uh, well, too many strings in his web that he has left. Too many assets. Here's my card. If you find him, use this so I could get there. And uh, I'll make sure he can't do anything anymore. Very well. He has a nasty set of power. Fortunately, I am of a type that is unaffected by his power set, which is the reason why I have the position I have today. Hmm. Is there anything you think I should be concerned about? Beyond what we've already discussed. Hmm... Not necessarily. You've behaved exactly like a uh, active and a very aggressive interrogator 
and investigators should. I mean, it's all petty stuff, all little things. It's, well, this one that we've... <laughs> the all call. It's the far-flinging ramifications of action and the, ther- the resulting consequence that I care about. Yes, that one I regretted once I realized what I'd actually done. Hmm. Well, once that's out of the bag, unfortunately, it cannot all be we, undone. All we can do is damage control. Yes, and I have quite a bit of that. So, I'm seeing what I can do, but I will leave you to your work. And if you require anything else of me, my location is actually more stable than you'd expect. Find one of you. If you wish for the one that would be most relevant to talk to, it would be my main body, and I will actually give him how to find my main body. Yes, the interlink code. That's not a technology I'm particularly fond of, but it is not a a negative in my book. The it's just uh. I've frankly I've subverted it significantly with my own techniques, but. That's neither here nor there. Hmm. All right. The oversight department, thank you for your cooperation. Of course. Let's hope that the Thunderhead comes back with some semblance of sanity and cohesiveness. Because otherwise, there may be a little bit more oversight needed. And nobody seems to want that. Would you? Would it be helpful at all if I were to tell you I know where the toll is? I know where the toll is, but thank you ah. for your offer. Very I've well. already spoken to the toll and laid out the entirety of the guidelines as the responsibility as the toll. And they have made it crystal clear to me that they will not deviate from their responsibilities. The toll is actually their primary job, and they are, rev- well... Their current junior investigator job title will be not suspended, but secondary to being the toll. Oh, yes, that was already true. She is very responsible. I'm glad it was her. Yes. Very well. And he kind of looks to the robot with the ball in the head. Looks like a giant camera. Everything recorded? And it kind of nods. Very good. Subject file, Minola and Minolo have been visited, and it lists kind of a, a bunch of different um, information like spatial coordinates, dimensional coordinates, time, date, um, state of the room, specific location by um, uh, audio or by word description. Yeah. <laughs> And it lists all the different people they dealt with and their verdict. So it's recorded. All right. We will go visit some individuals that also have much to answer for. Oh, the coordinates are also close to Miss Evelyn. Hmm. How fortuitous. I believe they had a party. The Limarines have a lot to answer for. Naughty, naughty. Very well. Keep your nose clean. Do some more good. Maybe you can keep your job later. They'll give them a salute. <laughs> they just kind of fall into the shadow on the floor. Good luck, Nix. I'm sure you'll be fine. I mean, neither me nor Aether got fucked, so I, I, you'll be fine. <laughs> Yeah, so they will pop up and kind of unfurl themselves from the shadow, kind of next to the bar. And nobody really notices them for quite a while, but your hackles go up like, oh, no. There's a predator in the room. Oh, there is a... Ooh, that's not good. You're able to hone in on it before a lot of the other people kind of who have strong instincts kind of look around and kind of hone in evelyn hones in on it excuse me 
This is my private party. I didn't think I invited you. I'm never wanted where I travel. My business, unfortunately, is bringing ill tidings and judgment upon those I seek. So, of course, I'm not invited. You, on the other hand, have a lot to answer for. And they'll pull out their tome. And everyone's like, what the fuck? And the guards kind of tap their sticks on the ground, and the whole room is covered in a prism field. Yes, no running. I am Shadow. From the Oversight Department. For those in the know, remain where you are. For those who don't, still remain where you are. We'll get this over with quickly. And it basically summarily goes through several different people, saying what they think about them, revealing some very, very secret stuff. Some people are stripped of their rank on site. Some of them are basically stripped of their citizenship and sent, you know, to, summarily sent to prison. Uh, some people are pardoned for meritorious actions that have balanced some of the other things they've done. Um, gets to Miss Evelyn. Unfortunately, your balance sheet is precariously in the negative. You have actually done a large bit of good earlier in your career. Fortunately, from then up till now, you have been a very frivolous and vicarious and greedy person. That doesn't particularly matter, except your involvement with the black market. Yes, yes, I know about that. And as one of the chairmen of the black office, or the black market, I am fortunately, we have a problem. Yes. The sale of multiple Leosol ship generators recovered from fleets and ships. Big no-no. Seven of them. And a carrier core. Ooh. That's unfortunately you have nothing on your sheet that can balance that out. Uh, the sale of Warlord torpedoes on the side. Well, some of these are authorized. Just oh no, you were coerced. No, I see that now. Most fleets have something to answer for. Let's see. Sale of alien technology. None of those have really resulted in anything negative, so we can overlook that. Mm. Some of your chemtech practices we're going to have to take a close look at because uh, distilling potential of the soul out of people into, well, elixir, that is a trend I do not want to see perpetuate. Big no. Well, I think the verdict is pretty clear. Uh, you unfortunately going to be stripped of everything, all of your possessions, all of your property your chemtech, your cultivation, everything, and you're going to be summarily executed for high treason. This way, please. As chemtech starts to pour out of their pores, and they kind of lose about a foot in height, and their chemtech gear just kind of falls seamlessly out of their body, like the, the body's rejecting the implants, and the skin reheals over it. And their chemtech arm that falls off grows a new human arm. Yes, you're human now. Oh no. Your execution will be in 48 hours. You will have the opportunity to say goodbye to your, well, anyone who shows up or don't. And then, well. <laughs> you'll be executed. May that be a lesson to everyone here and to anyone from here on that you are held accountable for your actions and that I'm always watching, even though the Thunderhead may not be. Very right, well. Moving on to the last person here, Mr. Banshee. I held you for last. Hmm. Oh, uh, sorry, before we get to you. Uh, Mr. Brian Lamarin, you are hereby granted all of the assets and... Well, responsibility and, well, office that Miss Evelyn Lamarin, Lamarine used to possess. You are now going to be a pro tem 
uh, Chembaron, even though you have nothing to do with Chemtech. But you are also to assume all of her business and financial holdings here into perpetuity for your meritorious deeds to the Thunderhead and for keeping your nose rather squeaky clean. Congratulations. He's like, oh, uh, uh, well, oh my. Mr. Banshee. I I would prefer not to have other people listening to what may be my dirty little secrets. Can we do this in private? No. I aired everyone's laundry in front of everyone. Why do you get special treatment? Because I had the balls to ask. True. Denied. Not too bad. Nothing on here, particularly in the early stories or the early ages. Uh, flipping through. Mm, don't care about that. Don't care about this. Yeah, those people are dead. Who cares? Ah, now we're getting to the good stuff. Dealing with the black market, but nothing about that. No, you've already repented. You're working with the authorities. You actually gave away the thing you bought because you thought it was too valuable. Actually, more meritorious than bad. <laughs> Good play. Working with the Thunderhead on all his projects. Hmm. Pretty all good across the board, except ah, uh, the use of the toll. The toll protocol. Oh, that could have been timed better, Mr. Banshee. That could have been really timed better. Don't think. Possibly. Mm. Hmm. But you have done quite a few meritorious, although selfish, things. But you have... Well, we, Ares has quite a bit to thank you for, considering your contributions. Absolutely. Your focus on morale. A lot of things going in your favor. So, uh, unlike these other individuals, why don't you tell me about your thought process when you wanted to use the tall? I'm going to ask why. Only because when I was given the authority to do so, I was told it was my under my exclusive discretion and that I should use it when I felt was the best time to use it. And that's what I'm asking. Your thought process behind when you used it and why you used it. I'm not I'm not asking you that oh, you wait. used it. I'm asking you your thought process behind when and why? I'm not refuting your right to have the, the use of it in the first place. It was a culmination of factors that we had been developing to help the Thunderhead with certain issues, combined with the fact that it would throw those opposing us and the Thunderhead for a complete loop for a few days to give us the chance to make a move to quote-unquote do our best to gut the snake since we didn't fully have the capability of removing the head. Hmm. Okay. That's your reason why. What about your reasoning behind the when? Just for curiosity's sake. Honestly, I couldn't find a better time personally to do it. There was the coming move on the Leah to get a person on the Leah Council. There was the investigator. There was the fact that the other side was beginning to make subtle plays 
that mm-hmm. seem to be leading towards a big power play and mm-hmm. doing the toll protocol at that time would be our best maneuver at subverting and flat out stalling that combined mm-hmm. with being able to use that moment to make sure key points like the jewel were period secure uh, i appreciate your explanation a little bit of counter play here your wise pretty solid but half baked but i don't entirely blame you for it you and your group didn't help you or do you any service and when you were going to use it did you at any point actually look at what the program does did you pop it open and take a look really understand all the dominoes that are lined up before you knock them over or did you I just wasn't i wasn't it? allowed to i was given a code told where to go and what would happen and that was it perhaps the in perhaps that should be something that should be added to what the toll is given in the future. Toll protocol is a one-time use, but you were told not to look at it. But only a real loyalist, a fanatic, and a patriot would not, which is good in your favor, but anyone who really, really cares and really thinks hard would go against what they are told and open the dang thing to take a peek. Because the Toll Protocol could have actually been straight poison to the Thunderhead. And if you have some instructions telling you, don't look, just do, I think that's a little ruinous without looking without looking before you leap. Regardless. While that may be, I will not argue that. Mm. I had contingencies in place for such an occasion. Mm. So you say. Out of character, he did. We had Nyeth, we had my parents, so that we could sequester them to get Nyeth put in place to replace the Thunderhead if necessary. Right, that's that's why they're not pulling up any. Yeah. I just say, it just went, so, so you say. The when is a little bit more why I'm a bit consternated about the use of the protocol. The when. Any reasoning behind it, mostly because... I hate to say it, but the win, even if it was your right as the holder of the protocol, that was a really poor win. You may have thought that jumping on an opportunity without letting anyone know and protecting the jewel and securing it actually has done quite the opposite. No one was ready for it. None of the security forces, which I think that was your point, so that no one was ready for it so you can act. But you haven't been doing a lot of acting. You guys have stalled out. You guys are here on Ouroboros, walking through the quagmire that is here, rather than leaving your assets to solve the problem. And you haven't moved on to the next site. You haven't... You haven't done a lot with the when choice. You didn't have any other assets other than yourself and your immediate individuals who trust you blindly and or or are loyal to you you know they were the ones who got to act but only after you told them you could actually put the jewel in rather huge jeopardy through its use because the thunderhead is silent especially on the jewel all automation is still running but there's no decision making process going on Everything is operating as it was when it was activated. And that's the way it will stay until the Thunderhead comes back. And it's up to my oversight department to unfortunately manage that. But there's also the enigmatic government of the people who now fit that role. I They have a lot to answer for, but those who aren't at fault and are just part of the system. Well, the enigmatic government of the people now runs Enigma. You realize that? 
out hey, of character. Matt? No, they were yeah. fucking nuked. Completely they, and totally on. purged. We did right. not nuke them, no. But we hit not a literally. lot of assets. Yes. And as a counter, Matt, mm-hmm. I redeployed a significant amount of assets right. to start running Enigma so the Enigma government couldn't do it. That's that was that was day one. Right. And the oversight department are following in your wake. They've through the system, they put some guy that is shadow approved. Uh, he gets to sit in a desk and all the procedural choices that the Thunder has to make about food distribution, land distribution, crop yields, and growth, like all of that Thunderhead stuff. They get to make those decisions, <laughs> such as... Uh, Great, but that is very different from saying we didn't do anything about it when we no, did. You didn't. But that's not and... what he just accused. So... That's my point. Hmm? Nix is just going to be like, look, it may have been... A fuck up. But I did the best I could with what I had available, what knowledge I had, at what I felt was the best time. Hmm. Well, I can't judge you for the use of the toll protocol. Even if it was used at the worst time with the wrong reasons, that is one thing on my book. If it's used, it's used. In my Jolly friend here, the observer, I wanted it for posterity's sake, that what your reasoning for the use behind it was. That's fair. Unfortunately, it's one of the few things that, once used, cannot be undone, and even if used ruinously, I can't accuse you for the use of it. No. If it was a malicious use, that would be different, but unrelated to the protocol. You would be answering for actions taken after the use of the protocol, such as you know attacking servers or plundering the wealth of the system, so on and so forth, which none of you did. So can't charge you for the use, and you didn't do anything nefarious afterwards. Not too bad. Um... Hmm. Be careful with the psionics. I don't particularly mind too much uh, about you having psionic abilities and all that xenotech and whatnot. Don't really care in my book too much. Just cautionary, you know, be careful. Okay, enough on that. Um... Anything else you want to bring up before I include something? Anything you might be worried about? Mm. The only thing that I have been questioning whether I acted correctly in was requesting the deployment of my Chemtech fellows for key things on the jewel. No, it's fine. Some of them, unfortunately, uh, had a moment of weakness, a lapse of judgment, but nothing of significance. I really don't care. Um, But they acted in the good of the Thunderhead, so that's just a plus in your book. Yeah, fair enough, but I, it was one of the things I was unsure of. It was fun. Um, I had to say, not a bad play. Mm, definitely not something I would do, considering the unreliable asset, or even a detriment that would end up, or could be. But overall, it's fine. As I have found, sometimes... You have to throw a bit of trust at people to get them to do what they know they should but aren't. 
Um, as for ooh, XB4, you properly handled that one. I don't particularly care if you go in it or resolve it, but it has to be resolved if you do go in, so I don't really care. <sighs> That's... I'm a little disappointed with all the equipment lying around, but at what least equipment? it's being the mining equipment and all the security. Oh no, that that that's being relo that's being relocated to my station that will be moving so th around. Yeah, that's so perfectly that fine. I'm so more disappointed in the people who left it there. That billion credits worth of equipment. That's. <sighs> That's not really acceptable. Somebody's going to have to pay for that. Uh, oh, they're dead. Oh, it doesn't matter. So. <laughs> well, I have laid claim to it and will be making use of it as soon as it, it is available. So. Mm. Yeah, with, I don't care what you do with it. Do, you know, do as thou wilt with it. Just mining equipment. Um, do you be careful which planet you mine? There's a couple ones in my books that are big no-no. Uh, I'm not going to tell you about them. Just do your research beforehand. Um, ooh, be careful of your interdimensional fuckery. Uh, playing with the parotene gas, that's perfectly fine, as long as you don't reach a criticality event. Yeah, I've a lot of stuff that, that is that, so I've been caution. Yeah, so a lot of stuff on your book is, you know, you know, be careful going forward. But no, they're really big red flags for me. Any mistakes you and your group have technically made? You've gone out of your way to try and, well, correct it, or at least do good somewhere else. So, all in told, I think among your group. Only about three major mistakes, but I mean, the amount of good you guys have done is very heavy on the other side of the balance. Do you know that I'm watching? Now that I've met you, I can always find you. That applies to everyone here. Also, party, as you well know, it is over. Those who still have their jobs, their citizenship, and their lives, you're free to go. That includes you, Mr. Banshee, and thank you for your time. You wouldn't happen to know where your parents are, would you? They have a lot to answer for. On that note, I will point out that my parents were under a mind-controlling influence. Yes, I have that here. Yes. And I, I know actually know who they Well, I actually know the individual in question because there's only two people with that type of power and one of them was locked away in a tomb vault security secure holding facility for well they couldn't have done it so that leaves one man I and well know where they are but i am highly protective of my parents uh, i don't like when doesn't know where they are then that never happened because that was one of my big stipulations. I had to know where my fucking shit was. And I said, sure, but I like to do it, but it's somewhere else. I know where it is. Because I'm the one that has to put it back. I know where it is, too. Because there's a me on it. You'll have to answer to your your the assholes in your group. I I'm did not I, more I'm and you. more reason to want to kill my party. Hey, don't look at me for this. I didn't know he lied to you about where he put it. I, I didn't know why. I didn't, I didn't tell. Why I didn't did tell. I didn't tell anyone where I put it. Yeah, the only reason I know where it is is because there's a me on it. There is no other reason. Mm-hmm. So why did you tell nobody where you put it? Uh, in case then you got mind controlled. We can't be. I know, but I'm paranoid. No, if you know we cannot be mind controlled, I, that is not something there's no to be paranoid over. Yes, it is, because there's other ways it can happen. 
You know what? That is that this hundred percent is between you and Nick's right now. I had no idea he lied to us about where we put it, so I don't know what else to tell you. Okay. I'm gonna make a short run out to get a drink. It'll be fifteen minutes for me, so uh, I'll be right back. Cause I want a beer. You guys I'll get a beer. RP it out. Like Legit, I assumed you knew where your base <laughs> was. I the only reason I know other like where it actually is is just because there's I'm with Niev. No, it, that's why I'm saying because I should know where it is because I have tracking shit on it. Uh, if ah. there's tracking shit on it, then other people then, yeah. can track it. That's fair. Yeah, so I don't and recommend that. Yeah, mm-hmm. which means I was yeah. the one that moved in, and I was like. I'm going to put it in the safest location. I can. And it's still on the plane, roughly where you wanted it. I know it's super far up above the galactic plane, as I recall correctly. And that is correct. But I didn't tell anyone I was putting it above our disk. I don't know. I'm just... Blah. If he don't like legit, I I didn't realize he hadn't told anybody he did that. Yep, I didn't tell anyone. Yes, I was told hide it and hide it here, and I was like, cool, that's there ish. That's there, just up by a lot. <laughs> it's relative. The Y and Z axis is correct. Uh, X axis, I mean. <laughs> details. Details. Important details. Very important details. Because if anyone went and looking in that sector of space for it, by finding out through any means other than Aether, he knew there had to be a traitor amongst the group. Mm-hmm. I'm just he didn't well um, are you trying not to direct him to them because to be frank, that might be a mark against you depend and it'll be probably be proportionate to however big theirs is. Oh, I entirely understand that, but alternatively, well, because you don't know where they're at, you can give them the direct space, spatial coordinates that you know. That's true. You could just give them what you know, which is not accurate, but you don't know that it's not accurate. Or shit like this is why we hid the truth. No, don't we this. This is all you. No, don't we as like the royal we. Uh, yeah, don't royal we at me. <laughs> that sounds I so will, dirty when phrased that way. I will royal we at you all day. <laughs> don't you royal we me. I already did. Are we? Are we? Uh, hmm. I don't fucking know. Is, yeah. is, we'll just do some backflips, I guess. I can do backflips all day. How about you? The this this is why Aether is the problem. This this is definitely why we say you're the problem, child. Yes. Hmm. But counterpoint, there is no counterpoint. Shush. <laughs> counterpoint, I also was unpredictable and thus able to get away with things. Unpredictability is not necessarily a mark in your favor. That is not a mark against me either. 
when you actively on lie the situation. to yeah, that's it. When you actively lie to another, uh, like the owner of a station, about where the station is, that could very much be marked against you. This is true, but counterpoint, and now he can't lie. You do know he has the ability to make himself forget things, right? And but now he can't lie, and now no one can say, "Ah, oh, well, he made him forget." Mm-hmm. Does you think the shadow person no. can't tell when that's happened and they manipulated memories? I actually don't know. I know my lie detection thing wouldn't pick it up, but mine's pretty rudimentary, and I've only got like the most basic of it. So exactly, him probably. I'm gonna choose to blame you. I mean, yeah. no, that's fair. Uh, okay, ogre. I, I say <laughs> that's that's our end conclusion here. We blame him. Does that sound okay to you, ogre? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. When did that ever I usually blame me. I usually blame Aether, so Okay. To be fair, when was the last time it wasn't your fault? I know it did happen, I just don't remember what the last time was. Um the Boiler Torpedoes. Was... What about Warlord Torpedoes? Yeah, no, the last time it wasn't my fault was with the whole Warlord Torpedoes incident. Or the current incident, which is like people trying to make entire fleets disappear. Yep, yep. Um, hmm. I meant within the party. We're not talking... Because I, I don't think any of us have tried to make a fleet disappear yet. I've thought about it. Me too. I, I said we haven't tried. Well, not the fleet itself, but the people in charge. No, no, no. Okay. I was talking about the whole fleet. I've actually been legitimately considering seeing how much it is to buy the entire fleet minus the Leah capable jump drives. I have been told by Black flat out, you are, we are not allowed to just buy a fleet. Damn it. <laughs> yeah. Sounds Otherwise, unfair. Nick could. We both could. I'm building a new ship. Yeah. Yep. Congrats. That's cool. I have fleet power now. I'm a recognized fleet power. Are you? Mm-hmm. When did that happen? Uh, last session. Also, why? Because I've helped the fleet a lot. It No, that... I don't know if that makes you a fleet power. The, I got a pen. I got access to our private club. Then I am going to bitch to high fucking heaven at Blatt. Okay, having a pin and being allowed into a club is very different from being a fleet power. No. Mm-hmm. Not, not nearly as much as you think. Because eh? that that kind of shit is only allowed... Well, to... I'm I'm going to put it out, point it out this way, Ogre. What is the only thing the fleet respects? Raw strength. Mm-hmm. So if he doesn't have an actual fleet, they might recognize him as a power to be respected, but that doesn't mean he's a fleet power. It's uh... very different different thing between recognition and actual fleet. Yes, but to get access to certain people within fleets and stuff, you have to have recognition, which is Mm -hmm. what Nix has been haggling and making deals and trading (laughs) since (laughs) way fucking back when to get Various wait. fleets, what they need, wait, and wait. meet with people, and all that shit. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Char, please tell me you got it because you're Leah. No. Why did you get it, then? Because I've done nothing but help the fleets. And every turn possible. 
And you also gave them a whole new drive system. And more. I've actually given them a lot more than that. Well, still. Okay, consider it this way then, Ogre. One of you has contributed a whole new drive system. And an engine. And new shield tech. Oh, you get you did shield tech too. I knew about the I, engine. I didn't know about the I'm, other one. New engine, new drive, new shield tech. Uh, and I am currently building a new ship for a fleet. Or free. So it's the difference between doing a lot of things to politic your way up and just giving them shit like that. No, no. It's the difference between being told the only way you can get in good with these people is by politicking your way up and then uh, finding out that just throwing research at something and making a couple of the equivalent of bribes works just as well. That's politicking too, Ogre. Not to me. Not Maybe how it's not been to explained you. to me. Then that is a failure of your imagination. I'm sorry. It just is. Like, I, I don't know what else to tell you because I've I've been playing the same politic games you have, and just like him, sometimes just bribing people to where you're going is just the solution. Well, so I would say it's not bribing. It's basically bribing. No. It's not. So, because Aether did it without, yeah, because Aether did it without the aspect or knowledge of getting something in return. It's a gift. Yeah, I've um, actually. That's how I kind of got into. Like, I'm actually, I've got some pretty heavy ties into manufacturing now. Because I've been giving shit away and giving things away at a fraction of the price at best of what it's actually worth. Like, so I, I see what you're, I see where you like how you've gone about it. Yeah. And like I said, that is a form of politicking. Yeah. It's just frustrating. I very much think you you let your frustrations get to you too much, my man. I know. You, like I, you, I, I, yeah. I don't deny it, but it's something I have to regularly work on because I have serious anger issues. And yeah, I have to constantly check myself. Yeah, welcome to the party. I have a habit of punching things. I have to refrain from that. Uh, yeah. Also, I've been working. Remember that time when I tried the entire base against us to save a frigate? Yeah. Good time. That was great. Man, our lives used to be so simple in this game. <laughs> and then <laughs> we get fired from our jobs and go back to that. Look, it's your fault. Okay. I did not think. Anything I did should have led to anything that has since happened, okay? I don't know why absolutely everything had to be on fucking Ares base. Because like, it was the biggest secret's there for some reason. Because it was the biggest research facility off uh, the Crown Jewel. It, though, it still doesn't make sense to me as to why all of it's in this one location. But because Blank's I'm, a jerk. <laughs> I'm just saying, I didn't think that uh, the consequences of doing shit on this base would radiate to the entire empire. All right. <laughs> no, I, I can get you. I can understand that. My only counterpoint is when you decided to go diving into sector 12 by yourself 
without the rest we, of the party. We pointed out and requested that you hold off because we planned to do it after we came back and had a bit more experience and clout to throw around. I would, when I would, I, like, okay. I would like to point out all of Aether's shenanigans and problems stem from this. No, they don't. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. The originating point. <laughs> no, you are blaming me for your actions now. I will not accept that. Their reactions to what you did. No, they weren't. <laughs> no, they were not, sir. The murder of the Leah Council, you exploring Sector 12. Definitely. Definitely. <laughs> all that. Okay, legitimately, I. When I started going into Sector 12, um, I did the front entrance thing, and I went to one department. One. And it was the, the fucking Potentia department, which had E in it. That was the only thing I actually did that caused any of this fucking shit. The, yeah. <laughs> when yeah. we came back to session one day and it was by the way we're being invaded yeah that was a single fucking room of sector 12 one yeah, no no I, I i want to point out that we had been warned that if we even made it into sector 12 by the little questioning that we had done before you joined mm -hmm. That the one place we had to avoid was the Potentia department because oh, yeah. there was that just something bad there. That one piece of information you did not uh, give me, even. <laughs> you didn't. You told me because... not to go in there at all. And I went, well, I'm going to poke around a little bit because I'm my own man, motherfucker. Yes. And, and look one... what happened. The you didn't one... listen. <laughs> The no. one place Here. you were told very specifically never to enter is the one place you didn't even tell me you were yeah. told not to enter. No. This yes. is literally Be the no. first time no. you told me. No, 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 no. Yes. And you know why? Mm -hmm. Because every time we have asked you to not do something, you immediately dove into it dick first screaming, I'm here! <laughs> I have not. <laughs> it took me calling in a fucking favor to not get you to do that immediately to site what? four. No, no. I still did not do it because of you. I talk to people. Other people. Your favors? You did not call any favors any worth on that. I'm going to no, tell you that now. That, that's entirely fair. But it wasn't until after Sector 12 that you started going around and asking everybody questions before diving in dick first. I asked questions about <laughs> Sector 12, too. Like, I asked a bunch of NPCs about Sector 12 and info on them. That's why I went into it. Apparently, you didn't ask the right person which was Major Snips. Yeah. About see. Sector 12. Who did I I don't even remember who all I talked to about Sector 12. I know I talked it's to the Thunderhead about a it. A fucking year or so. Yeah, no, I, I legitimately don't remember everybody I talked to about it. I talked to more than one NPC about Sector 12. I, but I mean... I the one that, well, the one that really pushed me into it was the Thunderhead was the big thing. I mean, we've honestly probably forgotten more about what we have access to. Fucking right. Like we, there's probably so many assets we've forgotten that we own at this point. I mean, surprisingly, other than the bit of political power I have that's primarily useful in the inner ring, everything I have is... Aries base. You know, I barely have anything on actual Aries base. Yeah. Like, it's, all that shit is outside of Aries base now. No, it, it, it's... I have put a ludicrous sum 
into Ares base. You know how we've been on Ares base? Fucking the fighter wing for the last month has been getting 50 million wreck a day. Hey, you want to know what I've been up to? It's very simple. I've been Bloody building God. everything to run a empire-wide department. I've been getting all the administrative staff, all of the logistics staff, everything in place to get the bulk staff in that I've hired. That's what oh, yeah, I've been no. doing. No, I, I've I maneuvered my pos- my way into a position where I could take over Ares as an ace captain, and now because of the way things have gone, I'm having to throw all of my ace authorizations out the window. Yeah. That one... Okay, when I when I started making moves, I didn't expect the uh, Investigator General to literally murder the ace department the moment somebody did anything that affected them. Like, I... That was completely unexpected on my part at least. I don't know about you guys. I anticipated it going wrong, not that. I expected nuclearly it... wrong. Right? Okay, so what I the the level of wrong I expected was there to be a bunch of inter, inter like inside department, like interdepartmental uh, jockeying for position as a new general has to take the place. That's what I expected to go wrong. And that was anticipated as an issue that honestly, I was like, okay, whatever, it'll happen. It's gonna happen anytime a major power like shakeup happens either way. Mm-hmm. But also, he was a puppet, at least by all the information we had, so I was like, you know, let's find out if he actually is. And then instead, everything just explodes, basically. And I'm like, oh. Yeah. That one one I did not see going that No, and that's why I don't hold it against you. I'm just... I'm trying to figure out how to move forward without losing everything. Yeah, welcome to the fucking party. Mm Mm-hmm. Like, I I legitimately, the reason I just kind of talked to Shadow there and was like, yep, I did that. Yep, I did that. Yep. It's because at this point, I'm just like, I'm either going to lose everything or I'm not. Fuck it. Let's see where we go. That's where I'm standing with it at this point. Yeah. Because, like, if I keep worrying about it, it's just uh, its just not worth it. It's not worth trying to strip my, what's left of my bald-ass head's hair out for it. <laughs> Whatever. Did I hear Matt get back finally? Yeah. Yep. So, um, so I, who I'm wants to going... warlord the entirety of the empire? <laughs> That'll solve all of our problems. If there's no empire, the people in the empire can't be mad at us, right? Hey, I could probably live with the fucking Xenos. Right. Okay. Legitimately, I feel like we should just abandon the enigmatic empire, fly out, and build our own country somewhere. And with the hookers and blackjack. Of course. And the F in charge, because I've 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 put all my money on that horse. And all the chemtech blow we could get. Yeah, but my (laughs) horse can leave. We could just take all of our assets and just fuck off. Let's steal Ouroboros Station. Fuck Ouroboros. I'm not moving this. No, this damn station. No. Moving giant thing. No, no. If I was going to take anything, it, it would be Zeus Station after relocating everybody from Ares onto it. And fuck all that. I'm going to build Atlantis from Stargate Atlantis. <laughs> Yes. 
Okay, I say we just become uh, what were the, the Ice Guardians there? Yeah, little gray men. The Ice Guardians? No, 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 no. You can become the Ice Guardians because we have the race. We have to become the Atlanteans since we've been in Atlantis. That's right. The Atlanteans did come before. I think they came before. It's been a bit hot minute since I watched. Actually, uh, they think they came out at the same time because the okay. Atlanteans didn't come from Soul System. Or yeah, like they, our galaxy, they came from Pegasus, and then they came here, and then they went back, and then they came back. Yeah, they built the gates, as far as I recall correctly. Mm-hmm. No, no, the yes, ancients. No, the ancients built the gates initially. The Atlanteans ported here and made use of the gates. Figured out how to make them after the ancients had ascended. Hey, and guess what? They're the same people. Yes, but technically. <laughs> The Atlanteans came after the Ancients' ascension because the Atlanteans are what remained of the Ancients after their ascension. Uh, well, I mean, they came back and they also ascended with the Ancients. Man, it has been a long time <laughs> since I. I'm re that. I'm re going through the series. That's why I said I'm going to build uh, uh, Atlantis. Okay, fair enough. I really <laughs> liked that series. Like, it was really, right. It, it was very I, good. I mean, no, that's. That that's kind of what I expect my base, which is my station, which is being called Zeus Station, to be. It's going to be the new Ares base in orbit, because anticipating a majority of Ares being slagged. No, that's fair. I mean, probably. And if push comes to shove, I will just fucking bail with the station. Honestly... I eh, for the base is uh, my answer for the base is eh. It's probably going to get slagged. We can try to prevent it all we like, but honestly, it's less important than the actual people that are involved with it because the people that are like the actual researchers, the people that do all the actual work, they're much more important than the actual physical structure. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, no, no. It's all I would have. All we would have to do is take the station that has its manufacturing capabilities and travel to the fucking fucking mech warrior side of the galaxy. And lo and behold, we're our own manufacturing wing that all the empires would want to work with. Okay, so based on my knowledge of how the mech warrior universe works, that is a terrible plan. They have a habit of blowing up manufacturing wings. Yeah, repeatedly. We, we just have to blow them up first. They have a habit of blowing up manufacturing wings until they send themselves into the dark ages again. No, that's entirely accurate. But also, they don't have the ability to teleport entire space stations across the galaxy. I don't know how he's changed them, so I don't know if they do or not. Because I know he's changed them, I just don't know how yet. But back to game, I guess we yes. should. Um, yeah, yeah. You were sure. you're in the middle of having a conversation with Shadow. No, well, you, Shadow asked was, where your parents were. Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, and I, if I remember right, my line was, "Why?" I only asked because I'm very overprotective of my parents. After explaining the mind control thing, they already left. When you what? said, I don't know exactly. I'm a little overprotective of them. And they're like, eh, all right. They said their closing remarks and just left. Oh. Th then I'm just going to look at the guy who's in charge of all of his dear auntie's assets now and just be like, so can I buy that elixir thing? Oh, uh, I don't know what to do with it. Uh, how about this? Um... If you can find someone qualified uh, or train them or whatever to take over all of the chem tech business here, uh, I'll just give it to you. One moment. And I'm going to page Mina. Hey, Mina? What's up? Can, can you remote me a call to the Baroness? What am I, AT&T now? Well, otherwise it takes a month. Hmm. 
<laughs> this is Mina routing. One second, please. <laughs> You're amazing, Mina. Thank you. Mm, I know I'm amazing. And uh, the Baroness is going to get a jingle from Mina. It's just... This is, Nin, uh, uh, this is Mina routing. Please hold for a call. Already on the call. And then he gets transferred on. <laughs> yep. He's like, so Baroness, mm. the uh, bitch had a bad encounter with um, the oversight committee. The, the, oh, fuck. So, um, oh, oh gosh, they're not I, there. They they left. How far away? Probably a good distance. They were commenting on they still had people to deal with on the jewel. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, but um, the new holder of all of her um assets and trade holdings and stuff has requested somebody to help manage the um chemtech deals and such uh, and i, I figured that she the, is pretty good at it yeah but i figured that the chemtech department might have somebody that would be good in the interim until we can get somebody properly positioned. Uh, yeah. The only way I'm going to get somebody qualified to want to work out in the outer ring um, is you're going to have to give them a lot of leeway over the labs, such as whoever owns those labs are going to have to give them up to the guy who's going to be running them because that's not a lot of chemtech individuals actually want to venture out into the outer ring because you always are behind the curve or you define the curve uh, for chemtech advancement and since there's the new department and there's not yet uh, yes I got somebody I'll just Look at the dude and be like, so this is what I can get somebody out here in the interim while we get somebody properly trained and set up for it. Mm. And we can get them out here ASAP. No, but, I can't give up the labs because if you find a more permanent replacement, giving up the labs means they own the equipment. No, and no. It, it works best. No, as this person would be temporary, he'd be controlling the labs while he's here. But he, it would be transferred to whoever's in charge. I need somebody to fully understand, analyze the lab, and keep up current production. I don't need somebody turning this into their own personal lab, so to speak. I I know this is a big ask, but I'm willing to... Well, I have a lot of financial assets now. Hey, I'm no longer poor. And um, what you say, Baroness? I'll have to leave somebody behind here and come myself. Otherwise, this isn't going to get resolved within the specific amount of time it's going to take. And if I know anything about Chemtech, and I do, uh, there's going to be some equipment that are on a very specific timetable that need to be, well, looked after every day. And if uh, somebody's not there and a whole day is missed, that's a... A disaster waiting to happen. Yeah, and you probably want to handle one of the bad things that she was doing. Something about filtering a practitioner's soul into chemtech that is to be very, very taboo. Yeah, so... Do you want me to describe what that technique is? No, I would prefer not to know about that particular technique. Okay. As I'll come deal with it. it as it earned the um that department's ire. Yeah, that department would be actually be very uh, well. That, yeah, 
Yeah. No, we don't like that. So, um, you can come out and handle this? I need a ride. Would you be willing, Luna? Mina? God, I'm bad with names. Mina la, Mina la. Depends on how much stuff I'm moving. I'm good for small scale movement up to like a shuttle. I'm moving a person. Just and, her? Uh, and her, well, bag. Her briefcase. I could do that, yeah. If it's, if it's like, I'm, I'm just saying, I'm not like Aether who can move entire starships yeah. at this point. Mostly because I cannot produce the le- required level of energy, not because I don't have the skill. Yeah. You know what I mean? Doable. Yeah. All right. I'll, uh. Yeah. We could do that. We can move her. Sounds good. And it looks at him. Well. The head of the chemtech department is willing to come out and handle it. Yeah. Um, once they're here and everything's established, you can come pick up the uh, effervescence or whatever the fuck it is. I don't know. Means not much to me. May have cool. been uh, the big thing that, um, well, she was proud of, but uh, it's one product. A uh, single dose. A single dose, so I guess use it wisely. Will do. Uh, again, the only thing I do know about it, or Chemtech in general, is do not do it lightly. I don't know if that applies to you, because you're all obviously a qualified professional. But, I mean, she did say a little bit about how dangerous it was. I don't know. Uh, seems kind of sketch to me. I don't know. What do you think? Honestly, I'm thinking of sticking it to the side and studying the balls out of it and seeing if I can make better and safer. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. Thanks. All right, then. Baroness will strut in with her roller bag. Your Baroness has arrived. Show me to the equipment quickly now. I'm gonna hold my hand out like I'm expecting a tip. <laughs> I will hand you a glass of champagne. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> I'm not gonna cool. You know she's an alcoholic, only not an alcoholic because she's a robot. Yep. Hmm. Alcoholic robot. What am I, Bender? Shit. Hmm. She'll actually walk straight toward the bar, kind of go through the equipment, roll through a couple of the stuff, and um, she's going to take the little sample ones. She's going to kind of suck her teeth a little bit to a stringent. Kind of sets this aside. Too salty. Poorly distilled. And this one's sour. That's disgusting. Well, she did an excellent job making useless doses of elixir for anyone to drink. Takes a lot of effort to make an elixir that does nothing. Mm. Yeah. Ugh. She'll drink some more alcohol. Come. And she'll uh, snap out this little tray table that has wheels and set several bottles from behind the uh, <laughs> the bar onto the tray. And the thing follows behind smoothly so it doesn't jostle the, the bottles. Well, come on now. Guess we're following. Hmm. And you kind of walk into through the mansion, basically. Um, and eventually you guys walk into the back of the Chemtech area, and it is pristine chrome and stainless uh, Durasteel. Like, ooh, this is a lab. 
Everything's mm-hmm. nice and labeled. There's even this even follows OSHA regulations if they had them for Chemtech, which they don't yet. But has all the safety rails and all everything's labeled and safely tucked away. There's proper walking areas and loading equipment and people with safety goggles and helmets on. OSHA would be amazed at this location. He would still be disappointed. <laughs> Mostly because there's no actual guidelines for him to nitpick at. <laughs> oh, this is a lot cleaner than I thought. Hmm. Those are the nose. Use it. What do you smell? Eh. Nick will start take a whiff. There's an astringent smell. A lot of cleaning equipment was used. Oh, me. Usually when the equipment is needed to be used, that means there was a spill. And it's like, okay. You go to the more experimental area. This is the industrial you know, production mm-hmm. stuff. And, uh, oh, as she continues to pour herself many, many drinks. And you can help your, yourselves as you want from the bottles. Hmm. Oh, he's sipping. But this is not bad. I can make this work. What's going on. I can make this work. That's the industrial chemtech lab out there. This is the elixir lab. And that side area must be the effervescence lab. Hmm. All right. And, uh,. She kind of pokes her head into the effervescence lab, pulls it back out. Nix, unfortunately, we can't let you. I can't let you in there because of your request. Uh, the machine that I was hoping was not in there is in there. So, uh, how badly does it need to be destroyed? I mean, it's technically not an illegal item, but it should be. Well, we can put in a request to make it so. Most likely, but I'll have to get the um, the regent's approval here. Please don't do that. (laughs) Please act act with the dignity your office deserves. I'm just going to look over at Mina. It's like, Mina. Mina. Yeah, what's up? It's a it's a machine for ripping out the soul and potentia and condensing it into a energy to be consumed in an elixir. Mina opens mouth, closes mouth, opens mouth, closes mouth. Is she was not expecting because you didn't tell her about this machine. She's like, yeah, I'm okay. I apologize for my earlier levity. I would like to look at this machine. And so I know, honestly, I'm going to retract my earlier request so that I don't accidentally go in that direction. But I'm going to look at you, Nix. I'm going to tell you this from personal experience. It's really not hard to avoid ripping people's souls out. It's actually a very difficult process that you have it, to go out of your way for. Put, put, puts hand on shoulder. Not for me. Then I don't know what you meant. Luxury is like, look, do you want to see the damn thing or not? It'll yeah, haunt your nightmares. Another to the tally. Uh, okay, fine. Come on in. She throws the door open, and there is this interesting little uh, machine. It looks like there's this uh, little uh, area to hold and strap down a person. And then it has these two chrome-like um, housings that that uh, hold some sort of weird, short, stumpy, cylindrical thing with a bunch of lenses. Um, at the foot of the machine and one at the head of the machine. It looks very innocuous. Very clean. 
Very high techy looking. Doesn't look menacing at all, other than you know the, the kind of a. How much black ra- black potential is radiating from this thing? About thirty. Yeah, that's about right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's about right. Honestly, uh, mildly less than I expected, which means she hasn't been conducting the experiments that long. Yeah. Um. And look, so he kind of goes over to the machines. Uh, there is a stamp or a sticker on the this machine that is by order of the oversight department. This item is to be transferred. Transferred. Because if you huh? remember, the oversight department are the only ones allowed to rip cultivation out of people down to their you know bare bones. Yeah, me and him had a conversation about that. Mm. Uh, um, or to be destroyed by uh, authorized individuals. Scan gonna... barcode to see if you're authorized. I'll scan the barcode. You're allowed to blow this thing up. <laughs> <laughs> cool, I figured as much. Uh, I am going to make an assessment of the machine for its danger of destruction. Uh, given that it's only 30 black potentia, I think it's pretty safe to get rid of this thing between the two the... you guys can rip out the black potentia but oh, yeah. luxury actually finds the tutorial on its use and has a little show of what it does um and she kind of pauses like i have video if you want to see it i do she'll put it up on a screen and there's a cultivator who's there and you know evelyn's kind of stalking kind of around the periphery of it as the machine kind of lifts up at a 45 degree angle. You have done yourself no service. You lost your citizenship, and it is an honor for you to be here to serve my experiments. I don't get many of you of such quality, though. Perhaps you'll be able to help me find the next step of Chemtech for your sacrifice. And thank you. And then she goes over and pushes the bunch, the the button on the side of the machine and the the short cylinders with all the lenses start to just kind of spin back and forth and kind of what? almost try and find oh, no. a, a configuration. And I then mean, these little beams I kind of reach out and latch more. onto I'm the per- be getting off soon, though. I'm gonna be getting off soon, though. And uh, eventually they all kind of latch in. And he's just like, ah, oh, gosh. Why does it feel like I have, like, fish hooks? Ouch, ouch, ouch. And there's no blood on him. There's no actual physical thing. And the top disc spins hard clockwise. And the bottom disc spins hard clockwise in the opposite direction. And basically rings the guy's soul. Huh. Yeah. It's a rather brutish way to go about it. Yeah. And that guy expires, and it's collected. Hmm. That is Mina's assessment, a rather brutish way to handle it. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, no, that is, that is a brutal way. And it actually... Uh, it, does, it could do it quicker by the machine specs. It could actually be done so quickly, it's painless. Uh, it looks like, There's a reason why there's not enough... Black Potentia, she's harvesting it. Specific flavors of it. She's harvesting and, the Black Potentia? Yeah, that is caused by this type of suffering. And there is a cabinet that when Luxury opens it up, she quickly closes it. You couldn't smell it. You couldn't see it through the cabinet. It's all in there. I'll head over and take a closer look at it to see if it's stuff I can add to my collection. Or well, it's a couple it's hundred bottles, all different different types. Yeah, she's got so many of the stuff you're missing. Cool. I'm going to look at luxury. No complaints with me confiscating this, correct? I don't want anything to do with it. Great. So I'm claiming this. As for that, points at the chair... I'm just going to destroy it now. Yeah. I'm just 
rather than using this was a uh, collective decision we made a long time ago on the jewel to not ever do this because there's precedent and setting a new standard and then there's also the well consequences of what happens down the line this is a newest model it, su it successfully extracts the black potentia out but the older models didn't people were just drinking up black potentia and then that went poorly so never again i thought it was a terrible idea in the first place i'm, I'm just gonna break the the original chair down with nanites yeah you, you break it down it's uh Ugh. Oh gosh. You know, post stripping it a black potentia because I don't I don't need that. Alright. Um you said you had to go? Uh not immediately, but I do want to get off soon ish. You can get off. I'll finish up with these two and we'll end it now. Um, end it after them. Could you then before I get off, could you tell me I, I sent you some stuff of my Potentia uh, purchases. We'll have to go over that. Well, it was, uh, item, it was just item sharing, dodge, and psionics, and then two into reaction. But there are ten levels of it each. Uh, I didn't... I didn't think they'd be too complicated, at least not for anything... Mean, so maybe the psionics. Have time to think over it. Okay. If that's, if that's what you actually want, then yes, that's fine. If that's what the actual thing was for it, yeah. Well, I need to make sure the mechanics are correct. Oh, yeah, fair enough. Yeah, you can take your time on it then. Yeah. I was just going to ask before I got off about it. Um, sure. Other than that, I did want to ask, at least ask after a couple of the other me's, mm -hmm. because I have like one on Mars, for example. Yeah. And I we never heard what was going on in Mars. I sent that there first day of the whole thing. Uh, do you remember anything about going there on purpose? I went to Mars because we had no idea what the situation on Mars was, period, at this point. Mm -hmm. This was going to be the first time one of our team even went to Mars. Um, so no, I was literally heading there to find out what the situation was in the first place. It's going to be a crop problem. A lot of, uh... Buffer crops are not doing so well anymore. I thought Mars was a military base. It is. When you get there, the military is like, it's all clear. We're just having some, you know, some issues with the the, the food here. And there's been no, nobody's tried anything else. Nobody's done anything hinky. No, not, not, not a quick look. Um, probably is a bit of sabotage regarding the food because then they have to pull food away from Enigma to feed the military base. Um, but it does have a surplus of food, so it's not going to do it immediately. But you don't know how long Thunderhead's going to be down, and Thunderhead doesn't really ship through automation. You know, the goods needed to feed Mars because Mars is self-sustaining, and so is Enigma separately. But if the food's failing here, and there's only automation, that means somebody's going to have to make a you know, decision about how much, when. So the things the Thunderhead could do flawlessly, now lesser people are going to have to figure out how to feed Mars. Well, step one is fix the crop problem, I guess. So, that's, so it's pretty much only... Um, really administrative things going on there then is what i'm he really hearing here yeah i mean you got a little bit of water issues uh, a little bit of electrical issues like a lot of pretty important infrastructure just little hiccups here and there like the electric grid not as stable and they're like we don't know why we're looking into it we found some of the old problems fixed them seem to be working fine I mean, the station's old. Uh, Thunderhead isn't manually having to work through these systems. Maybe a lot of the stuff here doesn't do automation. And that's why they're breaking down, because the Thunderhead had to do it manually. And uh, 
yeah, just a lot of little things coming up now. We're fixing them as they come, but got All a little right. problem with the water, a little problem with the air, a little problem with the electricity, a little problem with the gravity. A lot of little problems is what I'm hearing. Yeah. Okay, man, I'm just going to have that me stay there then to help. And okay. get extra personnel in as well. Yeah. Like, if I have to hire just new personnel to help do this, I will. It's, that's fine. Um, Military is cracked down on, on all sources, uh, you know, all stockpiles, all everything. And as they, do. uh, they don't impede your progress. They, if you ask them for help, they're like, sure, whatever. I don't know. I'll work. I'm working directly with them on all of this because. Cool. This is their planet first and foremost. I'm not here to try and subvert that. I'm just trying to help. Um, little bit of it turns out to be people taking advantage of a situation. A lot of it is it's a lot of manual systems that the Thunderhead was directly plugged into with actual cables. And he was manually controlling all this stuff instead of having it than brand new, nice, clean, automated stuff like back on Enigma. An uh, interesting decision. Well, it's the, the planet's covered in this stuff, so it's half automated, but half not automated, which is a problem because the well, automation still works. <laughs> the non-automated stuff is harder to sabotage than the automated stuff too, so that it does yes. make sense. <laughs> Well, like I said, that one's there. That one's doing that. I wanted to ask about that. How are the number base doing? The number bases? Mm, they're kind of confused. Uh, some weird, wispy-headed black person came through, and now a lot of people are missing or in prison. Uh, I'm not explaining normal. this. The Leah department is completely closed on all numbered bases. Cool, and sounds like not my problem. A lot of hmm, they are doing what they're doing. Uh, I will I will let Aether know that the numbered bases, Leah departments have been closed, just so he if he wants to make it his problem, he can. Huh? I don't uh, think Char is paying attention. Oh no, I heard. Okay. okay. Yeah. Uh, um, a lot of a lot of chaos, a lot of uh, you just talking to people, like, look, calm the fuck down. Get a hold of yourself! Yeah, ah. basically. Okay, and the, have the node attacks finally stopped? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, then two of actually, the least. There is uh, uh, two people who you do catch. Well, they're dead, but uh, they did have some insignia. It wasn't a completely black ops. Only the you guys, a lot of your assets traced it way up the chain, and there was somebody in a brightest star uniform, but the, the point tip of the star is face down. That was Neo, wasn't it? Yes, Neo Star. Okay, I th I thought I remembered it right. They had black uniform though, very utilitarian, and the the only thing that gave them away was the insignia, which felt a little fishy to you. Yeah. Which could like be a red herring. It's but... more likely trying to divert attention to I would guess probably True Star there trying to put more heat on Neo. Trying to get all the blame onto them. That's could what it's starting yeah. to feel like. No cultivators though. Well, that's kind of the point now, isn't it? You get non cultivators to do your mm -hmm. work, give them a specific uniform, blame somebody else. Um, that just frees those two up. I do have a me and Muldred's, but we'll have to go over that some other time because they've been working on securing Muldred's. Mm -hmm. Um, that one's doing that. That's doing that. I've got a me Margrave. Where is Margrave currently? It, like, did we move her to the space station, or does she have to stay somewhere? Yeah, close she's to the on the space station because she had to be there to work with my parents about installing Nyeth on the uh, uh, server she, stack that was there. She didn't need to do that because she's working on because she's a toll. She's working specifically on Thunderhead. She can't do both. 
I didn't know if we had moved her to the station as well, though. I'm pretty sure if... we did because it was the safest spot we had. You well, yeah. yes, it's the safest spot, but the toll needs to be accessible to the public. So it does. You have so, to move them. Okay, so we will have to. Okay. Yeah. Okay. What? Is, okay. What is? Let me ask that. What is the requirement for the toll? You just said they have to be accessible by the public. They have to be accessible to the public, um, and it is their job to be the mouthpiece of the enigmatic people to the Thunderhead. Well, so during I... the toll protocol, the Thunderhead has one conscious outlet to the outside world while whatever's happening. Well, I does that mean we should bring her to Enigma then? It's up to you. Doesn't matter where you put her, just as long as the at least a third of the population can reach them within a decent amount of travel. So anywhere within the outer ring, inner ring, or the jewel, yeah. So keeping her on Ares would be safe because that would qualify as keeping her within the inner ring and near Yeah, the but jewel. you're gonna get a huge amount of traffic. Yeah, that's why I'm thinking Spectrum does have a site that you guys can have her at. Um it is in the inner ring, so it's a little bit more fair for everyone. I equal travel distance. Have a great idea. I hate it already. Please continue. <laughs> the frontier. The frontier. Yeah. Oh, I could bring it to the shop shop. I say we could have the frontier, because guess what? Mm -hmm. That has majority of our forces. So that means they have over a third. Well, yep. How heavily populated is Enigma compared to the outer to the frontier? Um, so over the years and years and years. Um there's been a lot of people moved every year off of Enigma. A lot of people have died. Enigma still has the majority of the population by a huge sum. They have billions of people there. Hmm. Uh, um, I hear a butt but, coming. Yeah. Outer Ring is the second most. Frontier has the third most because it's military. And Inner Ring actually has the least people. I... What... Do we have any assets? No, uh, the chop shot's outer ring, isn't it? It is, yes. Do we have any anything at all in the inner ring, or not the inner ring? The, the frontier. Uh, the frontier. I can probably put somebody on it. I'm asking if we have them currently. Maybe, maybe. No. Yeah, the no. frontier has been kind of. Uh, let's not touch that with a stick. Because it's all fleet power. There's no. That's right. It's all the fleets. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's all no, that's power. a terrible idea. We're just going to put her in the hands of the fleets then. Right. But we can put her in the hands of one particular fleet that Which we can one? have. I don't know yet. Because we can put her in Ea's fleets. Ea's no, done. They've, they've, she's not on the frontier anymore. Yeah. Uh, oh, that's right. Um, hmm. Hmm. The rem remnants of Ea's fleet is actually. At Ares. The rest yeah. of it are as broken scrap. Uh, no, we're not going to be bringing her to the frontier because we don't have anybody we can trust to put her with out there. Uh, if you want, you can potentially borrow a spectrum site in the inner ring and or in the outer ring. They have plenty. And then mm. label it as the Regency. Oh, have them transfer something over, basically? Yeah. to the Regency, and you can basically be like, welcome to the Regency. How can we assist you? It's like, I need to speak to the toll. One moment, please. Yeah, is there somewhere, like, fairly... I want to pick a place that doesn't have normal traffic so that any traffic coming in is specifically for this. Do they have anywhere like that? That mm -hmm. we can use. They have a uh, Lee enabled relay transit hub. Uh, it's kind of a way station mm -hmm. in between the outer ring and the jewel. We'll uh, do that. We'll use a lot that. of Atlas Foundation stuff goes through that way. That way point. That actually is just a bonus because yes, I know the Atlas Foundation. We probably can't fully trust, but. 
way too large. But the fact that they go through there very often means that it is a regular transport lane as it stands. Hmm. But Oh, a communication you know hyper realized spot. So people, you can... know what? I'm overthinking this. We're just going to put them there. We're just going to put her there because otherwise I'm going to just gonna keep overthinking it when really that's probably the best spot we have available. Um, can I course a fleet without Leah enabled drives to be transferred over there? as a temporary measure by like Leah personnel to act as guards for the location. Um, is that possible? Yeah, no, they're, they kind of, the, they're the individual involved is that same, uh, unknown, uh, spectrum guy that you met all the way at that dinner. Mm -hmm. And, uh, Yes, there, there is a new resource made available to him, his surprise, by the individual he spoke to earlier yesterday, uh, in case they need a private uh, military asset to protect or attack a specific location or target. Could you translate to that to non clandestine? Because my brain's a little fried uh, right now. The oversight department gave me a shadow fleet made entirely of spectrum technology with cutting edge heck that we don't even. Um, it belongs to the oversight committee. They gave it to me. That works. That actually works fine because at least the oversight committee is invested in making sure the toll goes through. Mm, yeah. We're going to, I'm extending trust to the oversight committee because I don't have a choice and I need a fleet. Yeah, we'll, we'll, I'll, I'll do that. I'll get, Margrave onto that. We'll have a bunch of personnel for guarding her, of course. Um, there is a uh, human K that reaches out to you, and there is a kind of a wispy, shadowy person in a uniform. It's not shadow, much more subdued, the, the darkness. Mm -hmm. And there is a, so a series of robots kind of at the, the, that look similar to the guards that they brought with them. And they're all at the different stations of this very sleek fucking looking ship. You request uh, assets from the Overcast fleet? Uh, I will give them the mission parameters where it's like, we're looking for assets to protect the toll at a specific location to ensure nobody attempts to harm, kidnap, or otherwise deter them from their duties. A noble mission. We will be right there. And then there's Kind of a distortion on the comms, and then it snaps back. We are at the location now. Great. I'll get Margrave over there. And you know what, Matt? I I haven't forgotten what you said about having more spine runners is helpful in this situation mm -hmm. because the Thunderhead needs help. So yeah. I'm going to transfer the thun the uh, the uh, the spine runners as well. Cool. And they'll have that. I'll have a Mina there. Oh, I already have a Mina with Margrave. Yeah. So the Mina with Margrave is going to be in charge of that locale and for making sure the. In fact, she'll directly help with the whole uh, process too. She's. I mean, why not? Um, uh, it'll be a waste otherwise. Yeah. So. Uh... The oversight department had a private fleet. That's fun. That's not surprising. Not not even a little. That's like that's some shady shit. They're shady shit. I mean, they're made of shadows. Look at them. Sure. Um, yeah, that's that's handled. Uh, Anything else you want to handle before you go? Still going to be on the chat. chat. I'm just going over my list. But I think Yeah. 
Yeah, I think that we're good for now. Anything else I'll have to just deal with later. Because anything else is longer RP stuff. Did you want so. to check the thing that you were given? Yes, that I was trying to remember. What did... Because he also gave me a number to call because he had an assistant that was going to give me basically going to have me inherit all of his shit. Uh, the data pad you were given is, is kind of a smaller one. Uh, it plays a little uh, at the end of a sentencing mm-hmm. for uh, O2 with Shadow there with the guards. He's kind of sitting in his seat. He's like, therefore, by the powers vested in me, you are to be stripped of your position cultivation if you have any, all assets, all privileges, access codes, etc. And you are now retired. And he kind of closes his eyes waiting for the verdict. You may live out the rest of your life here without further stim treatments to prolong it on the jewel that is known as Enigma as a normal civilian. You may never take a Thunderhead office position anywhere. Happy retirement. You are free to go. Yeah, he he, he now is actually retired. I'm I'm sorry. The phrasing on that was he's not allowed to take a thunderhead position. Correct? Yes. That was the stipulation. He's not allowed to be take any position in the Thunderhead or its constituent uh, affiliated organizations. Uh, but technically, I'm the wondering. Agency is like. Mm. I was just yes. The thought that was just happening in my head was, I wonder if I can just hire him. Then you might be able to contract him, but you, you don't know. You don't know. I might contract him. What's in? What is the rest of this before I go? Before uh, I go scheming. Uh, that was it. the The data pad. It just has the um, his resource uh, communication uh, numbers specifically for all the people that work for him and their profiles on it. Uh, very little on that data pad, other than just the contact stuff. Uh, but the leather pouch attached to the back of it. Um, a little little pop strap. Mm-hmm. Um, that has a set of keys that are not labeled. Oh, the fucking key game. They're all, all different right. colors. They all have different symbols on them. So they're not officially labeled. They all have different key heads. Ugh. Is his contact information like his? Like... Yeah, it's in, it's in there. Cool. Fuck it. He's going to get a message. Mm. How would you like to be a contractor for the Regency? I don't know. Uh, that's Is that a loophole? Is that pushing our luck? That the Regency doesn't work for the Thunderhead. It works for his heir, specifically. But is that, we are not... is that too attached? Is that not far enough removed? I don't fucking know. The Oversight Committee has already acknowledged they don't really have authority over the Regency part of my title. Mm. Are you sure? Because the Oversight Department can't strip you of your... Uh... The answer he gets back is, they told me as soon as my uh, Regent position ends, I am stripped of everything. Because until then, they can't. You too? Damn. They're really cracking down on the investigator to- like you're like I don't think there's gonna be much left at the helm after they're done. I'm unless, honestly kind of worried. Unless of course I do something to balance the scales. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah okay. Yeah, you know the deal. Yeah, yeah, that one. Okay. Yeah, well, putting the fear of God into me. What I'll do is I'll answer any questions. I won't work for you directly, but you can always reach out to me, and we can just have a civil chat. Tell you what. 
the contract I'm offering you Mm -hmm. is an advisory position. Purely advisory. Nothing else. There's no money exchange. There's just you and me chatting. I advise with opinions of stuff. Yeah. Sure. As a private citizen. A private concerned citizen. Oh, yes. I am much more open to concerned citizens' info than people seem to think. Everybody just assumes I don't want to talk to people. It's the Take air you give off. Apparently. that stance until you start getting harangued by everyone and everything. I think you're actually better equipped for that because there's multiple you and you actually have a um, the processing speed for that. But when you have to deal with Hell, even if it's just several hundred people a day. I'll just I'll just put the other me onto it for answering the calls. Mm-hmm. I'm sure Mila would be absolutely love to talk to people all day. Well. You can't disagree. Uh, Don't bother. No, so. I can disagree. But not disagree with the fact that she wouldn't enjoy it, but I disagree with doing that it. It would be good. I didn't say it would be good. Oh, well. Then I am corrected. So, uh, yeah. We'll talk. Yeah. Yeah, we will. Um, I will. I do actually have stuff to talk to him about, but I'll do it. Because, like, legitimately, my I, I've been slowly having a one of those headaches that starts to make you sweat building. So I'm gonna hop off and go, probably pass the fuck out. Um, I'll talk to you later about other stuff and stuff and words when my brain's working. Good night. Yep, yep. Night. Ah. I felt like I missed so much of the session today. Kind of feel the same way. But I had school and a test to do. And things got in the way this morning, so. Yeah. I was anticipating us starting at the same time. But so what do you guys want to do? Well, Ethan uh-huh. needs to check on the ships to see how they're going because he's refusing to lose a single one. Uh, because I don't know if our saboteurs have been caught yet. Probably not. Um, no, doesn't look like anything's wrong with the ships. Mm. None of the computational engines are bad. None of the, hmm. The energy load calibration is empty which is bad, but there's no gem in the first place, the pearl. So there's mm-hmm. nothing to calibrate in the first place. So it's all a default setting. So right. it looked like a, a red flag actually really wasn't. So, cause they don't have any information on the pearl. So it's just sitting there like, is it useful? Is it not? I mean, if those aren't calibrated, no one's making shit for a jump. Yes. And we're going to then go over, like, uh, the jumps for, like, coding jumps. We're just actually going to go for the coding of the entire ships, period. There is a couple things that you do find. A little bit of mis... uh, Mislabel on some wiring... A uh, couple bit of code that could have been a little less sloppy. But nothing that would force a misjump. That's all ironclad. In fact, 
Oh. Those jump systems are actually hard coded. It's firmware. What? I have an idea for you that's something you would think about. Oh. It may not be the jump systems itself. It may be the jump coordinates. Because if they're made to jump and they pop out and there's a rock in their hull and it causes them to detonate. And uh, I mean, so the, he was very specific that they're, oh, they said there's going to be a great disaster. Mm. Yeah, if there's a shift in what areas are qualified as safe within the systems. That's that could be one variant, but usually the computers would verify pre-jump. Yeah. There's also the fact of are the verification checks already set for accommodating for the additional parameters that need to be done with the new drive? That's because a good if question. one jumps because if one jumps into an area where one just recently jumped into the tail jumps as it were, like is standard. Actually, now that you're thinking about it, uh, you're looking through, and you know what really comes to mind? You know who you helped pave the way for the future of this department and this project? Mm. Who gave their life in the service of the Leah department? Oh, that's right, Monkey Man. Leroy. Leroy. You learned one of the more valuable lessons regarding this project from him. The compatibility issue with the jump system with the new tech. Most of the time when you do a ship jump, uh, the ships, all of the ship's calculations from where they're going, each ship does it its own, hey, this is all me. But once mm -hmm. that's done, it all links up to the main ship, the carrier, to tell everyone where to go and where to get out. So there's no mix-up. Mm -hmm. It's off of old systems, off of old energy requirement calculations, off of the unstable LEA generator technology. Mm -hmm. The values are different. Mm. It's not somebody sabotaging it. It's just people can't, they just don't know. Oh, they don't know that it's incompatible just slightly because the Leo Pro technology uses true Leo values, not what point one percent. Yes, flaw in it, and it works with the Leo Soul technology because there's just enough flux because it's a soul, and it's just enough from this dimension that that calculation is correct. But with pure Leia technology from the Pearl technology using the true Leia uh, actual number, the correct number, Bill Tech doesn't work. And nobody knows but you that the Leia number is wrong. I'm like, I don't know, there in the middle of the ship, and like, I figured it out. God damn it. That's what I get. It wasn't that there was a saboteur. I was my own be... saboteur. Mm -hmm. That was the great disaster. <laughs> you guys oh, were my. looking for the enemy. There wasn't one. But there was ignorance. Look at this enemy. Well, and also, people don't know that you used the original, the true number of it. True. Uh, and... and no one knows that the true number is, well, the number they're using is wrong. Just, just so small, the difference. Difference. But when making a jump, those ships are never coming back. Uh, those ships like... are jumping directly into the Phazon dimension, probably right into a side of a Phazon continent. Yeah, no. I'm like, ah, I know it's wrong. None of power. And not correct calculations. Right. So, so the Leah Pearl is just off enough that when the ship goes, I need to draw this much power to make a jump, even safely it's not enough that carrier especially is probably it's not going to make it and since it's the one in charge of the collective fleet jump 
mm-hmm. it brings all the ships with them. Mm. So we're going to go. Oh yeah, it's not good. This is this is super oh. not good. Yeah. Uh, and so I'm like, hmm, easy fix. So easy fix. We're going to go in and we're going to change the number calculation, and then we're going to go find the one in charge of dealing with jump, along with the captain. Um, we'll take you just gotta fix it. Period, or are you going to have a special box that the that people have to install along with the new upgrade? Hmm. Depends on that's how many what... different parts you want. Yeah, that's the problem. I don't want too many moving parts because it can become a problem. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, this course, could be a big problem. Yeah, especially with so many moving parts. What we can do is just tell them, hey, here's the new executable formula that your ships need to calculate for. And it's just a simple upload. The problem with the ships is they have a hardware or firmware etch program into a data crystal. Like, they're not allowing the computer to actually run an actual equation. It follows an equation off of an etched Leah crystal. Oh, I mean, okay, at that point, you just have to replace the Leah crystal. True, but it's so much other stuff involved too like you have to rip out a lot of the guts yeah and the other parts that do the constituent calculations and you have to basically replace the entire cpu bank yeah because they use hard edge stuff and then it's gonna like you technically could make a bypass you'd have to install a new drive in each of the computer banks that basically just replaces the leah number Mm -hmm. with the correct leah number and you will have to replace the the, uh, the drive crystal. Yeah. So no matter what, we have to replace the drive crystal and we have to replace the banks. Or just add a new one that makes a correction. But if you really want to not like put a Band-Aid on this... No, we're not going to put a Band-Aid on this. You, have, you yeah. have to overhaul the entire drive system. Yep, no. Nope. I'm um, just going to well, like... They're in a build doc for a reason. <laughs> yep. Well, the, the, everything has a crystal code in there like it's all etched in crystal so that mm. it can't be modified by external forces yeah so uh what we're gonna do is we're gonna have people come in we're gonna move the drives and we're gonna be like all right i figured out what the problem was and we are fixing it jesus <laughs> it was right <laughs> this could have been a disaster mm-hmm. and the problem was you are the problem why is so much fucking surprise? You're good at math. You're so good at math, this dimension can't keep up. So it's yep. like, yep. I don't mm. know what to do with it. <laughs> no, 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 no. It was the enemy. The enemy's ignorance. And so, yeah, no, that will be shoved out. And we're going to start replacing those. I'm like, well, what do we do with these? Just set them on fire? Put them in a no, Ouroboros will recycle all of them that you pull out. and Because Ouroboros is very good at repurposing technology like this. Good. Yeah. Um, so, uh, I'll apologize to the uh, fleet admirals that there will be another delay as we replace their technology again. They're fine with it. They don't really have a berth at the moment. Mm-hmm. Which is they don't have a deployment. And well, the extra attention means you actually care. Because mm-hmm. you could have just left it. Yeah. And the fact yeah. that they get the new tech uh really matters to these guys. So they don't mind waiting. It's not like they're going anywhere. Yeah. Uh-huh. In fact that one ship you're working on, that uh that frigate. Mm-hmm. They're like, do your worst. But I love messing with frigates. Rip its guts out. Make other modifications if you need. Install new tech if you want. Like the uh, Pelostas, uh, he's just like, yeah. Make that be your your test ship. And then we're gonna put on. Uh, since it's gonna be the test ship, we're also gonna put on the new Leah reactive shielding. Okay. 
<laughs> um. uh, the reactive shielding requires a lot of extra pearls. Holy crap, does that require a lot of extra pearls. Mm -hmm. And these are the not rechargeable kind, where if it's used, it jumps to the empty pearls and recharges. Yeah. Now, this is a... <laughs> the pearls need to be uh, dumped, replaced after. Yeah, but again, a fire. but again, this is these are emergency shields, so um, they should be good. If you want some shielding to test, I could always use a ship to test my shielding on. Uh, I mean, I already built a reactive shielding. Uh, they're going to have their first test here soon because they're going to get a fly out there and take a uh, uh, what are my calculations? We're going to fire one of the Ouroboros main cannons at them. That would be fun. And either it blows the smithereens or the reactive shield stops it. Well, the uh... <laughs> Ouroboros is up for it. Uh, it will take two weeks to refit that ship. Hey, they're the on shielding and all the other stuff. Hey, all of them are getting the reactive shielding refits. Because that's what I promised him. Yeah. But this one ship will take two weeks to refit it enough to. Uh... And it's with all hands on deck. Mm hmm. Yep. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so uh, now that I caught my problem, hmm, I helped. <laughs> yes, uh, <laughs> I'm just happy that I was able to help with something that wasn't politics. No, that's fair. Just remember Leroy. What a fucking <laughs> statue for that man. Yes, poor Leroy. The lessons learned <laughs> from poor Leroy. Um, uh, he was so happy to to, to be just <laughs> part of it. And you never, you'll never see him again. Yep. Uh, what we will do though is um. I'm going to take our poor, broken Mia souls and uh, just ripped out from them. Oh, no, because they didn't have any engines. That's right. Yeah. They were waiting. Uh, so, yeah, no, we're just going to... I'm trying to think what Aether does after this. He is going to go hang out in the ship's lounge. Like, with all, like, the ship captains and stuff. Hmm? And we're yeah, it's, uh, there's a, that place is filled always. Mm. I'll uh, I'll flash my pin to get in, and um, let's kind of mingle and see what people are doing, and hear if there's any rumors going about uh, with the uh, brightest star. Um, not really any normal rumors, just. You know, Brightest Star is kind of a cautionary tale on Ouroboros. Mm -hmm. It's a uh, don't fuck with fleet power. And there's a lot of fleet people in the officer's lounge. Uh, whether it's, you know, marine captains or um, engineers, technicians, soldiers, actual crew. But, you know, they're all heads of their field. And, uh, yeah, they're kind of smug if it's brought up. But it's also kind of like, yeah, well, that's what you get. So. Mm. No, let, me, let me make a roll on the side. Mm. Um. There is a uh, kind of a rumor, a little bit of a gripe from one of the uh, 
captains that it's a shame really that the individuals who are actually going to get this new tech first is actually the Atlas Foundation, not our venerable fleets, even the standby ones. Uh, it's always the civvy sector that gets it first, doesn't it, Just? Yeah. I hear that the uh, the new drive system and uh, the new power source have been exclusively kind of well brought together on Ouroboros, but well, it looks like Atlas Foundation jumped to the head of the line again. Looks like they're going to be testing the new ship jumps with the new system and power source within a couple weeks. So, well, fuck us, right? Well, I'm down. Lean back and like, what do you mean they're going to get? How do they jump to the front? Atlas Foundation always fucking shoves their way to the front. Damn, you are like blue. Holy crap, you're blue. Wow. Yeah, I'm blue. Huh. But yeah, no, uh, look, if there's ship upgrades, especially if it's not military based, it's more about speed of movement or sensor systems or any technology that is not weaponry, even if it's ship hull, Alice Foundation always seems to fucking get it first. Is it because they are. No, they're just. Uh... They're basically a fleet in of themselves. They don't have any guns on their vessels. Nothing big. Mostly but they, point defense for asteroids. But they do good transportation, right? Yeah. They're, they move goods. That's what they do. That's all they do. But they always get the new tech everywhere. Doesn't matter what part of the Enigmatic Empire. Uh, this foundation's there first. They get the upgrades. <sighs> I mean, I don't know. I feel like the ones driving the supply chain to everywhere should probably be the first ones to get the upgrades. Uh, Sure. But the Atlas Foundation, they fucking think themselves clever. They think themselves smarter most of the time than the very designers who make the stuff. And uh, honestly... I don't think their arrogance has been uh, as big as it is now. I don't think like they're basically giant ego. No, they're unfucking touchable. Even the other fleets don't fuck with them because they won't deliver you supplies on time. And they think they have some of the best and smartest and brightest people, so that when a new technology rolls out and they think they understand it, they overhaul it to all ships in the area and just go with it. I mean, but if you think about it like this, once the new drive technology comes in, then they can't say, oh, well, we won't make it in time. Yeah, I know, but that's not the point. Like, oh? You're, you're that blue guy. The, I am a blue guy. The, 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 the Leah guy. Yeah. Do us all a favor. Oh? Quick the Atlas people. They're probably going to be f- dicking around with your tech. It's your tech, right? You're the you're the yeah. blue guy, the guy who made the stuff. Yeah. And the other guys are like, "How the fuck do you know that?" Really? And that guy is in our bar talking to us. And he's like, he gives them a look like, "Is there anyone else that color, shape, and blue energy beings? Have you not kept up on the news?" <laughs> kind of looks at his his compatriots like, "Are you stupid?" Which is blind, ignorant. The look on his face is like, "I'm disappointed in all of you." How the fuck? <laughs> do you not? How do you not know essential personnel who are leading the technology? Never mind. Fuck those. Disappointment is strong <laughs> with his friends. Check with the Atlas Foundation people. They're probably gonna get their hands on your tech, one way or another. They're gonna install it. Think they really know it, and then. Uh, well, you know what? Maybe don't. Let them bite the bullet on that one. And then we as the fleet will learn, and they can be the guinea pigs for once. No, that's fair. Because they always throw the in, the unsure technology at the fleets for us to try and bumblefuck our way through before we figure a solution, and they, well, take it. 
I mean, it'll be very interesting as um, they can't actually make it, so. Oh, they, I mean, word on the street is, and I do know, that the, uh, the new energy source is being produced right here on station. Oh, no, it is, but. Uh, right, they're going to get their hands on the first product, guaranteed. Really? They, all, hmm. they always pull this shit, always pull this shit. Hmm. Hmm. They always do it, and, and it's all logical. It makes sense because I mean they're the guys who move supplies and and people, and they they make the they are the lifeblood of the uh, the beating heart of the empire that moves all the stuff everywhere it needs to go. And it'll sound like you're doing the empire a favor. Maybe you are. I don't know. That's that's definitely me having an opinion. That is me griping. That is also me being a little bitter. Mm, that they always get better service and they think you're better than people who defend them. Uh, they're they at least understand. somewhat respectable. Uh, they wouldn't be doing what they do with you know full autonomy without people fuck with them um, if they weren't good at politicking and saying the right things and you know sticking to their lane when they have to and they, they play the game they're really good at it no one really hates them they're very necessary I'm just sick and tired of them always getting what they get first you mm. know and of course they don't really share it like their drive tech doesn't mm. use the assaults of course. This requires almost a hundred quantum computers. <laughs> and then again, who wants who has room for a hundred quantum computers on an actual ship? Civilian ships that don't come under fire. Exactly. So because I guarantee you, you take a hard hit and those computers, well, they need to be synced. And if a single one of them goes off, well, you might be not looking at the right calculation anymore. Well, in that case, I think I'll go talk to the Atlas Foundation then. Yeah. I'm gonna stand up. I want to make my way to the Atlas Foundation uh, shop while looking at all the current Leo records for production of the Leo of yeah, where the who's Atlas to get it first. Yeah. Um, Atlas Foundation is earmarked to get all of the new drive systems first. On mm. unless you personally intercede and start doing upgrades to other ships, no, across the board, they are getting all of the goodies first. Interesting. That mm. considering the time it takes to install the drives and produce the pearls and everything, that is going to prevent us from the reason we did this of getting a another fleet possibly to Ares. No, oh, yes, this is true. I'm just gonna stop and I'm gonna be kind of looking at this. Um, and I'm gonna go talk to the uh, Atlas Foundation. Uh, do you want to go to the headquarters? Because they have a headquarters here. Or do you want to go to... I don't know. Just pick a guy? Oh, no. We're going to go to the headquarters to speak to the first captain that's going to be receiving this. Okay. Headquarters. You know, make the reception. They're very cheery. Welcome to the Atlas Foundation headquarters. Or Boris Branch. How can I help you? Hi there. My name is Aether. I was wondering if I can speak to Captain. I'm going to look up their... Uh, the captaincy that would be, re be re first to receive the new upgrades. Oh, sure. Let me see if he's available. It looks like he is. Um, how much time do you have to wait? I mean, we can get to, I think he's available in the next 10 to 15 minutes. I can wait for 10 to 15 minutes to talk. Oh, that's wonderful. Did you want to speak to any of the other staff in the meantime? Mm hmm. 
No, I don't. But I do not mind waiting around and seeing what's going on. Oh, of course. We have an obser- observational deck that you can look at the, uh, um, well, the shipyard is kind of in a very scenic view. I would enjoy that very much. There is an actual observation deck that leads you to, and it's this beautiful panoramic window that lets you see ships all across the ring. Ah, in different good. stages, docked, all the life kind of thrumming through Ouroboros. It's pretty fucking cool. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to admire the view. And the captain will actually join you at the observation deck. He comes down, hands you a kind of a little bit of electrically charged drink. Mm. And uh, it's like, pleasure to meet you. Pleasure to meet you as well, Captain. I see you're the first in line already to get the new Lega drives. Yeah, that's what headquarters told me. Uh, I am to drop all of my current uh, transports. Um, and we're going to get a complete overhaul. The entire um, computational drive system is going to be ripped out, and the new one's going to be installed with the new power source. With uh, uh, I don't know how they're going to do it within two weeks, but that's what they said. Oh, well, it to is my surprise. Department. We can get it done. I've always had trust in the department. Yes. Unfortunately, the problem does come up. Uh, huh. I am needing a fleet to come back to Ares Base to help defend it. That was nope, the I mean, for that's not up to me to, to decide that or not. And that's hell. You have to go to the headquarters. They're the ones who assign who gets what when. I'm just mm-hmm. captain. I don't. Uh, I don't have that type of sway because mm-hmm. if to get that type of sway, you would have to convince Ouroboros itself and all of its administration staff. You'd have to go through the lead department uh, and the amount of red hoops and power required. I, I could touch that. I don't even want to try and touch that because I'm not dealing with fleet admirals. That is a politic. I want to stay out of. Oh, I very much agree with that. Yeah. So, but, uh, color of my surprise when headquarters said you are uh, grounded until the new upgrade's done and you're going to be testing it for us along with several other captains. And, uh, yeah. Of course. And the big thing is because you're the one being asked to field test it for the Atlas Department, I was willing to come and talk to you personally. Sure. Because at this point, I want to see if I'm having, if I put you sidelined until I can get the fleets done first, would oh, you gosh. be begrudging of me? Look, I don't, I just captain the ship. I'm not gonna, I got no say in the upgrades because the ship is not mine. It's my job to pilot or to you know be the captain of it. But that's the thing with Atlas Foundation ships: only the oldest captains actually own their ve- their their vessels. I'm mm-hmm. I'm barely going on sixty three, and they don't mm-hmm. do the uh, pilot to own policy s- since Stormfront. I can uh, imagine. Yeah, once the Thunderhead came out, that policy went away. Uh, but if, if you were currently in, you know, under that Stormfront clause, you got to still do it. But the new captains, uh, the Foundation owns the ship through and through. And it's, uh, well, it's your job just to captain it. So um, if I don't course. get the upgrade, well, it's, that's headquarters problem. I see. It's a ship that's not moving gear it's not moving assets it's not moving stuff you know i i mean i am very clearly aware of that but as you were the captain i know of how captains are about their ships so i wanted to make sure i was overstepping my bounds with you Nah, it's you don't need to worry about it man 
tech is tech, and uh, it's not really my ship. So that's the kind of the, the thing with the new vessels. Uh, mm. The newer captains, we can be assigned to any ship at any time. And we don't really have a problem with it because we're not really attached to our ships like the old captains are because they own the damn things. I see. So, hey, I'm part of the new gen. Or the new... Well, new or young. The new decision. So if you run into one of the old captains, oh, you're going to have a problem. Mm. I can't give a shit. Uh, I'll probably just be assigned a new new vessel to captain in the meantime while the one I was assigned is down for uh, upgrades and maintenance. Understood. And then I just have another question. Um, how is Atlas's feelings on the Brightest Star scenario going on? I couldn't say for the company. Like I have my own opinion, but it does not in any way reflect what the company feels and is their stance or you know all that legal mumbo jumbo. Kind of ambivalent. I know something's weird going on because uh, I don't know if anyone's noticed, but they kind of got a lot of weird conflict and tension going on within the organization. I've kind of seen that. You know, when I was just starting the captain with the Atlas Foundation, there's factions. And uh, it's really subtle shit, you know? It's like the pin being worn a different, you know, orientation or like a, a different, like a little pin here or there that's extra, that's not necessary, or like a... It's always something small, you know, to show your faction allegiance within the organization. And uh, I don't think... Brightest right Star is all put together like they like to pretend to be, you know? That's just my conjecture, because some of those fuckers, they're really nice people, and then there's sometimes they're just, they're hard to deal with, you know? almost had Very my ship so. held up at one point and forced to transport stuff before Thunderhead agents came in, and those guys left very quickly. Like, and the pins are always, uh, I almost have a, he kind of pulls out his little leather-bound notebook with an actual pencil and paper. Mm -hmm. I actually wrote this down, and he actually shows the the different pin orientations for the different you know, supposed factions he thinks. So it's the he's noticed it, but he doesn't get the names for the the different brightest star factions. Hmm. And you can kind of tell by how they act, and you know which pin, and I, it's corroborated it ever since. So if it's hmm. the, the the big starburst is face downwards, you got some really militant nice. extreme dudes. No funny business, like. Oh yeah, no, that should be the Neo Stars. Oh, okay, they got a fucking name. Right? Kind of writes it down. And you got the guys with the 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 starburst, the long starburst facing outwards. Uh, uh they're pretty cool. They're pretty chill. Uh, yeah, they do everything that, by the regs. I don't really have a problem with them. Yeah, that is the original Bright Star faction. Okay. And then I got the ones with the, the starburst, the long starburst ray facing inwards. Uh, I don't really got a grip on those guys. Uh, they're always big, or they always have some sort of menace, like menacing, like, or. Uh, uh, cultivators, I believe. Uh, they're not cultivators, actually. Uh, so I was right. Yes! Oh. I've been I've been troubling over this for over twenty years. Yes, and it's just they have recently become a problem for me. I'm mm. just wondering, can you take a look, look at this list, and I'm going to show them the list of all the captains that are supposed to get upgrades. Do you notice that any of them will willingly participate with uh, these two factions, the Brightest Star? Joe, there, he's a big. Brightest Star supporter. I don't know which part of Brightest Star. This Neo Star, True Star, Brightest Star stuff. But uh, he definitely wears their pin. Uh, his when he, I mean, he, he's older than me. His pin was facing outwards, which is why I never really said anything. But you know, it's not so hard to like turn it ninety degrees. Yes. So, uh, yeah. 
Um, and he kind of points out six different captains that might be sympathetic or might be on board with Brightest Star. Um, right. But they're all ridiculously loyal to Atlas Foundation, even though they're all transient captains, which is the ones that don't own their ships. Um, but they're not going to betray Atlas Foundation, but if they have open space on their vessel and somebody from Brightest Star comes over and asks if they can kind of squeeze this in to the open space to have it moved, they're not going to say no. Because, you know, that's a, you know, that's kind of their side, you know? Mm -hmm. And sometimes they don't tell anyone. Sure, it has to get scanned, and that scan goes in, but that's a lot of data, you know? As long of as it's course. properly moved and there's not a problem in transit, a lot of no the goods just get questions. moved. Yeah, a lot of the goods get moved, and very quickly. You've seen how efficient it is at an Atlas Foundation dockyard. Mm -hmm. Shit gets in and out of that vessel so fast. I mean, with such precision, a lot of people don't really look too hard, you know? It's just move the goods where they're supposed to go. Me. Understood. You've been very helpful for this. Uh, I will say we're not allowed to to move munitions. Of course. Yeah. So it's always some sort of tech, and it has to be properly scanned, because otherwise we can't move it. Now I have a question. Uh. I recently had some people try and steal some tech. Well, that's treason. Yes. Well, I mean, if it's Thunderhead stuff, then it is for the department. That's yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, that's 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 a different breed of treason. Holy crap! That's uh, you yes. don't even get to be a D class person. No, that's you get spaced. And who's stupid enough to steal from the Leah department? Right, Star. <laughs> no. Oh, come on! Really? Mm, we think one of their factions is, yes. Well, I hope you get him. So do I. Um, speaking of which, I want to give him the name of the captain. Uh, we're going to do some cross-referencing. The name of the captain versus known... Let's see if he's a known uh, Red Star sympathizer. Okay. Uh, basically, yeah, that's what I'm asking. Because uh, we have the ship number, we just don't know who the captain was. Um, which ships are you cross-referencing? The Atlas ship that transported my uh, schematics. Um, that one's neutral. That one has no affiliation mm. with Brightest Star. But, so. as you're going through all of them, and he's like, oh, I know that guy. He's a, a, he's a ship owner. Oh, really? Uh... It's actually not the ship you expect. It's the one berthed at Ares base. It's that one you guys actually had wine and dined with. You guys met in person. Yes. He uh, is a and then you run through it in your mind. Uh, that's a two-star guy. He's a uh, two-star factionist. Because you didn't realize, you don't remember it here. Because it was such a subtle thing. And he had it kind of under the lapel. Um, you have to do a little bit of uh, process of elimination because you could barely see the starbursts underneath the lapel because it was folded over. But it wasn't mm -hmm. facing outwards because you would see it, and it wasn't facing down, so the only way it could face was inwards, which is you know just enough to hide it. So the guy, that captain who has that ship you know, almost permanently berthed at the space station at Ares, who's loaned all of his people into Ares base, because you guys asked for it. Ooh, he's a true star loyalist, and he owns his ship. And if I remember correctly, true star is the... Cultivator one. Cultivator faction. And, yeah. we're, at, and we're at odds with him. Yeah, mostly Neostar. Neostar is the one who does the extreme, like, if, no, if we can't have it, no, no one gets it. True yeah, Star, so. they, don't, they want everything available. Even if they can't get it, or if they lose out to somebody else, they don't destroy it. 
They go, yes. we'll get it back eventually, or we'll make a, an endeavor to get it back without harming whatever it is they're trying to get. And if they can't, yeah. they back off because they don't want it to, whatever they're trying to get destroyed. I do so. Um, but uh, Neostar, it's the, uh, yeah, if, if we can have it, no one gets it. Yeah. And they also hate cultivators, like seethingly hate cultivating. It's actually as close to hate as you can get. Interesting. Which is why they are willing to blow up Ares, because it's a cultivation mecca. And uh, Neostars are a bit of a anti-transhumanists. Yeah. Which um, is... Well, Ares is a birthplace for a new breed of transhumanism. Yeah. Um, which makes a lot more sense now. Yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a hold on to the captains who are supposed to be getting the new tech. Uh, the brightest star ones, since we don't know exactly which ones they are. And we're just well, going to put a... The Atlas Foundation still has that same problem. The Atlas mm -hmm. Foundation, you're not sure because you haven't looked at their drive system, mm -hmm. the, the custom one they use that doesn't require the assault, if they actually know the true value of Leah. Might not be correct. So they may think, we got this. We can implement this technology immediately. And that's true. And install it, put the cores in, and then it, they run into the mm -hmm. same problem that the fleet was about to run into. That's all I'm looking and do you know if any of these guys are... No, because that's still such a black mark on me. I really hate that. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, and, you know, conversing with this guy, uh, there are four factions within the Atlas Foundation. Mm hmm So... You have kind of the old faction. They don't really have a particular name other than probably, uh, they just call them ship owners, the ship owner faction. They are a different type of captain. They own the damn vessel. Yeah. They are allowed to literally determine every single thing that's put on it. They can't even tell the Thunderhead, no, it's their ship. Don't put that shit on here. Which yeah. allows them to move anything they want anywhere. There's only about 75 ships left. Which are mm -hmm. personally owned. Thunderhead countered it with, if you're going to own your ship, no stem treatments. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, a lot of people juiced up. And mm -hmm. uh, basically got stim treatments and hoarded them. But once they run out, those captains pass on from old age. Yeah. So Interesting. Well, it's Thunderhead's like, I can't have these people refusing to move my stuff. Yeah. So he Like that, that, I off. guess. Yeah. Well, these captains, by Stormfront law, can say no. Mm -hmm. I'm not moving it. Thunderhead's a different being. Then it's like, hey, look, we're well beyond the capacity of what the, the, the state of the Enigmatic Empire was when the Stormfront was there. I need you to move some stuff. And I also need you to make another jump over here to drop off stuff there. And they're like, no, fuck that. You know how inefficient that is? It's like, yes, but I still need it done. It It's only 500 tons of ferrofibrous. Like they, yeah. they need it. And the guy's like, no, I can do way... It's, yeah, it's, Thunderhead's like, mm, hate this legacy shit. Um, uh, the rest are... You have the transient faction, which are the newest of the new. Like mm -hmm. they're, the, they're almost like you would consider like baby teeth from like uh, Vampire. Yeah. They care fuck all about their attachment to the ship. They're attached to the... They're loyal to the Foundation, so if they're told, hey... Your ship's down for maintenance. We're going to put you on this one. 
because the captain's not feeling so well, so we'll just give you the other the other guy's ship. Make the, make the runs. And they're like, eh, cool, whatever. Who gives a shit? All right? I'll, uh, I'll go move stuff around. Yeah. So, uh, and then you've kind of got the the collector group. Uh, the collector faction within the Atlas Foundation, they're kind of a weird eccentric bunch. Uh, they have scans of stuff that they don't share with the mainframe. Mm-hmm. Because they're like, eh, look, the Atlas Foundation doesn't need this. And mm-hmm. it's probably a one-time jump. And also, I don't need people to really look at it too hard. But no one needs a scan of one of the old ancient reactive plasma generators and plasma fuel cells. Mm-hmm. So they have a collection of scans and collection of stuff. That's old world. Some of them are part of the ship owner faction. Most are not. Hmm. Uh, you can tell the collector by if you meet the ship captain, you just have to go into their personal captain's room. They will have just shit everywhere. Like art, heritage, uh, um, culture, like They'll have usually a music player from an old medium, like whether it's a stereo or a... Yeah, like uh, the captain from ours was a collector. Yep, and he was also a ship owner. Yeah, interesting. And then you have the by the book faction. Mm -hmm. They don't take bribes. They don't cut corners. They are Mm -hmm. the reason the... Atlas Foundation is as trustworthy as it is because it's 80% of their people. Yeah. <laughs> There's a reason why shit arrives on on time. There's no arguments. They just they move things. Just like the Thunderhead wants them to be moved. And if it's not on the manifest, it's not going on the ship. I don't care how much money you throw at me. I don't care if there's space. It ain't for you. Fuck off. Also, I'm reporting you. That's why they're as trustworthy as they do, is because you have the by the book faction who are so loyal to the Thunderhead and the Atlas Foundation that they know the power of the position they hold. It's the other twenty percent. Yeah, yeah. Most of the transient group is part of the by the book faction, but not always. Okay. So there's a lot of overlap. There's no definitive delineations like brightest star. Most yeah. of the group, most of the individuals are part of two. Not no, that makes sense. I'm gonna thank the captain very much. Yeah, anytime. Name's Michael. Pleasure to meet Pleasure, you. You can Michael. always you can always look me up. Uh, I'm a by the book faction guy. Mm-hmm. I don't I don't want to dick around. I don't want to lose my job. I, was, I don't want to lose my citizenship. <laughs> Johnny and Allie. Right? Oh my gosh. All right. So I'm going to finish up with uh, either you, um, Ogre, or Ogre and Char, because I have a party to get to. Okay. Okay. Any last stuff? I mean,. Uh, the only other thing he really had to do on Ouroboros was there were three things he was thinking about trying. One was checking his message log to see if he had any invites from people to meet. Uh, you have eight. And they're all high-level people. You have a fleet admiral. You have a... Uh, an arms dealer, you have several civilian people, you have eight people that want to meet you pretty badly, and then there's other, another 16 plus flight requests for a meet at your leisure that are of less important people. Well, first things first. He he paged the 
fleet admiral for a meeting. Yep. I forgot the third thing I wanted to do, but the second was I've got a station and I'm authorized because it doesn't currently have a fleet to get some ships for it to station where it's going to be. Mm -hmm. And it, this is one of the few stations where I might be able to get a frontier setup high level ship. Maybe. Maybe indeed. So I would be checking into that as I'm heading to the requested meeting with the fleet admiral. Okay. I won't be able to do any of the RPs mm. with these people. Um, so if you have something a little quicker that you want to get to, let me know. We can do that um, some other time. All the different yeah. people meets. Yeah. Um, yeah the, the I guess the quick thing would be he'd be looking into seeing if he could just buy a ship here. Which one do you want? They have a lot of ships here that you can just buy. What's uh, the fact, biggest one? A battleship? Yeah. They don't sell carriers. The biggest yeah, vessel obviously. they're willing to sell is a battleship. Mm -hmm. And how much do they want for that? Uh, because... 210 million wreck. Okay. And 20,000% of a B-rank budget. Okay, the 20,000% of a B-rank budget is... Ludicrous, absolutely. But it is Ab a new battleship. With all the newest guns, all the newest tech, the newest drive. Well, not the not it, Aether's newest can, drive. Yeah, but... I can get it set to a newest drive relatively quickly. Right. Um, but it's not all the newest guns, and it actually is Warlord compatible. Okay. Can I supplement the remaining 500% of a B-class budget with the with the A-class budget that I have? Because I have 110% of an A-class because you have an A-class budget. This is... You're not even allowed to buy this without an A-class budget. Yeah. No, I'm saying I have... 1,623.5% of a B-class budget. You, want to trade it. you can trade stuff in for budget percentage. So if you have mesh tech you wanted to sell. I mean, sure, I could sell a couple strands of mesh tech. What's the rarity? I, I mean, I have all of them. What would I need to sell to get 500% of a B-class budget, considering... One... Single mesh tech briefcase? Like, you ask for yeah. no wreck and you want budget only, people are like, gimme, gimme. Then, yeah, I'll. Where is. Uh, da, 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 da. I gotta find my thing. Nixie and Fat Lady. You're probably gonna wanna do some, one of the more rare ones. If you're gonna look for just a straight budget transfer. Yeah, I can do the uh, pure strain. Just the yeah. briefcase back. Uh, the go ahead and roll strain. me. One D five hundred plus five hundred for budget, because you're just gonna walk in, find a buyer, be like, "Hey, let's buy this." So yeah, six hundred and twenty-four percent of a B rank budget. Yeah. So there you yeah. go. So one little stupid one foot by one foot square, and they're like, "Just take my money." And they're like, oh, that was violent. Oh, fuck off. Shit. <laughs> you go to the shipyard. The guy looks at you. So you're wanting to buy a battleship? Yep. Clarences? Hands them to him. Uh, you touch the screen a couple times. Which one did you want? Because we have different... The guy kind of has this, like, I, this is <laughs> happening right now. Shit. <laughs> and um, he's like, I need it crude, warlord compatible. We can't do that. Eh. I know this is just you buying the vessel. Hire. you got to crew it yourself. This yeah, is private ownership of a battleship. Yeah, I can find a crew. You're going to have to crew it. Uh, yeah, no, that's fine. I've got the funds. Um, it has basic supply. 
in it. So it, nothing fancy, but it's got food, it's got water, it's got building materials, it's repair parts, uh, basically what's on it. We're not going to rip all that stuff out. Just It's part of the sale price. Uh, did you want one of the older ones? They're a bit more durable. No, they don't the have all the high-tech fancy, fancy stuff. Yeah, the newest one. Newest one? All right. Damn. Izzy kind of looks at it, uh, and he basically turns I, the screen around. I, I already you. marked off the 210 million wreck. And you're just yeah. like, run right. your card? <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, oh! Well, oh, wow. You you bought that with debit. Duh. Thank you for purchasing at Doraba Shipyards. Uh... Here's the access command, or the captain's key. Um, do know that the berth it's in has a monthly fee. How much of is that? 25,000 rec and 50% of a B rank budget. Okay. That's just for, just, that's just for keeping it there every month. And yes, you will have to pay in advance. And if you yeah. move the ship before the end of the month that you're allotted, uh, there's no refund. You basically I, I, have rented that berth for the month. I, I just pay the rental fee now. Hmm. All right. Um, congratulations, you are now a new uh, fleet power. <laughs> you you now own a battleship. Congratulations. Sometimes just throwing money at a problem. Well. Only the Thunderhead is authorized to hand out ba uh, carriers, but uh, we do sell ships individually or wholesale. And, and the hilarious part is I've got the shuttles to begin transporting the people that I had sitting at Ares because I'd, plan I'd been buying up crew for a ship because I was anticipating needing more people. So I've just had people sitting at Ares base waiting for a ship. Now I have a ship. And I'm just going to page Aether and be like, hey, Aether. What? Um, how soon can I pay you to get one of your new Leah engines on my ship? I'm going to look okay. at Um, I do got to go. Thank you, All guys. Right. You guys can continue to uh, uh, interpersonal.
It's like, I know the guy in charge is level 7, and most of the guys are a rank or two beneath him. Yeah. Um, we might have talked to Vlad more of civics, because uh, anyone below a rank 5 won't be able to install it. Or no, yeah, anyone below a rank 5. So seven, 5, 6, 7 can install it. 4 and down can't, so depending on how many people you have. Um, well, we can see how that goes. Because it's going to take two weeks to finish. It's going to take two weeks for me to test, to install and test the new reactive shielding in the fleet. Uh, and then I'm going to have to put... Uh, I'm putting the... Uh, what are they called? Uh, the Atlas Department on notice uh, until they can show that they don't have any members of the Neon Pride to start. Because I refuse to give my technology to them. No, that's entirely agreeable. Mm -hmm. yeah. And for a friend who came back, what's up, Jackie? What's going on? Um, Nick spot a small fleet. Ooh. Eh. Well, I bought one ship. I'm buying three others because I bought a battleship. I've still got to buy the escort frigates. Working on it at least. <laughs> yeah. It. It cost me 210 million rec. It's nothing. No, that that's about half my funds. Oh, you'll get them back soon. Yeah, it's just. It's one of those things, you know what I mean? I, I have been building up money. And honestly, it's probably going to take the other half of your funds just for me to install it. Why? Because it should cost nearly that much. If it costs as much to install a single engine as it does to produce a battleship, they'd never use it. Oh, no. Uh, no, that's for me. Okay, so I just, uh, that's for installing. And then Leah and okay, no fair. I don't actually. I'm gonna have to talk a lot about it. How much it would cost? Um, because it's like to get one of the old engines for a battleship. That was part of the cost of the ship, and it was from what I remember checking my notes. It for the battleship was twenty million. Of the 210 million cost. No, that's fair. But at the same time, there hasn't been really a cost stated for how much it would cost. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that I understand. Yeah. But um, don't blow my purse out of the water. It still takes time to refill it. No, that's fair. Honestly, if you want all three done, I would say probably like I don't know 10% yeah I don't mind dropping like 50 million rec for you to yeah. be able to do that that's no worries it's just keep in mind while I am getting a ludicrous amount of income mm -hmm. Only ten percent of my income is actually coming to me. Yeah, no, uh, because I, I'm dumping literally half of my income into the fighter department so that they can produce the ludicrous amount of shit that they need. Yeah, and like for me, I honestly don't have much of an income outside what I get from the lead department. I mean. I've offered you a couple of times if you want to produce <laughs> something to be sold through my company, I'll 
split the profits with you evenly. Oh, no, like, yeah, that's the thing. Like, but Ada doesn't care. Hmm. And then he, for him, it's just, cool, I will pay you money, uh, or uh, I have an A rank budget, I'm going to assign it to that. I'm going to sign this purchase to my A rank budget. And I'm like, oh, well, we need we require a wreck. I'm like, cool. Counterpoint. I'm going to, to have Thunderhead. I'm going to requisition it through the Thunderhead. <laughs> then walk <Yeah>. off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's also what I do. No, that, that's entirely feasible. Mm. My Leah shuttles are going to be so tired. Mm -hmm. Because I've got to transit a, probably two to 3,000 people. Yeah. But, yeah. So you're ready to continue the big fuck off fight on Monday? Yeah. I don't know about you guys, but I still got to go back to Aries tomorrow. Yeah. For the gala. For the, uh, yeah. Ah, that reminds me. I'm coming back with some nice stuff for the gala to sell. Oh, which is yeah. with the gala because I have to pre-post it in the auction house. I bought all the beam weapons from, uh, was it, uh, Orbo Station. Do you, you mean the ones that I figured out how to blueprint to produce? Mm hmm Nice. So those are me for sale. <sighs> nice. What's up, Jackie? Recommender. Long day. Ah, I'm back. Welcome back. You guys Watch have a fun session? Hmm? It was interesting. Interesting, he says. <laughs> well, I ended up getting to watch the bitch get burned, but otherwise... The bitch get burned? The uh, Chemtech bitch. The Baron on the Orbor session? Mm hmm. The, um, what was that department called? The Oversight Committee yeah. showed up. And yeah, she got, um, she'd been doing some naughty, some very, very naughty. And got called out on it, had all of her chemtech and potentia stripped away, and sent off for execution. Yep. So 
So that was interesting. I'm still not sure what all I'm supposed to do with all these supplies I've got. Like, dear God. I know the one thing I'm going to try and... Hmm. One thing I'm going to try and do before the end of the campaign is go back to that little rock. Little rock. Yep. What? You cut out? Yeah, I'm going to go back to the little rock uh, in the... Uh, Face on dimension. Mm. And see if he can teach me more. Have fun with that shit. All right. Because uh, I might go mechless for the final fight. Chances are I may be fighting a noble in the fight. No, that's fair. Uh, I'm going to try and fight the queen. Um, don't. Or uh, the uh, are they called queens? The ones yeah, in no, the hive ships. No, yeah, they're called queens. Don't. Yeah. Their psionics are strong enough to just know your math. But Charles, oh, like. Fair. What? How many? Fifteen bone coins right now? Uh, actually, thanks for reminding me. I have to add two bone coins because I forgot to do it last session. Dear God. Because I haven't used them. Sitting on two destiny fragments still. I have one. Uh, no, sorry, I'm sitting on 18 bone coins. Nice. I really don't know what they do. Chaos, order, balance. Mm -hmm. But you want chaos because you're a chaos gremlin, so. No. Roll tens. I'm not a chaos gremlin. I am I'm being a balance. Well, then roll fives and, and sixes. Exactly. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh. Yeah, no. I... My biggest pile of wealth is in the amount of fucking mesh tech I have. Because, dear God, bone do coins we are all need fucking mesh tech. Yeah, uh, I would love some mesh tech. Uh, bone coins are really good in the phase on dimension, right? Didn't Matt say that? It was destiny fragments uh, that are bad in the phase on dimension. Bone coins are good. That's what I recall. Um. Also, or is the other way around. Hand. Oh, no, no. Uh, bone coins made it to where they were useful. The Destiny Fragment gave me the core that allows me to know everything about the phase on dimension. Mm -hmm. And what I might do is I might take that out during the last fight. <laughs> I might. I might go and be like, all right, listen here, little crystal. I'm going to eat you. I'm going to eat this one. I'm going to have four cores and I'm gonna go slap the shit out of someone. Oh I I, I just uh, I can't wait to take Wrath out and, and go mech stomping with him. He 
He's going to be fun. But uh, Jackie, you said you needed mesh tech. What type? I think it's the one that... Uh... Oh, was it the viral strain one, maybe? The one we got from our that, research, I think. That was the predator grade mesh tech. No, that was my research. Um, it was one of the void walkers. I honestly don't remember. Remember the what sample from for? the uh, dimensional place? Oh, yeah. That's the one that I got the predator pattern from. Yeah. Remember I rolled two 100s and a one for that research? Yeah. Yeah. That's right. How much did you need and what did you need it for? Because the only thing really predator mesh tech is useful for is syncing up with... Um, Predator tech. I think what I wanted to do with it was I wanted to put that mesh tech inside the quantum computers, uh, the cloud computers. Mm -hmm. I mean, because uh, the ambassador did it, but it wasn't the I don't know if it was the predator stuff that would do it or the predator stuff that could do it, maybe. Wow. I just know that predator uh, predators can are really good against nano because they can eat it and take over it. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't mind giving you a supply as long as you keep it secret. That's kind of his biggest secret right now is that he has a new strand of mesh tech that nobody else knows about. Yeah, yeah. That See. I'm planning on using that as my big power play with the new the reborn ace department as it were. To really get some political traction with that group that I'm building, you know? Mm -hmm. But if you need any other mesh tech, don't be afraid to ask. I mean Dear fucking God. Because it's like each sheet that I produce, right? makes enough to create 800 foot by foot strands mm -hmm. and i have 10 tanks producing the low grade the medium the high grade and the pure strain and then i have five tanks off to the side making predator pattern and considering it only takes nine sheets to load something onto a fucking uh, gigantic or larger class mech, mm -hmm. uh, I have enough mesh tech to where I could fully mesh out the vast majority of Ares base. Mm hmm Oh, I need to ask Matt if he gave us any merit for the session. Yeah. I completely forgot about that. Uh, 
What's wrong, Jar? Jar. Yes? You still want to have your plasma cannon? No, I'm good, actually. <laughs> you got phase on cannons, uh, it's fine. Right. What was that? I said, how about 